It was. Well, my heart's shattered. <laughs> Yay. I love when Stream Deck doesn't work. Good morning, everybody. Fuck. Why? Hold on. I'm going to open it up and see why. It worked earlier. I don't know. Why? Good morning, everyone. Sorry. What the fuck? Okay. I don't have Stream Deck today. That's fine. Such a good song. And he's got it all figured out. <laughs> we don't need no stream and stinking Stream Deck. The only time Stream Deck annoys me is when you guys start throwing links at me and I can't switch between scenes easily. So I'm going to ignore your links. <laughs> That's, that is, fuck, no. That's really, a new, I just don't want to do it. I got a hockaloogie already. Why is this my life? Good morning, Ensville. Good morning, BDO. Why? Hold on. I'm a phlegm monster. I puked up a ball of phlegm this morning. If anybody wants to know my cute facts. My morning was, oh my God, I fucking robo. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you for reminding me. I saw it and I saved it this morning. Fuck. I'm not signed into Twitter. I don't know my Twitter login. It's the worst. <laughs> uh, why? Okay, I got in. We're good. Robo sent me the link to the Alex Jones case, and I believe Alex Jones is actually going to be on it today. Is he there? Is he there again, or is it just boring lawyers talking about bullshit? But will he be? God damn it, but his fucking stream deck doesn't work! <sighs> My stream deck's not working for some reason. Um, Leaf said the trial's got to be the only thing that's been hard this long for Jones. You know there's someone out there fapping to him. You know it. Just because I've thought of it right now, it's happening. Okay, yeah, that was due to the due to pushes on tort reform, mostly by companies that wanted to limit their liabilities. There you go. That's why there's like statutes on what you can actually sue for. So I think they're trying to take him because he they dug they they like dug in. They found out what he makes, what his income is, and all that. And he makes he like he's made eighty million in a year or some crazy. I mean, he makes astronomical amounts of stupid money. So I think they're going to try to dig into him until they get it all. I don't fucking know. Let's. Oh yes, Robo, we can cheers. I'm loaded, so you let me know. I'm loaded and ready. Dude makes 8K an hour. There you go. Fridge remembered. I did not remember the exact number. He makes $8,000 an hour. It's nothing close to Bezos, but it's plenty to sue the fucking pants off that evil sack of oxygen thief. He needs to find the tree whose sole responsibility is to make him oxygen and apologize for all the hard work. The shooter's lawyer in Miami just tried to have the judge removed from sentencing. Are you kidding me? What? Wow. The GF once told me I was the only one she's ever slept with. I felt so special until she continued that everyone else was six or... Oh. You know what? We all give our best, right? There's a reason the, those type of people love the uneducated. It makes me feel bad for uneducated people. Like, I think there are people in the U.S. and all over the world who just don't have the same access to education as the rest of us. And I feel bad for them because I think they're being, like, fucking used. You know, like, it doesn't make what they do right. But I think they're being weaponized with their stupid, with their lack of education or whatever you want to put it. You know what I mean? It makes me sad. I don't like it. I don't think anyone should be weaponized, whether they're intelligent or not. He doesn't need oxygen. He just absorbs the disgust of other people. God, it kind of looks like it, though. Remember that fucking fate? Dude, big BDO, I will use that insult for the rest of my life. It's so, it's because when it comes to people like Alex Jones or like Trump, like, how else do you describe them? I don't have any word. They're literally wastes of air. I'm offended that trees are working for him. And I'm sure they are, too. We shall. Let us cheers. Um, I did get some new weed. I don't. Uh, did I get any new strains? 
I'll tell you in a minute. Let's cheers first. Uh, this is lilac. I got myself some lilac diesel. So I'm smoking lilac diesel. If you care, it's the best. I love it. Cheers. Ash, they give me so much pleasure. So much pleasure. <coughs> I have such a boner for the judge. The one specific judge that we were watching when he was in the courtroom. <coughs> I believe it was last month. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might have been a couple months ago because time doesn't mean anything. But that judge is my wet dream. I worship her. She, she might be the best. <coughs> I just, the point... There's one point in the trial where she says, you can't just state things you believe because just because you believe it does not make it fact, Mr. Jones. I just rub my nipples to that a lot. <laughs> it's just like, if only she could scream that at the nation. <laughs> just scream it at the nation, please. Can we just... Just because you fucking believe it doesn't make it a fact, Mr. Jones, or whoever. It's just fantastic. I love it. Belief does not make fucking fact. My God. It just, it's, she's just my hero. I love her so much. I'm smoking an infused pre-roll. Oh, fuck yeah, because I have nothing to do all day and I'm getting aggressively stoned. I actually got a pre-roll. I got like an aggressive pre-roll, but I haven't smoked it. I don't know if I'm going to smoke it or put it in my bong because you guys know me in pre-rolls like, I feel like I don't get high from them, but I did get one simply because I love the strain, and I figured I, if I don't smoke the pre-roll, I can just grind it up and smoke it like normal, but they had one that was kind of new, well, new, something I'd never seen before. Maybe you've seen it before, Beata. It's um, slow burn, so, you know, that's, that's like my biggest complaint about pre-rolls, blunts, joints, anything like that, is that I feel like my room fills up with smoke, and I'm not high. Like, suddenly the room is literally a cloud, and I'm not high at all, and I'm like, what the fuck happened? I'm smoking it. I'm inhaling it. I know how to smoke a fucking lit cigarette or whatever you're smoking, and it drives me crazy, and part of me thinks because, like, you know, you take a huge drag off it, you set it down, and it's just burning, like, and they burn really fast. So, yeah, let me see. Um, so the brand is Stratos. Stratus? Stratus? And it's a slow burn. And it is on here. It should be on here somewhere. Unless they put a sticker on something else. Fuck. Oh, there it is. It's wedding cake. And it says total cannabinoids, 45%. THC, 40%. Um, and that's, it's a hybrid. It just says wedding cake. But it's like an infused, hand-rolled bud infused with CO2 full-spectrum oil. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. I just got it because it said slow burn. It seemed like appealing because that's that's my biggest complaint i haven't even opened it yet let's look at it i think it's because they grind it so fine i feel that way i don't know why it, it's got to be just me because everybody loves pre-rolls hi najiel how are you love if you make a join you need to just be puffing until you put it out literally that's basically it like you have to sit there and puff the entire thing till it's gone otherwise it just burns i don't know but let me let me show this child this is Oh, the childproof fucking shit. It says squeeze. I'm not even kidding you. My fingers are touching in the middle and the pop, the top's not popping off. I fucking hate child safety shit. Ugh. Got it. <laughs> oh, look, it looks very basic and sad. This was $12. $12. That better fuck me up. That's all I'm going to say. I got a whole eighth for 14 <laughs> It smells good though. Yes. Yeah, it's the little dimple. I don't know if it shows up. Yep. Is does that mean something, Viata? If the ends caved in? I don't know what that means. I just always thought that was the way they rolled them. But yeah, the the end is like a little bowl. Yeah, I don't know. It does kind of look like a half black and mild, doesn't it? It's so I can show you guys though. Remember, I got those pre rolls last week. I got more because the strain is so good. It's that Gak smoothie strain. I sat and I talked to the dispensary, the bud tender, for like 15 minutes about it. I was like, 
you need to get this strain back and you need to try it. It's so good. I'm just buying these pre-rolls to grind them up in my bong. You realize that, right? She was like, really? I'm like, yes. But I love this. So this is by Stratus, whatever the fuck. And it's just got a cardboard crutch, like a raw, you know, like the cardboard, the normal ass cardboard crutch on the inside. They make them with fusilli noodles more often now. I see this way more often. It's literally a noodle inside. So it doesn't get soggy while you're smoking it. Like, you know how sometimes these guys, they just get wet and disgusting with your lips or they get like that, like tar buildup on it while you're smoking it. It's a, it's a, they rolled these. These are, these are like manufactured pre-rolls, but they're fucking noodles. I just thought that was the most clever thing I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen that. I just thought that was so cool. All the noodles. And they don't get soggy. I did smoke one. Didn't get very high. It was very sad. So I put it out and grinded the rest up and put it in my bong. It is genius. I thought it was the most fucking genius thing ever. And then I shit you not, the day after I bought these, I saw on Reddit someone rolled a joint with a noodle <laughs> and like posted it and was like, did I do it right, guys? I was like, what the fuck? I can't fit all the joints back. What did I do wrong? A machine makes the joints. They do. It's literally, well, Viata can probably explain it more than me. Some are machine made and some are human rolled. I don't know what, when, why, how. I think they say hand rolled on them, but there's, it's, they're not actually rolled. That's the weird thing. So they're cones. See how they're like smaller at the bottom and bigger at the top. They actually, they roll the cone before ever even filling it. So like the paper is rolled and stuck onto the filter and they just stick it on the bottom of this machine that's grinding the weed and it just, <laughs> just spits blood into it. I've seen those a ton. I don't know if all are done that way though. I don't want to say they are. I bought a bougie cigarette holder. Oh my God, I have a bougie cigarette holder. I've just never used it. I bought it for an RP show and never used it, but I have one, like the long, like, <laughs> yeah. I also bought one of the finger clip joint things just for funsies, but I've never used it. These don't fit back inside the thing. What the, I guess I just have to smoke that one. Oops. The big processing, processing plants will have rolling machines. Ours are all handpicked because we're so, we're little so far. Yeah. And I think like I've noticed they'll say it on them. Like they'll say hand rolled or not. This, the Gax movie ones do not say hand rolled. So I don't know. Maybe it doesn't really matter to me, to be honest. I don't care who rolls them as long as they burn well. Um, does this say hand rolled, hand rolled bud. So this one was rolled by a people, which is probably why it has the indented end. Is that why you were asking, Viata? Is that how you can tell if it's hand rolled? Ouch. I had to pop this stupid thing open. If, are they, if they're hand rolled, do they have a little like nibble? Like the little twist or something? I don't know. This is hand rolled. Just kidding. So if it's hand rolled, it's divoted. If it's not hand rolled, what are the? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Machine rolled. Hand rolled. I wish my camera would focus on that because there's such a huge difference. Hold on. Let me see if I can get a black background. There's a big difference in the way they look. It's, it's interesting. Can you see? So the one on the bottom, that's hand rolled. The one on the top is machine rolled. Whoop. Um, so if you can tell the machine rolled one, it's like really loose and kind of wrinkly. It's got the fusilli noodle, which is nice, but it's also got that like machine pinch off. And then the hand rolled one is fucking smooth. And solid. Like there's no, there ain't no wrinkle to that. It's just different. Oh, that's where they inject the oil. No shit. I had no idea. I'm learning things all the, all the time. That's so cool. I did not know. The hand rolled usually have the flag. Yep. Interesting. So these are, these must be hand, these, these are probably hand rolled maybe. I don't know. Weed is so, the, the industry of weed is fascinating. They've really gone so far with it. It's so much fun. I love that a lot of you are working at dispensaries now, so I get all the inside info. <laughs> Dude, my dispensary sells shake and it's so good. Good morning, Genova. Good morning, young at heart. How are you, loves? Oh my God, write your D&D &D prep, you silly fuck. Dude. Oh, I saw the best. So I follow a lot of D&D &D subreddits and I saw the best post the other day. It was a dad. He posted, um, I ran a D&D &D game for my daughters and they came upon, what was it? Like a feral pack of wolves and they chose to tame them and they and like weaponize them and they became like a clan of wolves and he was so proud of his daughters it was one of the coolest posts i just read the whole thing he was like i was just so proud of the ingenuity of my daughter and they were young like like eight and ten i think like that and they were just like no we want to we're gonna make it our friend <laughs> i thought that because i try to do that in every campaign ever anytime there's a bad guy i'm like can i befriend it no okay 
Every time. Anytime there's a weird animal, can I make it my friend? No. Okay. I'm always told no. No one has excitement in their bones. Or I'll just die. <laughs> they sell more tan joints. I think all the joints at dispensaries are made with like the raw tan paper. I've never seen any with white paper, to be honest. Have any of you seen joints rolled with white paper? I don't think I ever have. I think they've always been like in the natural raw looking brown ones. Shake is some good stuff. Dude, my, my dispensary, Bubblicious, sells shake so cheap sometimes. Like, you can get 14 grams of, of, like, lilac diesel shake for 30 bucks. Like, half an ounce of weed. Good weed for $30. But, like, what you and I think is shake is not what they're selling as shake. Like, they sell... It's bud. It's just... It's, like, all the little buds that are, like... You know, little little marbles, not as big as a marble, probably pea sized. All the little buds that are pea sized that fall off while they're like picking the bud, that's what they put in the shake jars. So I've bought the shake before and I've poured it out for you guys, and it's literally just bud. It's perfectly little destemmed buds. That's what they sell as shake. And I'm like, how do you make any money? This is insane. It's good. Like, it's if I find a strain that they're selling shake, I will always buy it because all it is is like the little buds, which are oftentimes more moist and concentrated, anyways. I smoked six foot bongs. I've never smoked out of a giant bong before. Like nothing bigger than the egg. I w listen to Bailey Sarian's Dark History of Weed. Oh my God. Is it a new one? Uki, I've never seen that one. Is it a new episode? I might have to watch it if it's a new one. The newest one I watched by Bailey Sarian was the, the Graham Cracker one. That was the most recent one. Oh, it was. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to look for that one. I haven't seen that one yet. I watched the graham cracker one. Fun fact, did you guys know the graham crackers were invented to stop you from masturbating? I'm not kidding. And they weren't even called graham crackers until the guy Graham fucking died. And then Nabisco formed in Boston and was like, we're going to create this cracker that looks nothing like Graham's cracker and we're going to call it graham crackers. <laughs> fucking what? Wild. You got to listen to it. Bailey Sarian one of the she does a really cool podcast, but has a YouTube too, where you can watch her talk about stuff. And she covers crazy stuff like this all the time. And they're so wild. Like the Graham guy was actually not a, not a terrible person other than the whole not masturbating. He really did want people to be healthy. He just found a niche in a weird place. She's really good, though. She does really fucking long podcasts. And if you like people that do, like, historical podcasts but are fucking funny, she's great. Check out Bailey Sarian. That's weird because I use them to masturbate. With milk or without? Oh. The graham cracker one was fucking, it was so bizarre. My dad's from Boston, such a nutcase. I don't think I have any family from Boston, which is really interesting because we're very Irish. And I think that's where a lot of Irish immigrants went through was Boston. But my family went through New York. I don't know why. They lived in Queens for ages before they moved out. Kind of glad, though. Massachusetts is overwhelmingly white and frightens me. CK, one of your spiders got away and ingested some radiation. Where? What? What? Do you like my big spider? I love her. I almost lost a tarantula. Well, I didn't lose. I didn't almost lose a tarantula. I shouldn't put it that way. A tarantula got out of its enclosure yesterday. That was an alarming morning for me. Good morning, little sister. How are you? <gasps> Sarah, look, I finished the BB-8. Did you ever get to see it? I don't know if my Sar Sar sassy Sarah is my little sister. If anyone's wondering, don't be weird. Um, Did you get to see that I finished the fucking BB-8, the Lego BB-8? It's so fucking cool. Ooh, fun fact, weed was pretty commonplace and not taboo until 1840 when some guy got so blazed that he went to a doctor because he thought his face and legs were gone. <gasps> and this is what I'm saying. Like, weed can make you feel like you're dying, but you're not going to die. Like, don't do too much weed. My God. So frosted graham crackers and frosted flakes are a bad pun or the best pun. You tell me, Glut. You tell me. Ugh. I'm all corded. What the fuck's? Whatever. Yes, I did. I did pick up the joint. Did you want to look at it again? Yeah, I put it back in its little thing. It fell on my ass. Where did I put the little tube? Yeah, did you want to look at it again? No, I picked it up. They will eat weed. 
dogs will eat weed. I found the I found it. Yes, I did. It fell like right next to my thigh on my chair, so I'm good. They one time these dogs thankfully haven't that I'm aware of ingested any large amounts of weed. However, dogs will fucking eat anything. And weed can sometimes smell it smells skunky. And you know dogs, they fucking love skunk. They'll go chase a skunk and get sprayed all day and roll in it. Dog hair in my mouth. Um, they love skunk and it smells skunky. When I lived in Maryland, you guys remember my boy Link, rest in peace, perfect king of the world. Um, I rolled a pretty good pre-roll like this. I rolled myself a fat blunt because when I lived in Maryland, I would smoke outside because weed was illegal and my ex really didn't like the smell. And I respect that. So I would smoke outside on my breaks. So I rolled a fat pre-roll. I set it on my like patio table and go inside to find a lighter. It took two seconds and Link just <laughs> gone just ate the whole thing and then he had the most beautiful eight hour nap of his life um yeah dogs will eat weed don't leave your weed around i have i have another funny story about weed uh not my dog a guy i worked with at hopkins his wife hates weed for some reason so he has to like hide it from her i don't know he literally like gets a baggie of weed and like tapes it to the back of his toilet so she can't find his weed it's so weird the stories are bizarre i don't know why i don't whatever that's neither here nor there. His dog found the bag of weed and ate the entire bag, like a half ounce of bud. And his wife never figured out it was weed, but his wife, like, all day, why won't the dog get up? The dog has been sleeping for 13 hours. He's still alive, I checked, but he's still sleeping. Dogs like weed. Don't leave your weed out. When I took, oh man, edibles fuck me up, Uki, no matter what. Even if I smoke every day, I could smoke all day long and take an edible and it will take me to a new place. Like, I took an edible last week. Viada and I took one together. I got so high I forgot to tweet my red eyes. With, and all I took was five milligrams. That's it. Five. Uh, LSD and MDMA are the love drugs and the hard stuff makes you hurt. Those ones, I've never understood the point of any drug that's going to make the day afterwards suck. It's like alcohol. Like, I don't, I don't understand having a really, really good time today for tomorrow to be less exciting than normal. And you know how they, they, there's like a saying like Suicide Tuesday or Suicide Mondays or something like that. It's the day after you take Molly. Your body like tanks crazy in the serotonins and all that and... Uh, yeah, it's the Alex Jones route. We're just, I'm, I'm trying to wait for Alex Jones to actually be on. Right now, it's just FBI and lawyers going over stuff. Sorry, I'm, I muted it. I'm, I've got an eye on it because we like to watch Alex get pounded into the ground. I know, Viata. I saw them the next day, and that's how I remembered. I forgot. Like, I just, that's how high I got. They will fuck you up. Oh, I'm sorry. It's mine. <laughs> I finally, t oh, Sarah, I finally partook in the ye that years old joint mom gave me. Oh my God. The one that I got her when she had breast cancer. That's fucking amazing. Okay, so this is great. This is great because people ask all the time, Sarah. People ask me all the time, like, does weed go bad? How long does weed last? If you keep weed in a dark place, in a dark, cool place, it will keep its, its uh, validity, its strength for quite some time. Oh, it was when Denise gave her? Oh, my God, it's even older. Sarah, that's got to be even older. What the fuck? How old is that? Unless it gets wet. Yeah, you want to keep it dry and cool and in a dark place, and it'll last for a really fucking long time. Um, my little sister just said, speaking of weed, I finally took part, took part in the years-old joint mom gave me that she'd been holding on to in the verdict's in. It for sure still worked. Weed will last, man. If you keep it in a nice, like, you know, I, I have mine in, like, little porcelain jars and shit. <coughs> Potency. Thank you, Robo. It remains... I mean, I, I'm sure it loses some of its potency, but it doesn't lose the majority of it by any means. Weed can stay good for a very, very long time. And that, I mean, Sarah, that was when mom and dad lived in Kettle. How long, when did they move? How long ago was that? Uh, they already lived in, it was before, Sarah, it was before 2014. That thing is over six years old. Yeah, because I was going to say, she already lived in, in uh, Seattle by the time I moved to Baltimore, and I moved in 2014. That's fucking wild. Wow. I'm honestly very impressed with that reservation weed. Go natives. You grow good shit, even back then. So if you live in Jamaica, you probably want to smoke it fast. Yes. Humidity is a killer for weed. It'll make it mold. 
humidity will make your weed mold. That was actually a big problem. A couple of years ago, a bunch of dispensaries got in trouble because they were, you know, they had more weed than they could sell and they weren't uh, storing it correctly. And a lot of it molded and they had to throw pounds and pounds and pounds of weed away. I mean, it was crazy. I can't even say. I think MDMA is an ecstasy. MDMA is different in that ecstasy has speed. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't fuck with danger drugs. I, I don't fuck with, I don't take that kind of shit, but um, I did learn about it in chemistry, and I'm pretty sure the difference is MDMA or Molly is the euphoric drug part, and if it's ecstasy, it's got speed in it, right? Dude, can you imagine the smell? What would moldy weed smell like burning? I don't even want to know. What up, computer nerd? How are you? <laughs> no, I don't want to know. <laughs> burning mold? Reservation weed. Murgle, we grew up on an Indian reservation. Like, in the U.S., we have Nate Indian reservations all over where, you know, our government was like, hey, we're going to give you guys syphilis, smallpox, and kill all of you and murder you in genocide, but we'll give you some shitty parts of land to, like, maybe live on. Tee-hee-ha-ha. Ha. Um, and they're... The more west you go, the bigger they get. They get huge. And in Washington State, there are a lot of Indian reservations. And we grew up on one. Or kind of in between two of them, actually. It was kind of weird. But, um, yeah, we grew up on one. But they're, they're ever, like, there are a ton of Indian reservations on the West Coast. I, f I feel like, anyways, personally, I just noticed more than when I lived on the East Coast. Like, on the East Coast, I remember in my woods. I think I told you guys about this. Vash probably remembers. This was ages ago. I went walking in the woods in Baltimore right behind my house when I first moved there. And I found an ancient, like a fucking ancient Indian burial ground that's just there. And I was like, oh, my God. And I, I went home and I asked Brian. I was like, what kind of natives lived here? Like, that is the, one of the coolest things I've ever found. No one knows. No one has any idea what Indians lived there. No one. It's not even part of curriculum, which was so weird to me. Because on the West Coast, when you go to school in Washington... 90% of your history lessons are all about the natives and the Native American culture and where the native tribes came from, where we moved them. Like, that's our, that's our education. Like, you're going to school with a lot of natives. And on the East Coast, pfft, didn't have any fucking idea. I think it's, I honestly have no idea. I think it was Iroquois. Iroquois were like New York and Jersey and a little bit of Delaware. And I think they moved down, but I don't know. It was, that was really weird, though. It's just a different, different area. You know what I mean? Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember coming home and I was so freaked out. And then I came on chat and I was like, guys, no one knows what Indians lived here. And I don't even. Did you just unplug my shit? I'll kill you. Don't touch my audio. That was my dogs touching cords. Ignore that sound. Sorry. Um, that's why MDA feels like I've never done heroin. I don't want to do that. That's that's a no. That's a scary. Oh, it's my keyboard. My keyboard keeps like un disconnecting and reconnecting. Weird. Stop. Anyways. Um, they're looking to, tar to target taking down the laws that prevent people from taking the native kids for white people or farmers to adopt. Good. There still isn't a law against that, even after all this shit that's been going down in Canada and otherwise. Wow. I'm sure you guys have heard about that, right? Like, the there is a law. Oh, okay, good. Oh, they want to take the laws away? What? It sounds very complicated. It sounds crazy complicated. That is confusing. I know the dogs are trying to fix this. What if the stream deck worked again? That'd be amazing. No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Good morning, Lizzie. How are you? <coughs> Pure MDMA or Molly is different from ecstasy, but they're related. Yeah, it's, the, it's like... M like MDMA is in ecstasy, right? But ecstasy has other stuff. I've never done it. I it just I the 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 risk of death is too high. I don't want to die that way. Native American history is fascinating. I honestly feel bad for people that and and it makes like if you look at how our country was formed, and you know I don't need to go into the details of the native genocide and white people horror, but we pretty much wiped out all the natives before we even really settled. So they didn't get to know them. And then when they started moving west, they, I think they got less slaughtery. Still slaughtery, but less slaughtery. I'm really grateful my grandparents or my relatives did not come over on a Mayflower. That's all I'm going to say. It's a federal issue, but then also a sovereign immunity issue. There's a lot in there. What is that? Sarah, can you explain that like I'm five? I told you my sister's smart as fuck. 
Genova, it was working before stream, and when I went live, it stopped working. I don't know why. And when I, I opened the app, it says waiting for OBS. So it's like OBS isn't communicating with Stream Deck for some reason this morning. I don't know why. It was working before stream, though, so... <sighs> Stupid. Good morning, Anubis. How are you, love? Speaking of Washington, World War II and Japanese Americans, dude. Blah, blah, blah. History of our country is wild. If you go on your own, if you take it upon yourself to, you know what, actually, Marilyn Maverick gave me a really good book I'm going to show you guys. Hold up. It is one of the best books. I've, I haven't read all of it yet, but it's kind of like the history of the United States, and it, it makes a lot of what we're going through right now make a lot of sense. It's always kind of been there. Ooh, Anubis. Yes. Kelsey, thank you so much for summoning the class, keeping the class alive, and giving a name swings for 72 fucking months. That's, That's a long fucking time, Hail Satan, and I appreciate you. Damn. <gasps> you have a direct ancestor on the Mayflower. Oh, Fridge. You know what? You are not that person. You are not a genocidal maniac, and you are a good person. Don't let it get you down. We probably all had shitty ancestors. My sister and I's, our grandpa, wait, was it our... No, our great grandpa like ordered our nana from Ireland like a fucking mail order bride through the Catholic Church. Nobody has perfect relatives. <laughs> Nobody. And we're white, which inherently we kind of fucking suck. Ugh. Both of these books are actually really good. <clears throat> I'm learning the 16th and 17th century America right now, and it's wild. Isn't it fucking gnarly? One of the craziest things that I learned about was that, like, you know, when we came to, the to this country, when white people came to the country, when Europeans or whatever, we came at a time when the natives of the U.S. were actually already going through ki kind of a pandemic of something else. And so all the great Indian nations were already really weakened by a disease that had already b been kind of going on for some reason without the white people showing up. And so had we shown up a couple years earlier, we would not be here. Like they would have been on the beach and fucking slaughtered us silly. There would have been so many more natives. That, like we would have been outnumbered like 100 to 1 basically. I mean, I can't remember the exact numbers. But had we come over a couple years earlier or found it a couple years earlier, we would not be here. Natives would rule this land and this would be theirs because they were at full strength. Like they had nations, huge nations across this country. It was, it's wild. That's probably one of the craziest things. Yeah, the natives kicked out the Vikings and the Spanish, I think, didn't they? I knew a dude who had a mail order bride rip him off and steal his truck. Oh my God, what a bitch. I mean, come on, it's agreed upon. Not, not my grandpa's, but nowadays, Jesus. As long as we acknowledge that we benefit from the system our ancestors exploited and aim to dismantle them in the capacity we can, then it's Gucci. Amen to that. I agree 100%, Lizzie. Like, and that's the, like, it's like, be a good person today. We might have shitty ancestors, but we can be good people today. A lot of pilgrims fucked up and went to dead lands and died from famine. Good. I mean, sad, but good. We accidentally killed a lot of natives as well from all our germs, bacteria we brought over. Yes. That's the big one. I actually just listened to a podcast that proved indefinitely, I guess I didn't know this, but I guess like historically speaking, we've, we historians have always ex have accepted that syphilis was given to us by the natives. Like the native tribes already had syphilis, but just lived, it wasn't killing them. It, they lived with like the, the skin form, not the venereal form. And then we got it via skin contact from them. But they found mummies in Rome and in a part of the UK who all had syphilis over 400 years before we ever came to America. It completely disproved any of that. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know that we were blaming natives for syphilis. Like, what the fuck is that shit? But it's totally bullshit. We gave it to them. Like, we came over and fucking spread that shit. It's wild. I mean, it actually, it was a really cool biology podcast talking about, like, how syphilis went from being a skin, like, a skin disease that wouldn't kill you to being a deadly venereal form. It's, it was pretty wild. But history, man, history, the things we can do now with, like, DNA and, the, you know, the way that they actually dated the bones, because the bones were so fucked up from syphilis. If you've never seen a skeleton infected with syphilis, the bones look like Swiss cheese. It's wild. It's like... It almost looks like the bones are only marrow now. They don't look like they have bone on them anymore. It's really scary looking. But because of that, 
it's really hard to carbon date the bones because they're so destroyed by the disease. Well, what they thought was the disease looking at it. So what they did was they fucking dated the coffins. They can look at the, they can microscopically look at a cell of the wood the coffins were made out of. And they can tell if the wood that year had a good growth year or a bad growth year or whatever. And then blah, 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 trickle down to the year it was buried. The person was buried. Fucking wild. I didn't even know that was a thing. Like it's called botan botanical forensics or something. Botanical for uh, something like that. Botany, botany forensics. Fucking crazy. <gasps> Alchemy, my love. How are you? Ooh, Sarah explained things like we're five. Okay, I got to read this. Hold on. I gotta read my sister's shit. She explained things like, cause I'm don't know these things. Hold up. Okay, I'm not, I'm for sure not an expert. It might get some of this wrong. Hey, there's a lot of lawyers in chat, so we can put this together together. It's cool, Sarah. I just appreciate you trying. <laughs> but you remember <clears throat> what you remember is that the tribes, the tribes, like official, like the tribes, are considered sovereign nations, but only if they're federally recognized recognized. The federal government, get ready for it, has consistently fucked over the tribes and deemed so many not federally recognized because they can. That's fucked up, side note for me. So then they get less protection. And then you have to deal with the balance between the federal U.S. government and the sovereign nations. So our government can straight up illegitimize a, a, a nation, a tribe, just because they can, essentially. Wow. That's fucking gross. <gasps> Virobot, I knew there was a resub while I was blabbing. Thank you so much for some of the glass, keeping the classy eleven, giving an eight swings. Virobot, I love you. As a white person, white people, right? I have a lot of like, I try to just be a good person today. Ignore, like what Lizzie said, acknowledge the past, dismantle what the fuck they did, but acknowledge the the privileges I've been able to grow, I've been able to take advantage of because of that. I can't say that our nation isn't racist. I can't say it wasn't built on fucking systemic racism because look at it. You have to acknowledge it. It's, it's just like saying, sorry, you acknowledge something and you try to do different. And if you apologize and don't try to do different, your apology is bullshit. Like your apology means nothing. I'm sorry, but that's it. Um, hold up. I want to thank you. Picking up. I got my chairs reclined back. I was playing games yesterday. Um, interest. Oh, wait, no. That's how Pocahontas died was from germs, bacteria. Oh, a lot of pilgrims ditched the monarchy and joined the Indians. That is a very interesting topic. Oh, I if you have anything to read on that, I'd love to read that. I just listened to podcasts that went into the details on the Salem witch trials. Oh, my God, that shit is so depressing. And talked about how that basically killed Puritanism as a specific religion. Very much so. It's I there's a really good podcast out there um, by history hit tv or whatever it's actually like the history channel from the bbc but they do a little podcast version too and they talk about that specifically fuck what was it i just listened to it really recently god damn it they found a human tooth two million years old alchemy no is that the link i, I pulled open your link but i hadn't caught up on chat yet i just grabbed the link so i wouldn't lose it that's fucking wild two million years wow wow yeah, carbon dating, like that DNA shit. It's wild. Archaeology is so cool. I wish I would have gone into something interesting like that. I was just so afraid I wouldn't make a living. I was like, I got to make money and like live. And I just don't know how you do that. Oh, Anubis. Oh, I'm, I'm excited slash nervous. <laughs> um, okay, so Sarah says, <clears throat> there are certain criteria they have to determine first, but it's happened a lot. Specifically, the tribes in the East Coast as they get smaller and smaller. wonder why yeah there were tribes that the u.s signed treaties with that formally say only on the condition that another tribe would never be recognized wow equality is the big lie is the big lie i mean it's one of them for sure that and freedom i'm so sick of people talking about freedom we have so many more freedoms we're so free america u.s we're the freest of the no we're not where did that come from? Look, we have a lot of freedoms. I'm very grateful to live where I live. There are places worse than America, but we're not the best by any fucking means. And I don't know, like you can't grow if you already think you're perfect. So how do we grow as a nation and become better 
and do better if we can't acknowledge that we're not perfect. You know what I mean? I wanted to test I wanted to test beds but was afraid there was no money in it so that I had to change the course of my career. You know you can get paid to smoke pot for a living now. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> there are things out there like a viral viral you could find them. I wouldn't pick archaeology as a profession. The job field's literally in ruins. <laughs> God damn you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You don't make a lot of as an archaeologist. That's why I left the history field and now I'm in tech. I still do archaeological digs on occasion with someone I do. Oh my God. Is it still fun? Do you still have a blast? What kind of things do you dig for specifically? Are you like into paleontology or like the uh, socio paleontology? I think it's called the human, the human aspect. Free dome. Oh my god, do you know that song? I don't want to say the <laughs> I hate it. The person who sings a song, Free Dome, more like Free Doom. Um, his name has the N-word in it, so it's really hard for me to just tell you. But there's a really good artist with that. He has a lyric about that that's really good. I just can't bring my why? Why do you why? Maybe so white people won't listen to music. I get that. There's no such thing as freedom other than death. I mean U.S. is number 69 on the least racist list. Out of what? Oh, my God. Ensville. Out of what? Like, is it countries? In order to actually make money with a history degree, you need to have X number of years experience, which you can't really get without a master's degree. But I need money for that. I need money for that, but can't get the jobs because they need a degree. Yeah. No, the circle. That's totally. That's why I didn't go any further in psychology. I got a degree in psychology and I really I, I did chemistry and I was doing psychology on the side because I really wanted to do something with psychology but you have to get a master's if not a PhD to practice therapy just to counsel just to be a counselor or a therapist you have to have I think a PhD and I just don't want to go to that much school like I went to so much I went to nine years like I was so done by that point like fuck off and I didn't understand how I was going to become any smarter by TAing a class for a teacher I don't know paying to TA a class for a teacher. I had to look at healthcare.gov to see if I could afford insurance. Oh god, I can pay $900 where the insurance won't cover the first 7,000. What? Whoa. You still have to pay 900 on top of that though. That's fucking sick. For Native Americans, the War of 1812 was a desperate struggle for freedom and independence. Native Americans became involved in the conflict to secure British support for their own war against the United States, led by Tecumseh I think I'm saying that right, Tecumseh. They played a key role in defending Canada. Damn, I'm going to look that up. I'm going to have to read about that. But let me, sh let me show you this book that Maverick gave me because it's so fucking cool. It's huge, but it's really informative. It's like, it just makes everything make sense. Like, I'm like, oh, this is why we are the way we are today. Like, it's not like it came out of nowhere. It's just I'm more cognizant of it. Get the fuck out of here. Um, Where did my lyric? Oh, there's the article. So this is the article from... Uh, alchemy before I lose it student finds a student finds a 1.8 million year old tooth 1.8 million year old tooth one of the oldest signs signs of hominins outside of Africa oh my god where they find it in Georgia they found a 1.8 million year old tooth in Georgia wow Oh, the country Georgia. Okay, just kidding. I was like, how? Country Georgia makes more sense. Still really cool, though. Archaeologists, oh, and I should have read the article. I just looked at the fucking caption under the tooth. The article first sentence, archaeologists in the nation of Georgia last week. Discovered a tooth belonging to an ancient human species believed to be, to be around 1.8 million years old. The, the molar was found by a research student at the or, Oros Manny. Oros Manny? Dig site dated between 1.77 and 1.84 million years old. What the fuck? Wow. How do you do you just come when that happens? Like, how do you feel when that happens? When you find that? That's fucking wild. Oh, <gasps> Delphinus, cheers and have a beautiful day. If you wanted to know the book I was talking about, this is the one. Sorry, I take forever. Hey, your girl has an ancient history degree, shout out. But you also have a Latin degree. I mean, Sarah, you're smart as fuck. I would, I would argue to say that all of everything you know helps. Um, this book is so fucking fun to read. I know it looks insane. Um, it's called The World's, The Words That Made U.S., That Made Us, but it's like the U.S., you know? 
the words that made us, the words that made the U.S. And it is, did you just fart? God, you stink. Do we need to take a break? Do you need to take a shit? Is that what's up? Yeah. Um, it's fucking fascinating. The, the, the writing is really big. I don't know if you can, nope, it's so white. It's not going to tell. Uh, the book is huge because the writing is really big, but it is so good. I highly advise you giving this a read. I like, I'm not done with it, but it's, man, I don't, I don't want to spoil it. I'm trying to describe it without saying anything. It's just great. You got to check it out. Good book. If you like history stuff, it's really fun. And then the other book I was just saying, this is, uh, Myron sent me this. I reference this in therapy all the fucking time. Taking charge of adult ADHD. Let me tell you, this book, I keep it on my desk constantly. And I'm always opening it up like, hold on, I read about that last week. And I'll pull it up and then we discuss something forever. Like it feels like a book club. But it, I really like this because it doesn't just point out a whole bunch of ADHD symptoms as like everything in the world does. Like, oh yes, I have ADHD, I, I identify, but now what? That's always my question. I'm tired of people pointing out all the symptoms. Like, yes, I have neurodivergence, I'm highly aware, but now what? Like, I'd like to work with my brain to work with the world. And this book actually does that. Like, it, do it does outline, like, symptoms. And it, it has lots of little stories and excerpts and stuff about personal experiences from adults with ADHD. But it actually talks about how you can move forward and how you can grow with your ADHD and not ignore it, not, like, smother it with Adderall or whatever, but, like, learn that it's kind of your superpower a little bit in a way. And I just, man, I'm into it. I would, I would give this, it's also a workbook. There's like little workbook sections and stuff, but if you have ADHD and you often feel lost and sad, this book is pretty sick. It's helped me a lot. Just like identifying behaviors and patterns before I get stuck in them and being able to pull out is nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. Good book. Try it out. I like to read. Are there any good remote-based therapy you'd recommend? You know, Zach has been having a really good, 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 good time. He's had very good luck with um, BetterHelp. I think that's what he's using. Z Zach is doing BetterHelp, and he loves it. He had one therapist who he went to for a couple weeks. Didn't really click. She wasn't bad, but he was like, we just, I just don't feel like I click with her. And so he, all he did was, like, on the app, like you say, I'd like to try a new therapist. And he got a guy, and this guy is, like, becoming, like, his best friend. He's like, we, I feel like we're just chilling. But I go to his desk and he has post-it notes all over his desk of notes from his therapy. Like just just little notes all over from his therapy. So I know he's doing therapy, but he like they just click so much better. And I like that you can find a new therapist really easily. I didn't know that you could do that with better help. But, um, you know, shopping for a doctor, shopping for a therapist, like shopping for any of that can be fucking exhausting, especially when you have to go in person to all of them. Like it just becomes kind of uh, on top of all the other things you have to do in life. It's a lot. And I like that he could just be like, there's no hate here. We're just not clicking. You know what I mean? Not a bad therapist, just not a click. I love that. That's like the best. <gasps> Zlog, thank you so much for summoning the class, keeping the class alive, and giving an anus its wings for three months. That's a long time, and I appreciate you. Hail the bank lord. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've, I have the same therapist that I've been seeing since Baltimore. I just do tele, I do little Zoom meetings with her now. But um, he does better help, and he really likes it. Like he's, I mean, he likes it. He's having success. He feels like this therapist sees him and is working really well with him, which is dope. I'm not, sp I know I'm not sponsored by anybody. <laughs> if only, I just like to help my friends. <laughs> reading is great. I'm currently reading a fascinating book called Beyond the Self, a conversation between Buddhism and neuroscience. Oh, dude, I love Buddhism. It's an, in it's interesting to learn about where they have actually taken clinical data and shown actual benefits to meditation. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to read that. I love that. I think Buddhism's fascinating. It's like what I strive for. Like that level of peace in my soul to be able to sit still in silence. Holy shit, I can't even. Absolutely. Vash, anytime, dude. You know me in mental health. I had to have a breakdown in a bathtub, fully clothed, on the phone with my mom, thinking I was dying of a brain tumor before I did anything. I'd much rather you guys do something about feeling not okay before that point. That's not a point you want to be at. Your mom laughs. <laughs> uh, beyond the self. Perf, thank you. There was a correctness. Wait, wait, wait. 
there was a correctness course at this office that we all have to do. Checkbox culture. Oh, yeah. And somebody asked, what does neurodivergent mean? And in the back of the classroom, somebody pipes up. It means how bonkers we all are. Fuck, that's perfect timing. <laughs> that's goddamn beautiful. I would have laughed too. That's gorgeous. It is. I had a really good therapist in person. She helped me a bunch. A few years later, my doc sent in a referral because I was doing really shitty and they denied it. Wow. Dude. They can... Den How can... Okay. I have so many questions. <laughs> If my brain is telling me to kill myself, how can someone outside of my body tell me how I'm feeling or invalidate it or reject? I don't know how that works. I love the word bonkers. Me too. It's a good one. It doesn't make any sense to me that you can do that because it's it, it's. Uh, it's telekinesis, Kyle. Those are mind bullets. Apparently. Insurance companies suck, but Ensville isn't even in the U.S. Like, Ensville's literally got what we all dream of, the socialized healthcare. Insurance, yeah. Insurance companies are the devil, though. Good morning, C-Town. How are you, love? I agree. They're the worst. I really like bananas, as in, like, oh, yeah, this shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. This shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Bananas are sick. Do you eat the bananas? I was borderline suicidal, but my doctor put that in the referral and they were like, nah, because it was summer vacation time. I mean, if there is a time to not want to die or you need help, I would believe it would be summer vacation time. My God. Good morning, Android. How are you, love? I love the biochem of how Vyvanse works. You mean SSRIs in general or does Vyvanse, is Vyvanse unique somehow? The best therapist left to become a grief therapist at a hospice at a hospice center. I'm glad she got to do a better job, but I miss her. The one I had after that told me that I subconsciously wanted to leave my husband when I said I had abandonment issues. What the fuck? And was always worried he'd leave me? You subconsciously want to leave? I've never had a therapist tell me what my own thoughts are. That's That would be a red flag for me. I don't like that. Oh my god, Robo. I, fucking, I can sing fuck her gently word for word right now. I know it by heart. It's disgusting. My sister and I will sing it in the car if my mom won't feed us. Like if we're on a road trip and my mom's like, you guys are always hungry. Just start singing fuck her gently, really loudly in the car, word for word with no music in the background. You'll get fed. It works every time. I just call those neurotypical people normally disturbed because you don't go through all this life without a few trauma bumps and pitfalls, character building, so to speak. 100% agree. I think some people are in denial or they think they're better than us by not admitting that they're hurting or something. Like, I'm strong and I just get through my day and I, I deal with it. I put a smile on like that. I don't think you're stronger but for doing that. Good Lord. I showed my doctor the letter and said it would make a hell of a final note. He pushed it. He pushed for it again and they just told me nah again. What the fuck? That's insane. Luckily, my dark humor and my sense of outrage kept me going. How long ago was this? Jesus Christ. That's really fucking terrible. I mean, I'd love to joke about it, but goddamn. That's horrible. Neurotypicals are the one who isn't tag, tag neurovergent, hence normal. Yeah, the, the misnomer. I don't think anybody is, though. I think everybody's neurodivergent to a certain point. Nobody's, nobody's all right upstairs. They're, they're just, they've like adapted. You know what I mean? I thought the point was to ask questions, right? Not just like state, make statements and push ideas on you. Like that sounds like brainwashing more than therapy. Fucker Gently is a great song. It's one of the best Tenacious D songs ever. It's so good. Sometimes you just got to fuck her hard. Method it because it bypasses the liver. Gross. Oh, that's sad. Don't do that. Don't inject things, please. I sing Christmas carols in July in the car on a road trip if I don't get my way. Oh, yes. Also, the song that never ends. This is the song that never ends. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it not knowing what it was. And they'll keep on singing it not knowing just because it is a song that never ends. -na -na -na. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. -na -na -na. We'd start going in rounds. I will be fed if I'm hungry.
and I will psychologically fuck you until you feed me. <laughs> it's impossible to start the song because it's a song that never ends. <laughs> it's really hard to stop, but it's a good one and it works. Gallows humor is the entire reason I'm alive. It's the only, it's also why I sometimes make awkward jokes and I'm just like, it's just me. Same. I would say almost the exact same fridge. Like if gallows humor or black humor, dark humor, whatever the fuck you want to call it, isn't a huge reason why I'm still here today. I don't know what it is. That's, I think that's the only reason I can get around a lot of shit because I can make a joke out of it. It makes it easier to deal with. And how they change the not so great bits, not telling you how they feel because I read a book. Exactly. Exactly. Fuck that shit. Yeah, I don't, I would never want to go to a therapist that was pushing thoughts on me. Like, this is what you're secretly thinking. What? It's one thing to ask, like, do you think maybe subconsciously you're thinking about leaving your husband and the anxiety? Like, that's a question. But pushing thoughts like that, absolutely not. That's weird. She straight up just told me, have you thought about the fact that perhaps you want to end your relationship and that's why you're obsessing about it? Uh, no, I have abandonment issues because when I made, when I made my mom and she told me to go fuck, fuck myself and would leave the house for hours. Yeah. And like, that's just, I wouldn't go there either. That doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. Good morning, Shad. <gasps> just out of therapy and freshly unfunked brain. How are you feeling? We're literally talking about therapy right now. What good timing. <laughs> and the other song you would sing is I Know a Song That Will Get On Your Nerves. Which one? We would sing any of them. We would sing the I Love You song from Barney. Like, it was just, we went on a shit ton of road trips as a kid. All my family lived on the west side of the state, and we lived in the east corner of Washington. So we went on a shit ton of road trips. And my stepdad, he will literally blast through the, through the state in five hours because he has a penis. So he can stop on the side of the road, piss on the tire of his truck, and keep going. Unfortunately, he had four daughters in the back of the car who need to eat and piss in a toilet. And so he would be like, we're almost there. Stop bitching. This is a song that never ends. Ba -na -na -na. Feed me. Feed me. Truck stop anything. I know. She's just, she's just licking my legs. She's just a lover. She just needs all the snuggles all the time, huh? Yeah. Do you need to go potty? Is that what's up? Your farts smell like a dead corpse, kind of. Oh, no, you're crawling up on me? Okay. Do it if you can. It's amazing to me that you can fit yourself up here. That's all I have to say. My lap isn't that big, but the way she just fucking climbs up me is great. Good job. You knocked my mirror over. How does it feel? Good? Was that scary? Thank you. Is this your stream now? Okay. <sighs> um. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Absolutely. Or the bottles of beer. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around. Is this fun for you? I don't, I don't know what she gets out of this. This is now the billet. She's, she's pushing into me so hard. Like she's, <laughs> she is your new Lord and master. Um, ale bill. What are you doing? What are you doing? Pretty girl. Oh, God. I know. Trick's right here like, Mom, I want to hug Bubba. I love you. This is so pushy. What are you doing? Oh. Okay. You're 80 pounds. I can't. God. They're very heavy. Holy crap. All right. Let's take a break. I'll take my dogs out and poop them. Um. Ah, uh, Fridge, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Kendo. Kendo, you're a butt wizard of the highest order. Wait, no, continuing gifted sub. Oh my God, sorry. Continuing gifted sub from Kendo. I appreciate you. Thank you. <gasps> Got a jet for the IRL wife stream. Ooh, is she doing her, is she doing uh, special effects today? Dude, fuck yes. Cheer, I will post, I'm going to post cheers when I come back because I got a loaded bowl. But I'm going to post cheers, you see, Nimuist. 
thank you for stay, hanging out with us today. I voted a hundred times for your, your lady. Like actually, because she deserves it. And I fl I put I put her voting page on my screen for like an hour, <laughs> and I made everybody vote for it. So, sorry, but we love. <laughs> We got a love to give. We got a lot of love to give. Do you have the link with you right in your CD Moist? Because I'd love to put it up again. We got a lot of love to give and we need to support our artists. If you guys didn't know, CD Moist's partner does some of the most phenomenal SFX cosplaying I've ever personally seen in my life. There's dog hair on my face. She streams. She's awesome. She's in a competition, like literally in the running to win one right now, which is really fucking cool for her SFX stuff. Like, it's just, you guys know me. I love SFX. I love that stuff. But if you have a link to it, I'd love to put it up and make everybody vote for it again. You can vote once for free or you can pay, you can donate to a charity and vote 100 times or 50 times or whatever you want. And I, I like to see my friends win, win, win. What can I say? Um, I'll be back in a few. I'm going to go pee and make some more coffee. Load a bowl. Drink your shit. Do what you need to do. Wipe your butts. Clean your piss mittens. See Nimuis. If you have the link to the voting stuff, Feel free to post in chat. Your um, one of my mods can give you a permit. I'll give you a permit before I leave, just in case. But if not, whisper it to me, and I'll post it because I want people to vote. I'll be back. Maybe up oh, stream elements doesn't work today. I tried it. It's fine. Ugh, I need it back. <laughs> I hope you all voted, please, for Ashley. Um, seriously, like the amount of work that goes into building those costumes <laughs> i couldn't even begin to tell you what it takes to build those costumes because i refuse to do it i don't like to sew that much but holy shit it is insane cosplay is i watch i i follow a lot of cosplayers on tiktok and on instagram now and i watch this like the time lapses of them building the foam chunks when they make like they make these armor pieces that are enormous it's just the the sheer amount of artistic effort put into that stuff like fuck we got to support our own right uh, now i can post cheers D little didn't shit though she's gonna just fart me up all day why is your window broke but who broke it i did mad moxie one time and her mad moxie makes me look like a child who played with finger paints that's how good she is I'm not saying I'm good. Like, she literally made me look like I did it with my eyes closed. She's fabulous. I fuck around. Bitch is a professional. <laughs> <coughs> it was, oh, well, I mean, if you finish breaking it, you kind of got to pay for it, bro. That's, you know, if you want a window. Cheers, homies. If you want, if you got it. Take your joy if you haven't. You take your joy today. Oh, you got locked out? Well, Never fuck that. To take I mean, joy. And I guarantee your day will go as smooth as velvet. Evil Toaster, thank you so much for stopping the glass. Keep it the glass. I love you. Give it an eight. It swings. <coughs> Holy crap. Eliza, good morning and cheers. Holy shit. <coughs> that weed is strong and I forgot. Dude, isn't she fucking talented? She's nasty talented. I know I love looking at her stuff. And she streams it. She streams making some of it, which is fucking amazing. <coughs> Dude, one time I locked myself out of my apartment in Baltimore on accident. Total accident, actually. I went, I took Millie out at like seven in the morning to go potty out in the grass. And I went out my sliding glass door. And this apartment I had was super weird. It had three sliding glass doors that all led to the exact same like four by four cube of cement. <laughs> Like, I had a sliding glass door in my kitchen, and then kitty corner in my living room, and then one coming out of my office. It was so weird. But I had three sliding doors, and so they all had, like, um, you know, the safety bar, so people can't, like, unlock them with a credit card and come into your house. They all have safety bars on them, but the one that came out of my living room, I would keep the safety bar out, and I would go in and out of that door all the time to smoke weed or take Millie out. And I took her out, and when I shut the door, apparently it was hard enough that the bar just fell down and, and like, jammed my door shut. So it was like 7 a.m. I did not have my keys. I was in my pajamas. It was freezing. It was wintertime. And I had Millie out there. Yeah, it was terrible. So um, <laughs> my front door was unlocked. 
but I had a chain lock, like one of those little like chain things, you know, because it's Baltimore. I have a lot of locks. Um, and it was a Saturday and I called my apartment complex and I was like, hey, I just locked myself out. I'm, I shit you not. Direct quote. We don't have break in services on the weekends. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, we don't have anyone to let you in on the weekends. You have to wait till Monday to get back into my fucking apartment. So I, I, like, I think one of my neighbors actually came out and she was like, are you okay, Katie? You seem like you're kind of panicking, like walking around your apartment a bunch. And I'm like, I locked myself out. I don't know what to do. And I shit you not, there was in my apartment complex, I was on the ground floor, but the two floors above me were just two single women who lived by themselves with their, one lived with their son, one lived with their daughter. And I, I tried to get to know my neighbors just so they know my name. Because when you live alone, you know, it's safe to know your neighbors in case you need help or something. So I just knew their names. And one of them was this sweet school teacher. She had, like, long salt and pepper hair. She kind of looked like a flowy hippie. And she comes out of her apartment with these enormous bolt cutters. Like, fucking, rec- like, a, like, professional bolt cutters. Huge. And she walks down to my apartment and fucking just snips the chain so I could get into my apartment. And I'm like, are we going to get in trouble? Like, why do you have bowl cutters honey don't ask and then she just walks back up to her apartment with her fucking bowl cutters i was never and they never asked ever though like i i never told them we had to snip the chain and i moved out and never a question but i've had to do the same like what the fuck else are you gonna do she was my hero she was the sweetest person she actually like kept in contact with me she found me on facebook and messaged me a couple times about perfume or something she was the nicest lady yeah, she was just like kind of like an old hippie. Like you could tell she was like, you know, burn the bras kind of hippie, but she had both. She was, she, you know who she reminded me of? She reminded me of Lillian from, uh, but sweet, like a sweet, meek, not meek, but you know, a quiet, more fragile version of Lillian from um, uh, Kimmy Schmidt. She kind of like that, like flowy skirts and the long, crazy hair and like just was kind of had just mystically fucking comes out of her apartment with enormous bolt cutters. Don't ask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carol Kane, yes. Very much so. Did you know she got her fucking teeth fixed? It's so weird. She smiles different now. I don't know how I feel about it. Part of me would want to be like, I left the stove on. Oh my God, I should have thought of that. Fuck. I should have been like, I can see my kitchen on fire. <laughs> And then when they showed up, be like, I lied. Thanks for letting me in on a weekend. Speaking of voting, today is National Voter Registration Day. Yes. And if you log in, I, I noticed this, Zoe. Thank you for mentioning that. If you log into almost every single, like, uh, social media platform, except Twitter. I don't know why Twitter didn't do this. The first thing that pops up is a website to go check and see if you're registered to vote. Like, Instagram does it. Facebook has one. Like, on the very top, it's, like, a link for your state, and you can click it. And there's also a really good website. What is it called? Oh, fuck. There's a good website you can go for any state and check to see if you're registered. It's not vote.org. It's a different one. Fuck, what is it? It's just easy. It's just, it's, like, not a government one. Oh, Twitter just added it? Oh, no shit. Hell yeah. It's, guys, we gotta vote. The, read your shit read the stuff about your fucking constituents local elections matter please if you give any fucks about me and the rights to my own health care over my body vote i don't want to pull the selfish card but if you give any fucks about me you will vote i am female and my country is currently stripping dead corpses have more rights than me Right at this exact moment, a corpse has more rights than I do in this state. That's fucking crazy. The fact that a member of our community has to do telecommunicate, telecommunicative appointments from, from Las Vegas to Colorado just to get trans health care is wrong. There is no trans health care. There is one clinic in the entire state of Nevada that offers trans health care, and it's in Reno. That's disgusting. Everyone should be able to go anywhere and be offered health care. No matter what it looks like in your pants, for fuck's sake. If you care about me, if you care about anyone other than yourself, please, for the fuck's sake, vote. Please. I will, I will beg on my knees and cry. It, 
please. I have gotten, oh, oh, Twitter sent me a notification this morning to sign up. Like, I have gotten a reply. Oh, my God, Genova. Coffee, though. Cheers. <laughs> Imagine Marjorie Taylor Greene on your local city council. Um, Bobert. I'm not saying it's any better or worse. I'm just saying we're kind of fighting the same level of, I mean, Bobert is, is representing some part of Colorado. I can't remember which part, but she literally thinks we should have like a religious test to be a, she said this very recently. We need a religious citizenship test. Fucking psychopaths. They're all off their goddamn rockers. Part of me is convinced it's all an act just to give women a bad name in government yet again. That's all I can think of because they're just so crazy. The fact that a woman can get raped and the dude has a child rights is insane. 100% yes. I mean, there are women in our country right now who ha are trying to get an abortion because the baby is not viable. Like, they are pregnant with a baby that doesn't have a skull, doesn't have a heart, doesn't have a brain. And they're being forced to carry it full term to give birth to a baby that will die the moment it hits air. Have any of you had a child? I have not. But I can only deem to imagine the connection you grow with the baby as it grows in your stomach to know. You're not counting down to the moment you get a child. You're counting down till the moment you get to watch your kid die. The one that you felt grow and kick and roll and move in your stomach for nine months. Or the 16-year-old who's being forced to carry a child to full term from rape because she's not mature enough for an abortion. None of these should be real statements I'm saying out loud. All of this should be from the fucking onion. You know what I'm saying? Yep, you still have a month to register. Today is, today is uh, National Register to Vote Day. That's the only reason we're talking about it. And like every website is putting a big thing at the top of the website. For websites, for, wow, it's a lot of website. Every like social media thing you go to, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, so on and so forth, at the very top when you log in, it's going to have a banner that says click here to see if you are registered to vote in your state. Almost all of them are doing it. It's pretty crazy. Glut, I was kind of thinking that when I said it. I was like, even the, even the onion wouldn't do that. I just couldn't come up with anything else. No, I totally, I totally get it. It is disgusting. It's still a problem because people don't vote. We have one of the lowest voter turnouts of all countries in the world in our country, which is disgusting. That's why people will cry and bitch and complain, but they won't vote. Unfortunately, it's just upsetting. I don't know. I don't have an answer. It's the evangelicals. They've been radicalizing children for decades. Did you see the documentary Jesus Camp? Yes. That fucking, that documentary fridge fucked me up for the rest of my life. It's hard to watch because it feels like child abuse. I think it is. I think it is. No one is speaking tongues to the Easter Bunny. Yet the Easter Bunny and the Jesus Camp Jesus and the flag with George Bush's face on it have the same validity as the Easter Bunny. And yet, literally, like, children going, ha ma na na ma ma na ma ha na na ma like, five-year-olds. And there's a seven-year-old. You remember the seven-year-old girl? The one that really hit me is the seven-year-old girl who loves to dance, but she won't dance because it's provocative to Jesus. Like, her parents are making her stop taking dancing lessons because it's too provocative for Jesus. She's just a little gymnastics kid. She's, like, five or six or seven or something. I don't know. She's little and scrawny. And a great little dancer already. She does some for the camera, and you're like, damn, girl has a history, has a future. And her parents are like, it's too passionate for Jesus. Like, it's that kind of, I think that is, a, a, it's, it's an abuse. I think it's fucking weird. It's, it's manipulation of a child brain with, like, questionable information at best. I don't think Jesus would say any of that. Like, Jesus was a pretty dope dude. Literally his entire town and his entire family tried to shove him off a cliff for being like, hey, maybe be nice to your neighbor. They were like, nah, bitch. It is. It's gaslighting. Yeah, it is. It's gaslighting a child, which is fucking psychotic. I don't know how anyone could do that to a kid. I have a hard time not being very honest with children because I, I didn't like being lied to when I was a kid. I always knew when my parents were not telling me everything. And I was like, okay, you're full of shit. I love seeing Republicans say that, they, that, that the founding fathers were Christians. Like, I'm not American, yet I seem to know more about the Constitution and the founding fathers than some politicians. Yeah. Like uh, Lauren Boebert saying... There's nowhere in the Constitution that says there should be a separation of church and state, and yet. Which, which amendment is it? Is it number one? 
And my taxes, like, I live in her state. My taxes pay her fucking income for weird big old titties. Body shaming a child, very much so. I mean, it's, it's a whole other form of, like, body shaming a child. Yes, very much so. It's gross. Bobert represents the third district, or most of the backward, the backwards hick west of the Rockies, plus a tiny chode that sticks into the east. <laughs> I love you, banana. Jesus Christ. I'm glad she's nowhere near me, but fucking Christ. The fact that she's even in the state is horrifying. Horrifying. <laughs> If he was real, yeah, he was not teaching what the evangelicals teach. Yeah, no. <laughs> the first. It's literally the first. And yet, I have trust issues because I grew up around adults that all lie to me constantly. Same. Same. I, I never give people the... I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but in the back of my mind, I assume everyone's lying to me to get something out of me. It's terrible. I'm still working it out with my... I'm working it out of my system with my therapist. I'm getting better at it, but it it's literally like... Or... I don't know, did you experience this where, like, you didn't necessarily know when your parents were lying to you, but they straight up would say, like, this is what we're telling Nana. Like, they would teach you lies, and you would just watch them smooth as butter feed them to everybody else around you, and you were like, there's no way they're lying to literally everyone but me. That was a moment I remember having very strangely clear as a child, <laughs> like... I'm not the only special that's not being lied to. And we were, I mean, that was like, my Nana went to her grave not knowing anything about me. She literally called me her perfect angel from day one. She would always say that. And she, it pissed my mom off to end, to no end because I was not. But my mom wouldn't tell her any of the truth. So my mom would be like, yes, she's a perfect angel. My Nana would be like, my perfect angel, Catherine. And my mom would just be like fucking smoke out of her ears. <laughs> but she never told her. And I mean. I could go on. The way my mom told my Nana she had breast cancer was like giggling over the kitchen sink while my Nana was watching Price is Right. It was wild. Their communication. I mean, I hope I communicate better than that. This is why I'm in therapy. I don't get to vote till 11-3. Yeah, we still have. I mean, there's still a vote. Uh, there's still an entire month to register, I think. I'm just trying to get people to register, if anything. But I will pull the personal. If you claim to care about me, you will vote. Because my rights are quite clearly all over this ballot right now, for fuck's sake. We got the bridge troll MTG. Yep, that's how we started it. Yep. Someone in chat was like, at least, or no, it was, it was Zoe. Zoe's like, at least you don't have MTG. I was like, bitch, we got Bobert. I mean, they're not, one's not worse than the other or better. It's just equal psychotic. What the fuck is going on? Why are you, why are you here? Wait, shut up, Rod. Rod said, the woman is from the middle of nowhere, Colorado. There are more goats than people in her district. Why does that? for some reason, feel like it makes a lot of sense to me. Hi, Trekkie. How are you, love? My parents were always doing that. Okay, so as far as grandma's concerned, this is what we're telling her. Yes. Yep. The whole family. I mean, they didn't... I don't think any of my family knows I was expelled. And, like, that's kind of shit that is weird to... When you get expelled from school in eighth grade and your family calls your house in the middle of the day on a Wednesday and you answer the phone and you got to explain why you're home... And your mom's like, you don't tell anyone that. You're just like, I'm sick all the time. <laughs> and then you're just lying to your Nana. It felt bad. I think I did tell her some shit when my mom wasn't around because I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I loved my Nana. She was, and the crazy thing is my mom, my Nana was such an accepting, loving woman. Like, I have a cousin who is he's a sexual predator. I don't know how else to put that. When he was younger, he liked to like go out in public and reveal his penis to children. I'm not even kidding you. This is a blood cousin. I know. I hate this. Everyone has one in their family though, right? Um, and my Nana wouldn't even disown him. Like she still believed he was good. She was like, he's a good person. I will give him money if he needs money. Like she was that kind of person. And the fact that my mom was like, you can't tell her anything about our lives. I was like, why? When has Nana been a dick to anyone? She's, she won't even tell Dennis to go away, for fuck's sake. None of us like Dennis. We all wanted Dennis to go away, but my Nana was the only one that wouldn't because it's her grandson. She loved him and blah, blah, blah. But no, big nope on that one. I was nearly removed from my grandfather's will when my parents thought it would be cute that I got drunk as a teenager. Oh my God, what? They thought it would be cute? That's what you get for thinking, I guess, yeah. So my husband and I aren't technically married. It's just easier way, easier to say. But anywho, 
when we first moved in together, my mom was like, you're not telling grandma. As far as she's concerned, you still live at home. That's so weird. See, and my Nana, she was the type that like you couldn't sleep with your significant other in her house in the same bed unless you were married. My Nana was that way. But if you lived together, it's not like she shamed you. Like if if I brought a boyfriend to stay, she was like, he just sleeps on the couch. And I'm like, that's fine. I get a bed to myself. She never shamed, though. I never felt shamed by my Nana, even though she was like Catholic as fuck and Irish as a sin. My uncle went to prison on a false assault charge, and my dad was the only one who stood by him when I was, like, 10. And my mom told me only, like, two years ago, oh, he wasn't allowed to be around us kids, and we never knew. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Was he ever, like, a, like is the word acquitted? When you are, you know, the charges are not put on you? Or was he actually, like, put in jail for it? One of my cousins sexually messed with my other cousin. It always, I mean, yeah, that's, it's ramp, it's everywhere. It sucks. I don't, I won't go into too many details, but. Another day, another time, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's everywhere. Like, there, every family has some fuckery in it. But my Nana would never. She was so loving. She was just like a ball of love. And the fact that we had to keep a lot of things secret from her was always so weird. And all of us were fucked up. Like, all my siblings. I'm the first of eight to go to college, and, or to graduate high school, actually. And I'm the second youngest. So, like, I was doing pretty good. It felt weird that I had to hide shit from her. Sounds like a menace. He, he is. And I didn't know, like, it was kind of like Lizzie said, I didn't know anything about his, like, shit when I was a kid. He was still invited to Christmas. But I remember as a kid, like, my grandpa or my stepdad would always, like, corner my sister and I on a couch and sit by us and like have me and my sisters on one side of the couch where no one could sit on the other side and he'd be right there and he would never let us like like the way my nana's house was built it was a rancher a huge beautiful rancher and there was this huge front room and then these like sliding grand wood doors would open to the hall to go to all the bedrooms and there were a bunch of there was two like tv rooms where my grandpa would go to one to watch his shows we'd go to one and my nana would have the big screen in the front room and do the family shit he wouldn't let us go like, I remember that on Christmas is every holiday. We could never go to a room by ourselves. But any other time, like, the moment I went to Nana's house, I would go to the freezer, get a frozen Snickers, and go to the back room and watch TV. Like, that's all I did. But on Christmas, we weren't allowed to. And I always knew that, but I didn't know why. And later in life, my mom was like, yeah, your cousin's a little bit of a fuck, and we were just protecting you because your Nana is too is loving. My grandpa never hit us. No. I don't, my parents were, my, like, it's all psychological shit. I was never, my brothers beat the shit out of me. That was, I mean, my brothers literally, like, they watch, we would watch WFW, WWF, WFW, Katie. I mixed WCW and WF in my head. We'd watch WWF, and, like, then my brother Corey would go outside, rip his t-shirt off, and literally announce, the beatings will now begin. And if we didn't run outside excited to get beat the fuck up, he'd come in and find us, and it would be worse. That happened. Protecting us, 100%. Yeah, my dad and my grandpa, like, I have a lot of pictures. I, just looking at pictures, always, me and my little sister are cornered on a couch, and it's either my grandpa or my stepdad right next to us, protecting us. And it's not that anything had ever happened to us with Dennis, but they were aware of what had happened with Dennis with other people, and they were like, nah, not even putting you in that, in, in that's like, no opportunity. You know what I mean? Really, Tank? I was, my mom didn't believe in spanking. I think I was spanked once by my dad, my biological dad. I have a really, really weird, vague memory from when I'm, like, in a crib. So I, th I think I'm, like, two years old or something. It's really weird. It's such a, I remember holding the edge of a crib and, like, shaking it and screaming and crying. And my mom and dad were fucking screaming, fighting in front of me in my bedroom. And my mom told me later in life it's because my dad spanked me. I did something and my dad spanked me and my mom Pikachu went nuts. Up. She doesn't believe in hitting. What is this? Bohammer underscore 419 tipped five dollars. CK was in a gang bang this weekend with my Furby partner and the dragon from Shrek and because Mercury is in Gatorade I decided to drink Kirby's piss and check out Rod's fan site but then I was blinded by Rod's naked pigtailed shriveled mole rat paleness you woo. <laughs> 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 
is it? Let me turn it down. Thank you for letting me know, David. I appreciate you. I don't know if you remember, but I split my audio, so I don't hear what you guys hear. So if the music is ever too loud, let me know, and I can I can turn the music down and all that. I just contr- I have to control it differently, so I really do appreciate you guys letting me know when it's too loud, because I don't know. I was adopted, but when I got older, he would always be... So I was adopted, but I got older, he would always be the golden child, and adopted parents never understood me. Hmm. And I was the problem child and blamed. That happens when you're not adopted, though. I'm not saying it's like... I would never compare as I'm not adopted. I have no idea. But my parents had favorites. I mean, every as human, how can we not have a favorite? Like, parents, you love all your kids the same. But there's inherently going to be children you get along with that you have and children that you have nothing in common with. And I wouldn't fault my parents for that. My ex's mother was a lovely woman. But the, woman's, the words she used about black people were toe-curlingly awful. Ugh. She wasn't racist as such. Yeah, one of those, like, generational, like, racist in just... Like, like the systemic racism kind of thing. It's hard. My grandparents were like that when I was really young. And as I got older and my grandma got older, my grandma changed a lot. And she started being a lot less racist and, like, apologizing and being a lot more accepting of people. But when, the, when I was younger, I don't – Lynn, I think I've told you guys this story. I went to second grade. It was right after my dad died. We went to live with my grandparents for a while while my, while my mom tried to find a house. And so I was living with my grandparents at the time. And I don't remember them specifically teaching this to me. But it's just always been a thing. Around Christmas, you know, you always have, like, I don't know if you guys do. My parents always have a bowl of nuts during the holidays on tables. And you can just sit and crack nuts and eat them if you want. I don't fucking know why. And usually there's tangerines or something. It's a thing. But my Nana would always have nuts out. And you know the big old Brazil nuts? They're like the, they look like a dark brown kind of half moon shape. And they've got that huge, delicious, like, white macadamia nut textured nut on the inside. They're called a Brazil nut. But my Nana taught me another term for that nut and not the real but I didn't know I literally I didn't know what that word was I didn't know anything I was seven second grade and I went to school and proudly proclaimed toes are my favorite nut I didn't make any friends at that school, needless to say. Ooh, so you say there's some Queen of the Heart stuff at ARC. You guys go to the one by the Dollar Tree, right? Uh, it was the one the closest to our house. It was right next to like a Mexican. It was right next to like a Spanish market, I think. I think it was next to a Spanish market. But seriously, right when we walked in, they had like the Halloween decorations and then they had the rows of clothes that they put out for Halloween stuff, you know, right by women's, the women's section. It's on the left. I started going through it and literally found a dress that was blood red. And it had like that, um, it had a really fine detailing on it of those like diamond, that diamond pattern you see all over like royal cloaks and shit. It's almost, it almost looked like a quilted pattern, but it wasn't quilted. It was just like diamonds all the way down it. Really fine in gold though. I mean, it looked so perfect. It looked like it would be a Red Queen thing. And there was a red velvet cape, like, right next to it in the same rack. Look, not sequin. No, it was literally, like, uh, sewn in. It was, like, the thread. It was, like, gold thread, little tiny intricate diamonds, all the whole pattern. But from far away, it would just look like, you know, blood red. It was gorgeous. Yeah, Brie was going to go as the White Queen, but there wasn't shit. Well, the Caterpillar was really hard, honestly. Like, we started actually Google. Like, I was, you shouldn't have to Google what the Caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland looks like. Like, what the fuck? But uh, I was I, I went down up and down every single aisle just looking for green. And I nothing. Apparently no one is either donating green or wearing green. I don't know what it is. It was it was kind of difficult. And then we Googled it. And I don't know if this is part of the like the mandala effect or whatever. But Zach and I totally remembered the, the caterpillar being green. He's turquoise. He's basically the color of alchemy's name. A little bit darker. He's literally turquoise. So then I had to go. I went down whoop, up and down the aisles again looking for turquoise. And I found I've actually put together a pretty decent outfit. It'll be fun. So what we're doing, I think I told you guys about this when we bought the tickets. Well, Brie bought the tickets. It was ages ago. I saw an, an Instagram ad, one of the few Instagram ads I've ever clicked in my entire life. But it came up and it's it's a uh, downtown Denver is sectioning off a part of the city to do an entire an escape room within the city. And it's Alice in Wonderland themed. No, he's not. He's fucking turquoise. I know. It's the mandala effect. We all remember him as green. You remember blue? Okay, I didn't. And I love Alice in Wonderland. I don't know what's wrong with my head. 
I'm broken, apparently. But I got it. But yeah, so that's what we're doing. And so we were all, the kids are going too. So we were all trying to figure out outfits. We let the kids pick first. Zach and Scott are going to go as the walrus and the carpenter, which is fucking incredible. I was going to do Red Queen and uh, Brie was going to do White Queen, but they went before us and they said they could find nothing for the White Queen. And legit, I found nothing for the White Queen. I looked too for them. Nothing. So I was like, I'll do the caterpillar, like the fucking hookah smoking caterpillar. Are you kidding me? Perfect. No, there's no green. No one wears green, apparently, anywhere. I went through everything. Men's, women's, everything. I even thought about cutting holes in a backpack and wearing it as a bodysuit for a minute. I was like, I don't know what the fuck to do. But I ended up putting something together that I think will work really well. Welcome <laughs> to the class Who? He was my favorite, too, I know. It's in the mushroom! I thought about American McGee's Alice, but I don't know if anybody would even recognize it. Because I was, I was going to do the Mock Turtle. Literally, that was my first. I was like, Mock Turtle would be so much fun from American McGee's Alice. It's literally like a turtle with a cow head. Robo Blake, thank you so much for gifting a sub to LZT. LZT, use a butt was to the highest order, bitch. You know what's up. Consensuality and emotes. I love you. Um, I was thinking about doing that, but like, I don't think, you know, sometimes I think I can get a little, uh, what's the word? Not biased, but I, I tend to assume everybody knows video games because we live in this world where we all do. Like, you can say American McGee's Alice and everyone's like, oh, yeah, I know that. I know what you're talking about. But in the real world, people would be like, what's that? What's American McGee? Why do you look so scary? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Army's Alice is going to be a bit dark. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Please do. I kind of went after, if you look at um, the Tim Burton Caterpillar, I kind of based mine a little bit more off him just because he has more detail. Like he has little antenna balls and everything. And the Disney version is nothing. It looks like a worm in a hoodie. And I just wanted some more detail. I love this song too. Um, I just wanted a little bit more detail. So I went for that one. And he's like a dark turquoise. But I kind of did like like a hippie, like a hippie caterpillar, you know? Like a like Janis Joplin as a as the caterpillar. Imagine that. That's what I did. <laughs> Cause it's all I could do. Like I was struggling. I almost just bought a green man suit. Like they literally, there was one on a rack and I was like, I could just do that. <laughs> but I was like, I can do better. So I got like a long flowy green, like patchwork looking hippie dress. And then I got some of those, like the belts that are meant to just go on your waist for some reason. I don't, I still don't understand what the point, are they keeping clothes up? I don't know, but I got two of them. And so I'm going to like put one here and then put one on my hips and then like pull the dress out and ruche it in the middle. So it looks like it's like puffy sections, you know? Like caterpillar, like segments, I guess. Segments, that's the word. That's my idea. We shall see. <gasps> I love Alan Rickman. I know. Everything he's in breaks my heart. Everything. It's the dress, but she didn't want a wig and is wearing big black goth boots. Oh my God, she's American McGee's Alice. Shut up. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you, Scott. Your kids are going to be so cool. <laughs> That's just seriously. So Scott, funny story. When I was a kid, I I desperately wanted American McGee's Alice. I wanted that game so bad. We had like a stock HP, like the cheapest stock HP computer you could get at Best Buy or whatever the fuck existed when I was in high school. And I I mean, I could barely play anything on it. Like I did I play I remember I had like um I had some uh Magic School Bus games that would run. I loved them. Don't hate. They were great. But I wanted, uh, I wanted to play American McGee's Alice so bad. And I didn't know if it would run or not. And I asked for it for Christmas. And my bless my mother's heart. My parents are borderline Amish without being Amish. Like, they just reject technology. Like, they still have a tube TV and, like, you know, big numbers on phones. And, like, it's just, they just don't like it. And they, they have no idea what to do with it. They know how to get to Facebook and Craigslist. And that's their life. And, uh... <laughs> So for Christmas, I asked for American McGee's Alice, the PC video game. I was because we had a PC finally. And my mother, bless her heart, she thought she did good. She thought she got me the game. She got me the like $80 manual that was as big as the phone book for Christmas, but no game. She assumed it was the game because it was actually more expensive than the game itself. The effort was there. And I, to this day, appreciate it. It was so cute. <laughs> like, I was so sad at the time. But looking back on it, I'm just like, 
the effort was there and I appreciate it. It was, she tried. It was precious. But honestly, it turned into a good thing. I would, I kind of like developed my art style with that book. I would go through that book and trace the Cheshire Cat everywhere he was. Anywhere in that manual that the Cheshire Cat was on, I would trace it and then try to redraw it over and over and over. And that's, tracing is how you learn how to draw when you're a kid. And so I would, I learned how to draw a lot of creepy shit via looking through this book and redrawing Alice and redrawing her knife. And I learned about the Alpha and the Omega. Like I learned a lot of shit just like obsessing over a manual for a book I did or for a fucking game I didn't have. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I need you to read this out loud. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. I want to put it on my other monitor so I can read it in front of myself. <laughs> I'm nervous, but excited. I'm nervous, but excited. <gasps> Nagel, I'm so sorry if we are. You poor thing. <laughs> It's the Mon Mandela effect. The Mandela effect. Thank you. Not Mandala. Mandala is the symbol. I fucked those two up. Mandela is the person. It comes from because everybody thought Mandela was a dead and he wasn't, right? Like, for some reason, a bunch of people were like, no, Mandela died last year, but he was totally still alive. I fuck those two words up all the time. Thank you. Thank you, LZT. I do it. And I can hear it when I'm saying it, but I'm like, I don't know which one it is. I'm just going to go with it. Oh. My mom tried to get me a Hylian shield and got confused and got me like a 400 buck mirror shield. Oh, bless her heart, though. See, it's the effort. I was horribly obsessed. I mean, I loved Alice in Wonderland has always been kind of my thing since I was a kid. I loved Alice in Wonderland. It was my favorite Disney movie. That and Peter Pan were absolutely my favorite Disney movies when I was a kid. And so, like, it just made sense. Like, my mom was totally open to it. She just had no idea. what She still doesn't know what she's doing. Bless her heart. She thinks games still come on a CD. Like, I told her... She wanted, she wanted to send me a DVD of pictures, and I was like, my computer doesn't have a DVD drive, and that could not, I could not get it through her head that you can build a PC without a DVD drive. I'm like, I don't need one. She's like, what PC can you not put a disc in? And I'm like, the one you build without the disc thing, because I don't need it. It's really hard. It's like, just, the gap is so big. It's so wide. Um, okay, let me read this. I've been given an article. I'm going to turn the music down so I can think to myself. Gl didn't you give me this song? I think you did. I'm just pausing it so I can read and think at the same time. Sorry. Do you know Peter Pan's the bad guy in the movies? What do you mean? The bad? What do you mean? Kind of. I mean, he's the one who kidnaps all the kids, theoretically, and convinces himself they, did they wanted to be kidnapped. Deathloop just dropped on Game Pass. It's funny as hell. Deathloop? What kind of game is it, Tank? I'll write it down. I like death. My mom has all my drawings from when I was a kid. She my dad has them too, like in a file cabinet. It's kind of adorable. A medium said she knew that Mandela died in the 1980s. And when she saw Mandela on TV after his release, she made up a parallel universe theory instead of going, oh shit, I was wrong. Are you kidding me? That's literally what it was. Wow, that's hilarious. Wow. Big wow on that. What a bitch. Do you know Peter Pan had a thick cock from what I heard? It was, so do all the lost boys, apparently. <laughs> um, kind of like how so many people remember the movie Shazam with Sinbad playing a genie, but the movie does not exist. Oh my God, I've never heard of that before, but I'd kind of want to see Sinbad play a genie in a movie called Shazam. Isn't Shazam, no, that's ShamWow. Just kidding. <laughs> I loved Peter Pan because I wanted to live on the island where it was like, exciting and there were fairies and there were mermaids and there were like you know pirates and you could live you could be young forever that was why i like peter pan and to have a little fairy companion like it was basically zelda shut the fuck up okay let me read this how to approach dogging on my road i don't know what that is should i know what that is before i continue or do i just go banana i'm taking your cues He nig oh my god, Peter Pan did have a huge cock. He nicknamed it Tugger Bell. Sir, whose tail is you digging in with that? Show of hands, which piece of tail cousin off of my comment section gonna sit up there and and and, and let him dig in your butt with that? Not me, because you're not fixing to line up my chakras with that. is 
your problem? <laughs> what? No, no, nothing happened. It's silent, and I know nothing happened. You can't even trick me. Nothing happened. You can't trick me. I know nothing happened. I'm here, and there's no music. Shh. Nothing happened. Mm -mm. I can hear it. You can't even fool me. Nothing. My speaker's not. Nothing happened. You're okay. I know. No. No. You're fine. He's fine. Nothing happened. He's just moaning now. He's just like, mm. <clears throat> it happened, mom. <clears throat> <gasps> Wait, the video. No. No. Wait. Hold up. No. Should I have? I'm going to pull it up. I have so many links open. Jesus Christ, Catherine. Not today. Mom, the assassins. I know. It's the witches. Only the sweet, sweet, sweet music of a puppers. Yeah, there's no sounds happening. It's very quiet in here. Is that what freaked you out? Quiet. Oh, his eyes watering. Why are you You're not going to lick my mouth. I saw you lick your dick today. Oh, my. Oh, yes. Okay, let me pull it up. Hold on. Hold up. I did not see it. It made... Oh, no. Should I clear one? Hold on. I touch myself to Drew Carey on the price right. God. That's the last time you're ever going to hear that one. It's gone now. I'm ready. Okay, let me read dogging first. <clears throat> I pulled up Twitter, so I don't forget. How to approach dogging on my road. I don't know what that is, so we're just going to go. I can't believe I'm even had an, having to ask this, but there's a couple who like to engage in morning sex in their car on my road. They're... <laughs> I'm going to smoke some pot first, because what in the fuck is happening with this story? Okay, cheers. <laughs> Dude, I guarantee Drew Carey has a fucking, like, pogo stick. What is it? A kickstand? Dude, everyone's, like, swords and all of your uh, chat icons just disappeared. Go, Pikachu. Come out. <laughs> I'm nervous. <gasps> I'm gay. Bash Fred Fox tipped $5 in Pooh's voice. Oh, brother, I'm so stuffed with fluff and dummy thick. The clap of my ass cheeks have alerted the bees. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, and I love it. What the fuck? Okay. Let me continue. Okay, I'm going to start over, because I just, yeah. Um, I can't believe I'm even having to ask this, but there's a couple who like to engage in morning sex in their car on my road. They're here come rain or shine. If I wasn't so grossed out, I'd be jealous of their insatiable sex drive and steadfastness. Their windows are not tinted. <laughs> You can see all, and I mean all, the guy has an unremarkable penis, and the woman has a worriedly lopsided left breast. <laughs> they tend to park blocking my car in. I dread the day that I might need to ask them to move their car so I can back out. Why are we barking today? You're interrupting my story. Shush. Before anyone asks, I don't want to join in, nor do I want to watch. I just want them to stop. But being quintessentially British, I really don't want confrontation, and I don't want to have to knock on their window whilst unremarkable penis is mid-thrust to lop lopsided tit and my bowl of Weetabix in hand and ask them to fuck off. I just want them to fuck off without them knowing it's me. Would a sign work? Can I call the police? Mainly to report her weird left tit? I, Lizzie, get out of my fucking head. I was literally going to say, stick a note under the windshield that says, get a breast exam. But in British, how would you say that? Cheerio, darling. Have you ever thought of having a touch up on one's tit? Cheers, love, Lizzie. I don't know. Oi, get your tit checked. All right, Lizzie. 
I just don't know. I'm too, it's been too many weeks since I've been out of London and I can't think of how to say that in British terms. It just all sounds ridiculous. You can fuck in a car, just don't block my driveway. <laughs> That's fucking great. Hold on, we gotta see what the first I always look for top comment on good stories. That's that's what Reddit is for, is the top comment. I have to read it. Uh this calls for passive aggressive politeness. Wait till they finish, then take them cups of tea. I'm saying top comment is where all of the fucking gold lies. What the fuck? Fuck, that's good. God damn it, that's clever. Um, I'm going to take a quick break just because I haven't said good morning to Zach because he was in a meeting yet all morning. So I just want to say good morning really quick. But then we have a video from Glut to Watch and I'm terrified. I'll be right the fuck back. Quick break. We have to run an ad anyways. But quick break. Stretch your legs. Take your dicks, whatever the fuck you do. I don't know what the fuck you do. I'll put on more of the Axel because it's great music and you're loving it. I know. You're welcome. But I'm just, I'm going to go, you know, kiss him. I've got some ideas. I'm going to go bring him a cup of tea. <laughs> Dream elements. Hi, bad. I left my fucking Black Widow on my desk today. That's not weird. I had a restaurant me near me that I liked in the press. How much did they get jacked up, River? Why? Just because of, like, cost of... I've heard food costs are pretty ridiculous right now, to be fair. I don't know if that uh, equates to that, but I've, I've heard that food is ridiculous. Music loud? How about that? Biddle? Good. I can always I can go lower or higher too. I, I, I trust you guys and I appreciate you. Es muy bueno. Gracias. You just never know. I gotta look for the second comment. That top comment on that thing was too good. It's all I can think about now. I'm scrolling for second top comment. Oh my god. <gasps> Wait. Bashful. I didn't even see a note on it. Hold on. Let me pull the website up. Sometimes they don't pop up on my like my um thingy. They don't give the history of them and they don't tell me the messages. It's stupid. Hold on. I'm sorry. Thank you very much for the tip to the channel though. Oh, there's a link. That's yeah, I can't click links out of dono messages and shit. It sucks. It sucks. I wish. Food and a whole bunch of shit is about to get even more expensive in the U.S. when the train unions go on strike. I hope the government doesn't force the strikers to break. I want, I really wonder what's going to happen. I was reading about that this morning. It feels like, you know, that, um, <laughs> that Nine Inch Nails song, The Big Come Down. I kind of feel like we're in, like, this weird time of, like, people are able to communicate over the internet and they can gather whether for good or bad unfortunately but a lot of people are gathering and being like hey we're all treated really shittily let's stop letting people treat us shittily like i do think they should be paid fair i don't think people that own rail lines should be bajillionaires rolling while they're while their train workers are starving whatever you know what i mean everyone should be paid a fucking livable wage we all know that not that that's reality but we know that that's a real thing I don't know. I, Banana, the last article I read, they were talking about, like, the plan on how to head off the freight train strike. But I don't know if they did anything yet. If you hear anything, let me know. I don't know. There should be a cap on how much the CEO can make that's based on how much their lowest paid employees make. I agree. I, I don't think, I, like, I acknowledge that they probably have put in a lot of work. And if you own a company, you should make a little bit more because you're responsible for a lot more. But the the gap is wide. <laughs> yeah. 
oh, no shit. It's not about pay. It's about the fact that they're on call 24-7 and get no PTO or sick days. Wow. Wait, on top of having like a scheduled schedule, on top of having a schedule to work, they're on call 24-7 and get no PTO or sick days. That's fucked up. Oh, as of six hours ago, they planned a strike again in October for pay. Damn. The issue wasn't wage. It wasn't, but apparently now. Damn. That's fucked up. Tolkien warned us about hoarded treasure. I mean, come on. Smaug, hello. I load a bowl and grind up weed. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> got weed on my hands and then did that. That was a great idea, Katie. Smart. Um, so I got Lilac Diesel, I got Gax Movie, and I got Liquid Imagination. But I'll probably, I don't want to open this one yet because these are the stupid baggies that they don't keep very fresh and I don't have a container to put it in right away near me. So I'm going to save that one to open later. Let's do, let's do some Gax Movie. Where'd that fucking, there it is. It wouldn't fit in the jar. Oh, the in oh the info about November about October is not correct. Oh shit. Okay, no worries, no worries. Kind just keep us updated if you read anything on that. Cause that, I mean, if they're not, I, everybody deserves to. I don't know, man. It's a hard conversation because like I want food to be cheap. Everybody like we can't afford expensive food, but does that mean that other people should be paid and you know given no sick time and be on twenty four seven on call and no PTO for me to have cheap steak? No, I don't think that's very right. Shop local. If you're noticing spikes in food, shopping local, it'll probably cost about the same as the shit you're not shopping local that's spiked up because of this stuff. And it's going to be higher quality, probably food. And it's probably going to help your local, um, your local economy a lot better. So like if that's a problem, like for the immediate, just for the immediate right now, you know, if you're like, fuck, how do I feed my family? Try to shop local. It's important. Chocolate hashberry? Fuck, that sounds good. They actually didn't even want paid sick time. They just wanted the ability to take it off and not lose their jobs. They had union members that had their livelihoods threatened for having a heart attack. Holy shit. Oh, thank you, Glad. Ow. Pop. Pop, pop. Ouch. How did I miss that? Fuck me. How did I miss this? Okay, hold on. Let me blow. Let me. Let me make it big. All right. Let's enjoy this. Um, do you think the volume's okay, or should I put up your volume a little bit for this video clip? Reagan and Nixon enabled corporations to fuck that fuck the everyman, and no one has ever done anything about it. Corporations didn't increase pay at a rate that's reasonable, and while executives make more money, they could never they could make more money than they could ever spend. Hundred percent, yeah. Probably okay. All right. No. Try to meditate if P was my yogi. I'd listen to him talk about penetration all fucking day. Oh, he has more? Oh, dude. I might, I'll follow him on my phone. I'm not logged on on my computer. A blissful, a blissful penetration to you all. May joy, light, and happiness penetrate you and all the assholes. I'm going to load a bowl to that. This weed is yellow as fuck. Look at that. It's even more like, well, it's like lime. It's like chartreuse green. Damn. Namaste. <laughs> Blissful Penetration is my Doors cover band name. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wait, what's your first album name, though? <laughs> I'd let y'all... You all penetrate me with your love and joy every day, let's be honest, spiritually speaking. And we don't, you can't get monkeypox from a spiritual penetration as far as we know. So that's like the best. Looks like I penetrated in at the perfect time. Allow yourself to be penetrated. Penetrate strangers. Allow strangers to penetrate you. Blissful penetration to you all. Cheers. I can't breathe. That's genius. Cheers. <laughs> Stop laughing. Old balls. Old balls. Old balls.
God damn, I love that strain. Why can't Gak's movie be everything forever? Fuck. It's like I have to, I baby it. I like ration it. <coughs> I'm afraid it won't come back. <coughs> old saggy, old balls are saggy and fun. They are, but they don't make me laugh unless I'm like in person with them. You know what I mean? And even then, there has to be like a comedic moment with them. I wouldn't just like laugh at a nut. <coughs> One time when I was really young, my grandpa was like, what the fuck? Oh my God. How do I? To open them, I have to download them. I don't want to download them. Why? But do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Do your balls hang low? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My goal is to hydrate everyone with love. It all starts with just a sip. 100% agree. I, I aim to like leave people feeling either the same or better than the way I found them in the most general like basic fucking terms that's like my life goal I'm not successful 100% but I try <coughs> you know what Viata what I noticed with Pineapple Express is I really like the distillate but not the bud super weird which is crazy because normally I don't really notice a difference between dabs or distillates or anything like that but my dispensary will sell, um, it's like a pen that you like pump and then push down the little plunger and a little noodle of shit comes out the end. You know what I mean? If I get it in Pineapple Express, it smells like pineapple and it's really dank. But the weed smells like gra like wheat, like, like grass outside. It smells like grass clippings. It doesn't smell very good to me. Kind of pissy, yeah. But the distillate didn't. To me, I noticed the same. I wasn't a huge fan of a huge fan of the flower, but I really like the distillate. So maybe try it if it's ever on sale or something like that. <gasps> I don't have any water, Uki. Oh, no. Wait. There's just enough, enough left for one child. One child. It's a little one. I'll get some on my break. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I can't just open them. It says I have to download the videos. I don't know why. It was, I, I sipped it all. I got to get more water. I woke up last night at like probably like 2 a.m. drenched in sweat. I don't know why. Every once in a while, I just sweat myself stupid while I'm sleeping. And then I wake up around 4 in the morning like. And I have to chug. And I literally chugged this entire thing because it was by my bed. I chugged the whole thing this morning and I forgot to refill it. I literally ripped my t-shirt off and I threw it at Zach's face because he was still awake. And he was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I don't know. You watched me sleep. What happened? Changed because I didn't want to go to sleep in a fucking wet t-shirt. But I don't. What is that, Viata? Like, I've been, I've got them kind of my whole life and they're just random. I find nothing correlates with them in any way, shape, or form. It's just sometimes I sweat. I turn into a dwarf star in my sleep and I just radiate heat out my chest. Just my chest. Like, this part of the shirt was soaked. The rest of me was fine. Super weird, and I don't know why. I can't ever get myself to drink enough water, even with a bottle on my desk. I mean, Slurm, what's enough? Like, we, they've disproved that, like, eight cups a day thing. They say if you just sip water all day, you're fine. That's honestly what I've heard many doctors say and many medical professionals give the advice of. Sip on water all day. If you have something like a monster, make sure that you drink that volume of wa twice in water. Because this is not hydration. Actually, caffeine is a diuretic. It'll dehydrate you. You know what I mean? That's, that's like the basic advice I've always been given. And it works for me. I don't aim to like, I'm not like sitting here like, I got to drink 10 of these a day. If I'm really fucking thirsty, I drink it. And if I'm not, I sip on it all day and just try to stay. I try to keep my pee not clear, but not like brown. You know, clear, clear pee is not a good idea either. That's too hydrated. Same, Uki, I've done the same. And I've had my thyroid checked multiple times in my life. Because I have a lot of weird body temperature issues. Like, my whole life, I've been, like, I feel like my body has no homeostatic temperature. I'm either cold or I'm sweating. I'm one or the other. And so when I was in high school, I had it checked. When I was in college, they're always like, no, your thyroid's fine. I'm like, okay. And there's nothing genetic in my family. And it's not like it's killing me. It's just once in a while I get weird 
I turn into a dwarf star at nighttime. And literally, Zach will, like, push me with a stick to the edge of the bed because he's like, I can feel heat coming off you like a foot off of you. Your body's just like, wow, wow. But it's not all the time. <gasps> Robo, be safe. Don't let strangers get you down. Don't forget to brush your teeth. <gasps> Thank you, Bashful. I appreciate that. I don't know. It, it. I think it's just sometimes the format. Because, like, I know when... um I got him. Thank you. I know when Glut sends me TikToks, he actually, like, downloads them and sends me them downloaded. Because sometimes the links are weird and don't work. And it's just... Fuck, I hate autoplay so much. Can we not with the autoplay TikTok, please? I want to love you, but your autoplay feature makes me want to die. <laughs> River, I normally don't. I actually run, like, colder than normal. Like, if I was to take my temperature, it's usually around, like, 96.8 instead of 98.6. Just naturally, my heart rate's dumb low. Like, my heart rate's in the 50s, low 50s. Genetically, all the women in my family are that way. I'm not, like, some superhero. None of it makes sense with the sweats. <laughs> but I get them every once in a while, and I'm just like, wow, I'm going to be dehydrated in the morning. <laughs> all right, I got one of them. Hold on, let me see if I can get the other one. Where is? You work, yes. You work. You work. <gasps> I haven't seen this Disney game at all. Is it good? I've heard good things, but it's not like Halloween themed, so I haven't even considered it because, you know, I can't get it to stop auto playing and it makes me want to die. Stop. Stop. I'm going to fucking choke out my own computer. I'm hypothyroid, so I can't control my body temp. If I'm hot, I'll stay hot until I cool myself down or a cold shower or bath. If I'm cold, I need to bundle up for hours. I kind of feel that, but no one's ever told me I'm hypothyroid. You two have a weird low temp. Maybe I do and everyone's just lying to me. Or maybe I'm on like the cusp of having a thyroid problem. Interesting. Interesting. It's fluctuating estrogen levels. Is it? Honestly, I've thought about that. Or if it's testosterone and shit. Like, if it's just, like, the cycle of our body, because, you know, periods, not period, all that. We're always doing weird hormonal shit going on inside, depending on where you are. I've thought about that, too, because it is. It's not. It's never two nights in a row, three nights in a row. It's just, like, random. It doesn't have to be a hot day. It's just, I wake up sweaty. Really sweaty. <laughs> I heard good things, but it's also early access. Oh, no shit. I didn't know it was early access. Okay, let's look at this clip. This is a TikTok of people playing it, apparently. I oh, stream elements. Okay. Uh, I said I was going to ignore links today because. Shut up. I'm real excited to see where this goes. third verse bitches let's turn this shit up get weird i'm not actually gonna turn it up just you know like turn up the volume of the murder
they literally oh stream deck doesn't work i just have to show you they credited disney and that's fantastic we looked at the thing um it's literally it has to be like a decently long needle injecting something into muscle muscle ivs don't freak me out getting my blood and i'm talking a real phobia like i faint and i can't control it it ha it's those are the stipulations for it which is kind of dope but when i was a kid i was like all needles fuck that shit blah, 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 blah. I was talking about getting my blood drawn to get a job at a hospital and how like the first time I had it done for my inpatient job, they, you know, how it's the little butterfly needle and then they just like screw on the vials, take a vial off, screw on another vial and they do like three or four vials. I can't remember how many. And do you remember what they're for? I can't remember what they're testing us for other than the HIV titer. I know they're doing that one. But uh, the first time I had mine done, they plugged on the first vial and it wasn't filling very fast. Like it almost looked like you know, like that sludgy, like you didn't really get the vein very well or something like that. And it was a friend of mine who was doing it because I already worked at the outpatient clinic, which was connected. So I knew people. And he was like, oh, just do this a couple times. And I felt heard it fill the vial like violently, just like a <laughs> into the thing. And I just sat there like, oh, no. And then he had me hold them and they were so hot. That's all. I, I just remember holding them and being like, I was kind of shaking because, you know, if you have low blood pressure and low blood volume and you get blood drawn, like Uki said, you can sometimes puke and pass out. So I was like sitting there like this, holding them. And he's like, are you afraid of blood? I'm like, no, I just need a cookie. <laughs> but they were so hot. Com just from here to here, like the difference in my fingertip temperature was wild. Just blood is fascinating. It's so crazy what's going on inside your body all the time. Like all the weird natural slash unnatural uh another natural they seem unnatural but the natural slash unnatural process is going on it's pretty crazy skin but for tb don't they just inject that like i have a gross tb story oh my god frem have i ever told you about my getting my tb test at hopkins it's one to me personally it's one of the fucking funniest i mean it's a it's an snl skit I swear to fuck, someone could write this and sell it. If you ever see it in a movie, it was my story and they've stolen it. It's so, oh, let me tell you this. So, like Frem said, every time you get a job at a hospital, they test you for everything. They want to make sure you've got all your vaccinations you should have had as a kid going through school and everything. Uh, and you have your up-to-date ones. So, like, me, for instance, I was just talking about this on Sunday. I have a natural immunity to hepatitis, i.e. I've had the hepatitis series of shots four times and I never develop a titer which means my body kills it. Like I have something crazy, which is really weird because my dad died of hepatitis. I don't know if that's in any way related, but super strange facts. But yeah, apparently it's like one in a bajillion. It's su I, I, I literally told them, I'm like, I don't want to get this fucking HIV shot anymore. They just kept making me do the series over and over because I never got the titer. The titer never showed up. And I was like, guys, it's not, I'm not, how could I be sabotaging this? Like we got to stop giving me HIV, please. I'm going to get it, of it, or not HIV, or not HIV, excuse me, uh, hepatitis shot. And uh, I, like, they just kept giving it to me literally four times in one hospital that I worked at because I never showed the titer. And eventually one of the disease, uh, infectious disease docs came in and he's like, you have, you're one of the few people who obviously have a natural immunity, meaning when we give you this inactive or, you know, partially dead form of hepatitis to try to immunize you from it your body kills it faster than it can than it can learn from it or something like that i don't i'm not a scientist that way i don't remember the specifics but i never get a titer i don't know why uh not the one you get from food i think it's b a is the one you get from icky food right i think it was hep b it's the same one at every hospital every hospital i ever worked at was like you got to get the they'd always make me do it <laughs> Because I never show up the titer, even though I got it. I got it when I was like the first time you're supposed to get the hep the hepatitis series. I got it when I was like in high school or early college or whatever. But when I went started working at hospitals, I told them that and showed them my records from school. And they were like, you don't have the titer. So we have to do it again. And I was like, I'm gonna pass out every time you hit me with that needle. You realize that, right? Every time I can't control it. <laughs> A is what you get from poop. Yeah, contaminated food. That's what I thought. Yeah. But you can get it from like cleaning poop from a homeless person, et cetera. Ooh. Basically just getting someone else's. Is it caused by? So does someone have the hep A in their poop and then you have to get it in your mouth or something? I wonder where it starts. Like did, what came first, the poop or the, or the person? Because that's kind of like E. coli, right? Like E. coli, everybody has like a natural flora of E. coli, I believe, in your feces. 
but we don't get E. coli until we consume someone else's E. coli from their feces. Like, that's how you get E. coli poisoning, i.e., like, I think Wendy's just went through a thing because they had dirty, they were using dirty lettuce. They weren't washing their lettuce. And it's just spray fertilized with shit. That's the way most fields are these days. Literally spray fertilized. Wash your fucking produce. <coughs> Gross. Yeah, TB is usually PPD, pr uh, purified protein, and I, yeah, okay, so let me tell you, thank you for reminding me, I gotta tell you my fucking weird TB story, it's gross. If anybody has, like, a kind of a needle thing, this might be a little much, no, no shame. I definitely have a needle phobia, not this kind, though, this kind's fine. Mine, again, very, very specific to deep needle injection into muscle, no idea why. Actually, I do totally know why, I don't know why it turned into that, but I know where it came from. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, when I got my job at Hopkins, every year, I think it is, you have to get tested for TB, and make sure and the way they do the test it's called a it's the ppd it's the is that it's what is it purified i was i was trying to remember it i think i thought i had it purified protein something but anyways what they do is it, on your forearm like on your soft skin right here the they take this little tiny needle and a little syringe and they inject a fluid right under the skin it literally creates a blister, and that's what they're going for. They look until your skin starts to bubble up, and I think they're trying to inject it between two layers of dermis, which is why you get that bubble. And then you leave it, and you go away, and in a 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever, if you've been exposed to tuberculosis, you'll get a little rash or something like that. Something shows up on it. I've never, I've never turned up positive, so I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a while, but... When I went in to get my first TB test, I go in and it was 8 a.m. So it was right after my shift and it was a fucking hard shift. Like I did not want to go get this goddamn test, but I needed like you have to get them done to keep your job. They'll just straight up tell you don't come to work tomorrow. You can't come to work till you get this test done. And when you like go get the thing, you got to wait 48 hours. So like it's it's a lot of days they could take away from you of pay. So you don't want to do that. It's raised skin and I think it has to be better, bigger than two millimeters. Yep. I, I think you're totally right because they sit there. Once it starts bubbling, they start going really slow because they don't want it to pop. Um, I've driven by a field getting the spray. Dude, same. I grew up, I'm not even giving you a fridge, fridge. My, uh, my middle school in Washington state before we moved on West, on the West side, its nickname was cow pie high because it was directly next to a field of cows, which was directly next to a field of corn that was literally sprayed with shit 24 seven. Our school just smelled like shit. I don't even, I think it was called like centennial or something, but it just cow pie high. So everybody called it. it just smelled nonstop like shit. It was in the middle of a fucking field. It was, like, up against a BlackBerry wall. It was very weird. <laughs> but anyways, so, it's, like, 8 a.m., right after my night shift. I get off work, and I'm fucking exhausted, and my, like, I'm just, I just have to get it done. Like, I'm literally three days from the point where they're going to tell me not to come to work anymore. So, I go down to the, I can't remember what it's called. It's, like, employee health or whatever. It's basically where you go if you hurt yourself during work or if you think you've been exposed like if you know you've been exposed to something you map you get all quarantined up and you go down to employee health and they start testing you and they tell your employer like oh yeah they've got so and so they've got to go for so many weeks or whatever occupational health is that what it's called yeah they, ours didn't even have a sign they moved the office so often they wouldn't make a sign for it so like that's part of the story <laughs> hopkins is kind of a shit show of a maze it's like it's the original, you know, building. If you Google Johns Hopkins, you see like that old school looking brick building with the churchy shit all over it. It's that building originally. And then they started building upon that. It was originally just a school. And then they added a nursing school. And then they added the hospital wings. And then they, they just like people will like bring their daughter from another country and will save their daughter. And they'll donate a couple million and we'll build a tower in their name or whatever. It's very bizarre. So the whole building is really laid out very fuckily. Like there's certain like you'll you'll have to take an elevator to to floor six, walk down a hall, get in another elevator to go to floor seven. But that other elevator totally connects. It just won't take you there. Like weird shit like that all over the place. So to find occupational health was a fucking joke. It's in one of the oldest parts of the building where they hang all the like hand painted photos of famous surgeons and shit from Hopkins. And it's all really low ceilings and very creepy. And like I said, they keep moving this goddamn occupational office so often they just refuse to put a real sign on it. So wherever you find it, it's got this like 10 year old just piece of fax paper that says occupational health and terrible handwriting on it taped to a door somewhere you just gotta like look for it so it took me way too long to look for it and I thought I was gonna be late I show up there's a line of people the person who shows up is a shit you not an 87 year old nurse which I'm not being ageist in any way shape or form but bitch had Parkinson's beyond anyone's reason like she had her keys and it took five minutes to get them into the keyhole of the door to get us into the office to do our tests it was wild, and I was like, oh, my God, this woman's going to inject me with things. Whatever. 
I'm not going to judge. Maybe she like s- fucking snaps into a different mode. Like we don't know. I'm not, I'm not here to judge. And I walk in and she's, the reason I know she's 87 is she just starts telling us all her life story and how she just got off a night shift at the other hospital that she works as an ICU nurse still. <clears throat> <sighs> so she just keeps going on and I'm like sitting there like sweating like, oh my God, needles already. Like, I'm just, can we just not? And I let the other two people go before me because they were just getting the, like looking at it to see if it showed up positive or not. And I had to get the actual injection. So I was like, you go first, I'll wait. And when I go to get it, I don't remember the exact, like she just keeps talking. And she did um, get a lot less shaky as, as I saw her. She put on gloves and everything and did, pulled out the test and put out the test and everything. And then she takes my arm and she's standing over me like this. And she has a mask on, but it's kind of below her nose. This is way below, way before COVID, but still inappropriate behavior with your mask. Like, what the fuck? But she's got it here because she's got glasses that are fogging up. And so she's looking at my arm on her table. And she's got the tiny syringe and it's fine. And she starts doing it and the bubble starts to form. And she just like jerks and blasts it. And I shit you not, the thing explodes. Well, it doesn't explode. It actually, one perfect stream just pops and shoots her in the face from my arm. From the pustule she has created with the thing. And she just goes, oh, oh did that get my eye? And just keeps going. It's just like flowing all over my arm. Like she just keeps pushing, like it's creating a bubble and just, and it's all over my arm and it's everywhere. And then she, she puts me, she's like, come back in 48 hours or otherwise we can't test it. I didn't even know what to do. I was so fucking exhausted. I had no, no recourse. I just sat there like, did that woman just giggle shit at my fluids squirting in her eyeball? And nose. I don't know what happened to her. She wasn't there in 48 hours and I had to get it redone, obviously, because there was a giant torn open blister on my arm and nothing appropriate happened whatsoever. I never saw her again. I don't know what happened. She might have been a witch. I might have hallucinated the entire thing from being exhausted. I still to this day don't know. I never saw her again. She might have been fake. Like, what if this was like a catch me if you can situation you know what i'm saying nobody knows there will be nothing to test because it exploded in your eye i mean it like i saw it like i saw it squirt her eye it was so dramatic of a squirt it was wild the the thing i just don't i don't have any like what do you say in that moment like madam my juices are on your face. <gasps> Hi, Imperial. How are you, love? Imperial? Impera, how are you? I done seen it. I did. I watched. I fucking, I watched my blood get drawn to it, though. I think it's kind of cool. You say nothing. No, you say nothing. You sit there and you smile and, okay. Yep. I, if I had anything, like if I was aware I was infected with something, I would have obviously said something. But working at hospitals, you're, you're getting tested. So, I mean, literally every time, even if I don't think I've been exposed, if I have a tuberculosis, tuberculosis patient, they make you get tested really often just to make sure. Cause you just never know. It is airborne, scary stuff like that. So you're getting tested so often. You're well aware if you have anything, like there's no one working in a hospital as a nurse who mysteriously has HIV or something, you know, within a couple months. Cause we're just, it's all the time. I know I'm good. So if I wasn't, I would have been like, by the way, did you feel the, the damp on your eye? She totally did. She said it squirted me. That wouldn't even be a question. I wouldn't know how to question her. I'd be like, you, do, would you, are you concerned? Oh, it's terrible. I've honestly, TB isn't a huge thing anymore. We have around the country. I know there's one in Hawaii where we have actual clinics dedicated to just TB where you go there if you have TB and you live there while people try to cure you. If you have like really advanced TB, I have only seen a handful of TB patients in my life and they are all, all the ones I've ever seen have been end stage, like end stage. And it's not a good one. I wouldn't want that. Squirt of random fluids and anxiety booster. I mean, that's not even a joke, but I'm... I have lycanthropy. Sick. 
like what kind? Like full moon lycanthropy or the cooler kind where you get to transform whenever you want, but full moons are just like exciting. In the 40s in England? Oh, oh. Did she get in like an iron lung? Was she one of the iron lung patients? I can't remember if they were. I think they were used up until the. I think they were used up until the early 60s. Correct me if I'm wrong. Just the lipstick? Why? Well, I'm dead inside. <laughs> Why? Just the lipstick. Is it time for a break? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, it is. Great. I'm gonna go bomb. <laughs> TB isn't around often, but if you get it, you can be a latent carrier, which is why they test everyone, and you can give it to people with com compromised immune systems, 100%, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's exactly, I was just going to repeat what Frem said, they test very often for it, because you can have it and be spreading it before any symptom shows up or anything, and it's terrible. It's just not, it's not one of those things we want. Not that we want any of them, but you know what, you know what I mean. She was one of those lets you sit on the French on the front porch and lets the fresh air cure you kids. Oh, bless. She did have some experimental procedure, though. They gave her a scar on her neck. Ow. Did the fresh air work? I have almost oh, no eyeball squick. Wait, what's that? I let a coworker pull one of those invisible fuzz hairs <gasps> out of my eyelashes the other day. <sighs> Dude, I pulled one off my eyeball on Sunday. Viata, I, I even brought it back to stream. I tried to show stream. It was too small. I felt it come off my eyeball like a fucking... Have you ever, like, pulled a noodle out of your throat? It felt like that across my fucking eye. I felt it, like, unweave from my eyelashes. I was like, ah! Why? I don't know where they come from. I have dogs that don't shed. It's like the two hairs a day they shed get in my eyes. I don't get it. Iron lung photos online look like MRI machines. They're wild. They're like an MRI machine you live in. They basically like take over the job of your diaphragm and the parenchyma around your lungs and the surfactant. It's wild. They, they create the positive and negative pressure to expand and retract your lungs, which is normally what, you know, surfactant, parenchyma, and your diaphragm do. So they take it over all of it. I don't understand. Like, obviously, we're not taught iron lungs too intensely in school. We're taught the history of them, but not necessarily what they what they exactly because it's not an exact science and that's not really how we do things anymore right i think there's a couple people still living in them though if i correct me if i'm wrong stress induced like the hulk boo unfortunately i'm a wear hamster i mean you can eat your kids and it's totally socially acceptable i felt it come off my lashes when she grabbed it oh those are the worst they're so have you ever pulled one out of your tear duct and not really realized how long it's going to be until you're like out to here and you're like, what the fuck? Eyes are like the, the Venus flytraps of the body. I don't get it. There are a couple. That's what I thought. It's pretty wild. Like we don't use them anymore. I think they go out, the iron lungs themselves go out of commission once these people pass away. But if they live in them, I don't think there's a, con I don't think they can live without them. I don't know. Like we have, it's really interesting. I'd love to read up on it more actually. I mean, I imagine not. Why else would they be in a fucking iron lung still? But we have, like, babies who will be born premature, meaning they something in them hasn't developed all the way. And usually what happens is that surfactant that, that suctions, that sticks your lungs to your diaphragm and that parenchyma sac isn't developed. What we can actually do is take a little syringe and just shoot it down the lung, into the lungs of a baby. And it, boom, surfactant, and they start breathing on their own. It's pretty wild. So I don't, maybe that's such a new thing that these are patients that that wasn't viable for when they were babies. And that's why they're in an iron lung. And now we have that treatment. And that's why we don't have iron lungs anymore. Not a hundo, but I've done it a hundo on babies. It's pretty common with preemies and it doesn't hurt them. If they have like a little surfactant, but not enough, we can absolutely it's a vent without a tube. Yeah. Which is the science of that is mind boggling to me. Iron lungs are a pressure chamber. It lowers the pressure below atmospheric pressure, which causes the paralyzed person's body to inflate the lungs. Damn, that's cool. Then it pressurizes higher than the atmospheric pressure, causing the lungs to contract. Fascinating. Was it mainly meant for people who are paralyzed? Like some sort of paralyzation that makes it so their lungs don't. Because I know a lot of people, you can be a quad, a quadriplegic, and your lungs still breathe. 
because it's a different, you know, independent nervous system kind of that you're not thinking about. But I, again, not a nerve expert. I don't want to talk outside my scope. It's fascinating regardless. According to Google, the last iron lung, oh, is the last iron lung still alive? He's still alive and well, oh, 70 years, damn, after becoming paralyzed. So it is, it seems like it might be for people who are mo- mainly paralyzed. He was, he has even written a book about his life in an iron lung. Wow. With the title, Three Minutes for a Dog, inspired by a physical therapist that offered a puppy as a reward for him, glossopharyngeal breathing for three minutes outside the iron lung. I'd suffer for three minutes for a dog, too. I mean, that seems kind of mean, but I'd totally do it. Wow. Oh, it's for people who cannot breathe due to nerve damage. That's so tragic and fascinating and wild. Iron lung popularity went out with polio vaccine. So was it mainly paralyzation caused by polio, I wonder? Or maybe that's just where the science came from? Because, yeah, we don't, I mean, we shouldn't have polio anymore. Not to get on that sore subject, but... (laughs) What the fuck? This person's name is Paul Alexander, and he's a lawyer. (gasps) In an iron lung, a man has a name. And this man's name is Paul Alexander. I haven't even watched Fight Club recently. I don't know why it's so on the mind. Maybe it's because our fucking world is fucked. <gasps> Ooky! I got it. Hold up. Uh, maybe. Where? Is that the full link? It doesn't let me click it. And I don't know why. No, it's okay. Polio was the big push for them because in it was a population level illness causing paralysis. Yeah. Kind of like, did you guys see the, see, I know it was, I don't. I mean, a lot of late night hosts like to poke fun at Biden. And I don't think any human being can like have their words perfectly dictated 24 seven. But P- Biden was talking to someone and he's like, they asked if we still had the pandemic. He's like, no, the pandemic's over. We still have a big problem with COVID, but the pandemic's over. And I, it feels like. What? Oh, there. I think I can click the little. Ah, I got it. Oh, my God. That's the iron lung. Texas man lived 70 years in iron lung. I never gave up. That's wild. Good for him. And he's still alive. Damn. There's even a video. Oh, my gosh. Check, check that link if you guys want to read more about iron lungs. That's pretty interesting. That's cool. I didn't know. That's very cool. I mean, I hope he. it's. I would imagine he has a successful life if he's. Oh, Dave's little beasties. What? What? What happened? Wait, you just sent me to his homepage. What? What happened? I don't know. I like Dave's Little Beasties, but I have no idea what happened. Not going to lie. I think we could use a Tyler Durden reset it right about now. I'd give it up to Tyler Durden. I'd be like, take over. It's fine. My Tyler Durden would be named George. George would get shit done. George is kind of a bitch. (gasps) But also sweet and nurturing. I don't know. It's crazy. If the link doesn't work, Google Paul Alexander. Paul, I'm just going to do that. Paul Alexander. Oh, no, it worked. I got it up. I got it. No, it's the other one. The Dave's Little Beasties one just sent me to his homepage, which is cool. Dave's Little Beasties is a really good t- uh, tarantula YouTube channel if you guys have never wanted, if you've never, if you're, if you're in search of, if you're in search of a cool tarantula channel, Dave's Little Beasties is really cool. Look at it, but what happened? I see spiders. I see Dave's little beasties. Ephibopus murna skeleton leg, second pairing. I see, what am I looking for? Is it something weird? What's happening? The post Letherias? At this point, Tyler would be queuing on. Oh, shit. You, honestly? Like, end game Tyler, yes. When, what is it called? Uh, Project Mayhem? Project Mayhem, Tyler, yeah. Yep. We just wanted to destroy a piece of corporate, corporate art. And then the cops showed up, and that's how Paul loses his life. I love him. I've watched him for ages. I just didn't know what I was looking for specifically. I've probably seen all of his videos, to be honest. Unless he's posted one in the last, like, five days, I watch a lot of his videos. He's very entertaining. Um, I'm going to take a break because i got to pee. <laughs> Be right back. No! Doesn't work. What happened? Nothing updated, so I don't know why the Stream Deck isn't connecting to OBS. I just don't know. It doesn't work. It does, it's not working. I don't know what happened. Is it is the music still loud? Scrambling to get get washed done so I can get go to Denver on Thursday using only using a backpack. I'm flying Frontier and they charge eighty dollars for carry on. 
They charge $80 for a fucking carry-on? What? I thought only uh, Spirit did that. Could, could, could down, down, down a little? How is that right there? I'm going to write the numbers down so I remember them. Because it's like at negative 45, whatever the fuck that means. Decibels, I don't fucking know. But I'm going to write it down so I remember for, for YouTubes. $80 for a carry-on. That's insane. I know, I gotta wait till it gets loud again, huh? We can wait, that's fine. I'm gonna get ready to write them down, though, just so I remember them. Good to know. It's very quiet now. It's just quiet part of the song. I'll fast forward a little bit. There, there's a little bit louder. How's that? The Winnie the Pooh one was fucking cool, but the singing, I can't get over the singing one now. I'm thinking about it's Frozen. It's like a little undercurrent of the beat, right? It's just a mix. It's like a nice, you know, just, it's a, it's a, it's a set by Closey, but it's a really good, it's a really good set. That's good? Okay, I'm going to write it down. That's about negative, like, 47. Cool. I will. It's just, it's it's spooky season. Like, so I, I don't want to buy any new games unless they're, like, look like dope-ass horror games right now. That's kind of where I'm centering, because pretty soon I'm going to start playing, like, Mortuary Assistant shit. That's kind of the season, you know? And that game looks so not that. If If, if I could be a villain... And go the villain route, I'd do it, but it's just not very spooky. Hell yeah. Oh my god, this is Ratatat. She mixed in Ratatat. That's dope. Hell yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure YouTube volume. Yeah, so YouTube's at hundred percent. So on break it's negative thirty and talk while I'm talking, negative forty seven. Apparently it's perfect for YouTube. Good to know. Are they adding content bash? Like new houses or whatever because that's that's kind of what i'd like and also the sage rub that's a little like culturally insulting can we stop with rubbing sage on things all the time for ghosts fuck's sake you can make it any herb it doesn't have to be sage i watched ratatat from the roof of my dorm my freshman year they were playing in red square which was like the central there was a concert in the central part of my dorm university but i couldn't afford tickets so we climbed out our windows and got on the roof and watched it it was dope i think they're gonna get a huge update right on the 27th so in like six days ish seven days in seven days seven days yes getting rid of asylum adding five map variants more ghosts and a lot more that's awesome i liked the idea of the asylum it's just too big it's just so big. You end up spending so much time just running around trying to find shit. And I'm such a pussy. I end up scared in every goddamn room. So I get nothing done in no time. It's great. Don't try and sage or smoke unless you know what you're doing. If you don't, you'll just make the enemy mad. That's what I'm saying. Like, and they're not even. I don't know. Sage smudging is like actually part of a lot of indigenous cultural people's like culture and stuff and i feel like i don't know it's a little it's i know i'm probably being sensitive but it's a little you could use anything like we'd be smudging anything that's what you had to go with i think it's white sage specifically that clo that's a closed practice amongst amongst indigenous peoples there you go thank you club that's what i thought yeah it's called sunny meadows now is it still the same map though is it still just like an overwhelmingly large build hospital building that you don't know what to do because that's what it felt like before and i just it takes too long. I don't have fun anymore. You know, it's one thing if it's fun the whole time. All this talk of sage is making me hungry for turkey stuffing. Oh my God, right though. Do you like it out of the bird or cooked in the oven? I deal with spirits by yelling, can you fucking not? Same. All the time. I scream why a lot. Like that sense seems to be my go-to because like working in the hospital when you stub your toe, you can't scream like fuck shit ass, fuck a cock. 
So I just started, I developed just why, 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 why? And that's, I do that a lot. <laughs> why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <coughs> I don't even add the me, just why. Why? I said it when I fucking jammed my foot on that nail the other day and ripped my foot open. Why? I had no other words. Just fucking why? 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 Or I'll say horrible, like, not horrible, just like, oh, great. That's fucking nice. All by myself. I talk to myself a lot. Ooh, weird question. I'm into it. My apartment is so cluttered and I don't know where to start. I still have my Secret Labs bo chair box, and I feel like getting rid of it might be a good starting point. I can't imagine any reason to keep it. Do you agree? 100% agree. Um, so one way you could start, since you've already decided on that box, Bolt V, is go through and just start gathering everything cardboard and fill that box with cardboard. That's what I would do. And that way, you're kind of like, you're starting somewhere. You're not necessarily starting in a corner or whatever, but you're probably going to eliminate a lot of mass. If you're anything like us, like everything come, everything this big comes in a cardboard box this big and you just end up with so much extraneous cardboard. It's kind of crazy. So take that huge ass box. I know how big that box is and just start breaking down cardboard and filling it and digging through everything. Get all the fucking cardboard. That can be like the first thing. And that'll give you a big hit of like, I fucking did it. And then recycle it. First, everybody does. Who doesn't? I break down boxes every day, and I swear there's probably, there's one right there. I could break down a box that's right next to my bookshelf. Every day, it's constant, and it's always for something like that. Like a lip balm. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. A lists are, I love lists just because checking something off gives me like a serotonin hit. Like being, like, do, do this right now, seriously. Let's, let's do an experiment. Bolt V, get a piece of paper, literally write down, break down all the cardboard with a little box next to it. And when you're done, put a gold star on it. Tell me if it feels as good as it feels to me. Like, even though you know you're going to do it, you're putting it on the paper and it's a goal. And it's, it's you know, easy. I don't know. It's probably one of the easier ones because you're not like having to organize or anything, but it feels nice. It does. I don't know what it is. Like, I'll do that. Like, I'll make a little list, like clean the bathroom, even though I know I'm cleaning the bathroom today. I don't need a list to remind myself when I'm done. I get to come over here and be like, oh, yeah, you can lick those floors. <laughs> we have a big, a big box full of broken down boxes that we use that we use to start the dragon on its fussy days. Oh, that's fantastic. We do, too. We get I, I order the dog's food through. Uh, what is it? Bark. It's not bark box. Uh, is it bark? What is that? I'm just blanking. We get their, we order all their food. Chewy, thank you. Jesus Christ, not BarkBox. It's Chewy, yes. We get all their food through Chewy, like in a, in a subscription thing. So every month I have this enormous box big enough for like two huge, the big dog bags of dog food, you know? And that's what we use. It's just under like a table over there and we break down cardboard and fill it throughout the week and then put it out for recycling. I have to, because otherwise it literally can, I think I tweeted one time the mound of cardboard that was in my kitchen at one point. It was like around Christmas season, so we were buying presents for people, but it was taller than me of broken down cardboard. And I broke all of it down, and then I bought myself a really nice knife to break down cardboard boxes as a reward for breaking down all those boxes with a fucking butter knife and my arms. <sighs> it was wild. It was a day's worth of cardboard. It was insane. Ooh, we're finally getting live hash rosin in PA. Oh, hell yeah. I just put in an order for a gram of Sugar Plum Sunset, a.k.a. Jul Jul Joliet, Joliet, Jake. Ooh, are you excited? <gasps> I'm excited for you. Stickers is the best. I'm a big fan of stickers. Yep. No one hates stickers. The last words of a lot of crashing airplane pilots are just a quiet shit. <laughs> I'd probably. Why? <laughs> like, what else do you, what do you do? Yeah, it's kind of what I have just adopted. I found a new local berry, bake, berry, Katie, bakery, and have acquired ciabatta. Oh, yes. And a country loaf. Oh, my God, yes. Now you just have to talk them into making your apple cider donuts and then send me one. <laughs> but that's dope. A good bakery. I've been making my own homemade bread lately. It's actually insanely easy. I remembered the recipe by heart. It's weird. When I worked in fast food, I broke down boxes by flipping them over and stomping on the tape as hard as I could. So satisfying. Uh-huh. We used to do it at Lowe's. The huge boxes that, like, refrigerators come in. Oh, they feel so nice. Ooh. 
I've never ever seen a I've never seen an apple cider donut in my life. I don't know why. I've never seen it. Absolutely, Bolt V. Dude, ADHD folks gotta stick together, man. Even if you don't have it, like organizing is tough. And sometimes just like, especially when the project's huge, it helps me at least to just focus on one thing like that. Like go through it all, get all the cardboard or whatever all the plastic out of the cardboard like it's just it helps you get a little bit of it done and not become overwhelmed I become overwhelmed by stuff like that really fast if there's a ton of stuff to do like the kitchen's dirty and my everything's dirty I'm just like like when that happens the way I'll segment it is I start from the top down seriously like if I feel like I need to dust everything and my kitchen's filthy and the floors are dirty the way I segment it in my mind is I just work top I work from the ceiling down is that shelf dirty no okay is that dirty counters are dirty do the counters do the dishes, dishwasher, then the floors. And that's how, I don't know if it means, like if it makes anything easier, but it's a way to kind of compartmentalize each task so it doesn't feel like one enormous task. It feels like a bunch of tiny tasks. And that's much better for my brain to focus on as opposed to just one, like I can't focus on that huge, just it's too much. But by breaking it down into a bunch of little projects for yourself, it can seem a lot less daunting. And in that way, your brain doesn't get, you know, like, pre-exhausted just from the idea of it which can happen especially if you have ADHD that is well-known hardcore like horrible symptom really dude BDO drove like four hours for them or something and said they were pretty tasty but it might have been the pure exhaustion in the four hours nobody knows I've never had one though I've never seen them around here I imagine they are where apples are and I'm in the desert I know theory it's very depressing but we have dank ass fucking Mexican food everywhere. So whatever. <laughs> at least I have uh, literally the best tacos at my disposal at any time. That was the only thing I really missed when living on the East Coast. There's no decent Mexican food. There's really good like Cuban food everywhere, but no decent Mexican food. I think I just got spoiled. I often respond to something bad happening with, oh, no, not again. Like the bowl of petunias. Oh, my God. Yes. Dread, I do the, uh, I can't believe you've done this. Anybody remember that ancient fucking vine? I can't believe, that is such a bright screen. Holy shit. Out of here. I left up that screensaver on accident. Um, I do that a lot. Twitch is on fire. Oh no, what's happening? Earlier today, everyone's like little sub icons and like their swords for my mods and shit all disappeared. So I kind of assumed something weird was happening. Is it just being twitchy? Ooh, blueberry cake donuts, the shit. Dude, glut with maybe like a lemon glaze frosting on top. Like just a little, like a little like. Oh my God. Fuck me up. Lemon blueberry is just so good together. Like kill me with that. It's just, oh, uh, lemon, like just the, the lemon drizzle over a blueberry cake donut or a blueberry like muffin. Fuck me up with that any day. Lemon poppy seed. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> I love donuts, if you couldn't tell. It's probably my favorite. I honestly, apple fritters are my favorite, though. Like, a huge, hot, fall apart, almost like monkey bread apple fritter with, like, a black cup of coffee. Fuck off. There's no better way to cure any day. Cheers. Except that it's plugged, not cheers. <laughs> ah. Yeah, blueberry and citrus. Because blueberry doesn't have a super strong flavor. I feel like citrus brings it out for some reason. Like, it makes you taste the blueberry more. I don't know. Is that just me? Blueberry pie ice cream? No. Is it amazing? I've had huckleberry ice cream, which I don't know. I still have a thing about that. <laughs> On the west coast of Washington state, huckleberries are as smaller than a pea and they're bright fucking red. If you go to eastern Washington state, they are a blueberry. But everyone calls them huckleberries. I guess they're a huckleberry, but they are a blueberry. I don't get it. I don't know what the fuck. I've had that. It's blueberry. But they're like, no, they're huckleberries. Maybe they're a huckleberry. They look exactly like a fucking blueberry. I don't know. They're tasty. I like them because they're tart. Brie and blueberry stuffed pretzels. Oh, my fuck off. Yum. Glut. That made my heart flutter. Stop. Yum. I used to fry donuts. Shut up. Apple fritters soak up most oil of all the donuts. That's probably why they're the best. I believe that. That's probably why they're literally the best. <laughs> why are they so... That's it. Fat. My body likes fat. 
Huckleberries can be black. No shit. So there are, there, that's what I assumed. There's got to be different variations because it doesn't even taste the same. Like the huckleberries on the west side of the state, they're super small and red and always wild. It's always like a tiny little bush growing out of a tree or something. That's where huckleberries are on the west side. But on the east side, they grow them in fields and they're huge. They're like that big and they look just like a blueberry. A little, they do taste a little tart, more tart, I think. I haven't had a fresh blueberry in a long time. That's a little sad. What is Superman ice cream? I've never had that. Ooh, blueberry honey. Oh, yum. Is it fucking to, to die for? Mm. I'm making space to fuck off for exactly 15 minutes. Hell yeah. You do it. Make your space. I didn't know puckleberries could be black. That's cool. My boss is going to be like, where'd you go? Sorry, I needed pastries stuffed with blueberries. Um, If your boss says that's ridiculous, you need a new boss. Time to fire your boss. Cheers. Now that it's not plugged. <laughs> I love salmon berries. They have those in Maryland. Everywhere. They're so good. They're like just wild in the forests. They're like a gold raspberry kind of, right? Are we talking about the same thing? <coughs> they have a different flavor. They're almost like lighter. It's almost like cantaloupe versus honeydew. It's like they're kind of the same thing, but a little lighter, a little crisper. I don't know. I'm a big fan of honeydew, though. I know a lot of people are like, ew, honeydew. I don't get it. Why are you so hateful? <coughs> I used a flat of blueberries in it. Oh, in the mead? Fuck yes. Dude, I've never been a fan of just mead by itself. Just because it's so, like, thick. It's syrupy. And the texture is, like, a little much for me. I'm a huge fan of honeydew. Like, I get down on that before cantaloupe any day. I don't get it. I, I'm a, it's, it's, like, firmer, crisper. I think it has more flavor. Cantaloupe tends to be mushy. I don't know. People are weird. But, um... Yeah, mead is super thick and syrupy, but when I, went to the, when I went to the Maryland Renaissance Fair for the first time, they have a drink, and I think it's called a bee sting. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't been in a few years because I don't fucking live there anymore, sadly. But it was half cider, half mead, and it was so good. It was, like, perfect. Okay, well, maybe it's, that I, it's probably because the only mead I've had is at fucking Renaissance Fair, so it's, like... They're making it like old school style where it's syrupy. That's probably it, right? I imagine. I've had mead out of like a, a, a bottle before and it was syrupy too, but. Ooh, that's okay. You want to know a fun trick, Oogie? Did we already teach? I might have already said this out loud. Someone taught me this recently. So I learned that you can delete everything after the first question mark in any link and it'll still work. So like I just did it. Oop, wrong keyboard. This one. I'm just doing it as an experiment. So this link should still fucking work if my experiment works. I was taught this by someone recently and it it worked for me. I was kind of blown away. Yeah, so like literally some, someone just taught me this. Don't feel bad. I did not know, never have known how to do this. But yeah, if you post your link, because I posted a link that was so long, it was too long for the chat box. My chat box told me I couldn't type it. And I think Glut taught me this. So that link should send you the exact same place. I'm testing it. It totally does. I have no idea what all that extra information is for, but it's pointless. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it takes a minute when you look at it, but at least you don't have to go to like a link shortener website or something stupid like that, like we all used to do. Kind of a weird like surprise. <laughs> I don't know. Tracking. Oh, sick. I didn't know. I feel. <laughs> yeah, I dreaded it. Speaking of, new Zelda game coming out. I'm so fucking excited. I could pee myself. Thank you, Uki. That's the honey you're talking about? I might have to order some. I love honey. I eat a lot of honey and peanut butter sandwiches. That's like a mainstay in my life. Oh, it's basically saying how you got to the site and some, sometimes where you are. So none of it's needed to like share your link. That makes a lot of sense. It's just crazy. Okay, so Superman ice cream. I knew it was Blue Moon, Red Pop, and Lemon. Wait, Blue Moon the beer? What's red pop? Like a like the popsicle from a ice cream truck? What the fuck? Mead and fruit is a mellow mel. A mellow mel? That's a fun word to say. Unless it's apple cider, then it's a sizer. Oh my god. I grew up in a town where they have a cider fest every year. Because apples are such a big deal in Washington. We had there like a huge and they literally had 
like a barrel as big as a house that they would make like this enormous batch of cider in and everybody you could just get free cider all day pull from it and then they had alcohol and like you know entertainers and people selling strange lotions and garlics it was like a hippie festival kind of but it was cider fest every year we used to go and as kids you could always get away with smoking pot because all your parents were drunk as fuck you need a gallon of it to make the booze a gallon of the honey holy shit my favorite honey to use was oh, I meat. I love orange blossom honey. I usually get orange blossom honey if I can find it. It is my favorite. And I try to buy local just because supporting local bee people sounds like a good idea. But I'm always out for trying new honeys. Hair. Is it on my mic? There's fucking, I kissed my dog. God forbid. Blueberry barbecue sauce. Shut up. You want to know the weirdest blueberry thing I've ever had in my entire life? Vile for my birthday. This was like two years ago. Vile for my birthday got me literally like a case of different pickles because I fucking love pickles. I'm a huge fan. I love pickled olives, pickled asparagus, pickled vegetables, pickled anything. I love vinegar and salt and all the things. Pickles are just everything. And literally it was like a box this big with like 12 different jars of all different types of pickle, like pickled things. And there was a little jar. I still have it of pickled blueberries and they're actually not terrible. I think you're supposed to use them in like a drink or something. And I don't drink alcohol. So I like tasted them and I've never used them again, but they're pickled. So I think they're fine, but they weren't bad. And you would never think that I would never in my life think, yeah, I'm going to fucking pickle a blueberry, but they were tasty as shit. I don't know, man. It was weird. One gallon of honey makes about five gallons of meat. Damn. That's I. That's so much. I never even thought about it. Going to Cider Fest. Do it. Oh, my God. I've missed Cider Fest. Real like. Fresh ass apple cider is something else. Shortening the link to the first question mark isn't guaranteed to work, but it often will. Oh shit, no, sh I haven't run into a problem with it yet, so we'll learn when we get there. Most of the data you're passing to the website isn't vital. OTOH, if some of that data is the product you're interested, then you won't get there. Oh. So I wonder if it has to do with like how deep into a website you clicked. You know what I mean? From the initial going there or whatever. I don't know. Websites are interesting, but it is useful, at least, you know, some of the time. Six gallons, 24 bottles. That is insane. That's insane. The problem with it is if you remove the tracking for things like stream sponsorships, the links, the links don't go back to the help support streamer, stream or whatever. Absolutely. And if it was a link like that, like we'd obviously want to be doing that. I feel like I'd probably catch that or something. Probably not. My mods would. They're smarter than me. This is Superman ice cream. Okay. We're learning. Mm, stream deck doesn't work. Uh, I want it back. Mm, I miss it. It's beautiful. All right, Superman. I gotta fuck, fuck this volume. Superman ice cream is a Midwest favorite. That's what it said. Because it's not going to read it to us and the music's really annoying. The colors match the Man of Steel suit. No shit. Tell me what's in it. The origins are rumored to be Stroh's Brewery in Detroit. No shit. Some combinations include Blue Moon, Red Pop, and Lemon flavors. Stroh's made a non-alcoholic products during Prohibition. Wait, what is Red Pop, though? Is that the popsicle I'm thinking of from the ice cream truck? Interesting. So it has a to it's secret, basically. It's like, God damn it, I want my stream deck back. <sighs> That's pretty dope, though. I mean... I think that's strawberry red pop. Oh, so just like strawberry flavor, flavored ice cream. Is it good? With blue moon. That's I like blue moon. I like blue moon. I just never thought to put it all together. That's very interesting. The other thing we put on everything, every, everything and anything, anything and everything Katie can read is the soda moxie. What is that? Moxie barbecue sauce. And it was, what is moxie? What is it? What would you compare it to? Is it like a Coca-Cola, like a, like a cola root based? Is it brown? I need to get honey, though. I just froze Marion Berries. Oh, yes. Get it. I love Marion Berries, too. A forum page counts as a list. Oh, if, for instance, if the page is a list, some of the data after the question mark might be which page on the list. Or, oh, yep. Forum page counts as list. Yeah, that makes sense. So, like, a Reddit link or something like that. I just checked my local ape area that I like, and they have blueberry honey. Are you going to try it? Oh, I'm very excited. You'll have to give us a review. It's like Dr. Pepper and Coke had a baby. Interesting. So like, like, uh, uh, I don't want to say sarsaparilla. Is it stronger flavored than both? Do you think? 
Licorice soda is moxie. Like black licorice? <gasps> I love licorice. I was literally thinking of outing myself as a black licorice ice cream fan, but people usually come at me like with anger in their hearts for that. Uh oh, is your brother making mead? How much is he making, Eliza? I just learned that one gallon. Hi, CJ. How are you, love? Hail the day, Lord. One gallon of honey makes what was it? Five gallons of mead? It's insane. Metaform honey tastes like a marshmallow. What? <gasps> I'm thinking of using that with orange. Oh my god, like an orange creamsicle. I was literally gonna say you're gonna make like orange creamsicle. I want to taste a honey that tastes like marshmallow. That's fucking dope. He's making a gallon. Oh, so not much honey then. I mean, how much honey to make one gallon? Is it like a cup? Interesting. What kind of honey did he use? Or is he using like a kit? I've used a kit to make beer before. That was kind of fun. It wasn't great beer. It tasted like a very pissed down Kolsch, but it was okay. It was initially made as a cough syrup in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and somehow it became a soda. I mean, Coca-Cola might be, we all know where we got our favesies. Dr. Pepper. I'm not saying, but uh, we like drugs, humans, man. Pistachios, I love pistachio ice cream so much. I don't know if I have a favorite ice cream. I love ice cream too much. I like ice cream that has pieces in it, if that makes sense. Like any ice cream that has, you know, like pistachio ice cream usually has little nut bits in it or cookies and cream has bits of cookie in it or something like that. I like it that it has bits in it. If it's just an overall smooth consistency, I'm not usually a huge favor. F favor? Not usually a huge fan unless it's like black licorice. CJ, our, we gave our post office a couple days. We went like three times in one week after the holiday, like two weeks ago, and it was never sorted because the holiday fucked everyone up and they were just so overloaded and it's one person sorting it. So I'm going to go tonight after work and just hope it's sorted. But I gave them like, I just didn't want to go for a couple days. I was going constantly. And it's just, it's because one person is sorting Denver mail. It's asinine. I've never seen more than one person in there, except like maybe three days before Christmas. So I try not to get mad. I feel bad. I have, we have like six packages waiting for us somewhere, somewhere in there. But I'm going today after stream and I'm just going to be like, okay, it's been two and a half weeks since this arrived and it's been a week since this arrived and help. <laughs> like, what if these were perishable? Help. Ben and Jerry's with literally any cheesecake in it. I got to have chunks, though. Cheesecake and, like, a chocolate chip I'd be good with. I love Americone Dream. It's probably my favorite of the, of, uh, Ben, uh, not Ben and, is it Ben and Jerry's? Yeah, of the Ben and Jerry's. Um, Stephen Colbert's Americone Dream is so fucking good. It's just got the perfect amount of ice cream ratio to chunks. To, like, ch like, you know, texture, I guess. I don't know, like, chunks of cone in it, chunks of whatever. Chunks of cheesecakes? Yeah, that'd be fucking sick. I thought you meant like cheesecake flavored ice cream. I'm like, with chunks of chocolate, hell yeah. Is it cheesecake with like graham cracker crust though? Are there like graham cracker bits in it? Because that sounds hot. Butter pecan, that's, Zach loves that shit. He always gets it. It's tasty. It's too rich for me. I, I can't eat more than like two bites, but it's super tasty. Ooh. Black cherry with big, yep, I'd be into that. As long as it's not just cherry flavored ice cream. I need like, you know, like what was that one that was cherry and chocolate? You don't see it very often anymore. Uh, uh, didn't it start with like a G? It was like, was it just Cherry Garcia? Cherry Garcia? I really liked that one. I don't see it anymore though, ever. Like people don't like chocolate. Every fun ice cream is always vanilla based. Why? Boring. No, Get out of my soul. Never. I don't know. I eat it too fast. <laughs> I eat ice cream really slow because I hate fucking brain freeze. It hurts. All flavors made equal. Pride shirt. I like to spoon shirt and a shovel spoon. Shut up. That's so perfect. Yeah. Cherry Garcia. I love that. I had caramel flavored magic shell topping. Mm, yeah. Magic shell topping is always. I mean, if you have it and you're not using it, you're missing out on life. That shit is so good. Interesting fact. The cordial that Susan is given by Aslan and the Lion and the Witch in the Wardrobe is an infused alcohol. No shit. The, med the medicinal monks used to do that because the spirit brewed and distilled in the monastery tasted foul, hence a cordial becoming known as medicine. A liquor is a cordial with added sugar. <gasps> cordial cherries. You blew my mind. That's fucking wild. That's so weird. I had no idea. I always thought it was just like the, uh, you know, the um, Turkish delight, just another sweet. That's funny. 
the ice cream's cheesecake flavor as well. Do they taste different though, or is it just like this smooth ass like fucking generic shit in your mouth? I imagine not, but I have to question. Some genius over at Little Debbie's made ice creams ba- based on cosmic brownies. <gasps> Shut up, zebra cakes, honey. But I'm that cosmic brownie. I'm gonna put my penis in. I used to steal my dad's cosmic brownies, Uki. Not even shitting you. My mom would buy like all the Little Debbie snacks for my dad's lunches because he worked construction. He needed to eat like five thousand calories a day just to live. And in the middle of the night, I would go upstairs and, like, steal four of them and bring them down to the basement and just have them in my room. Like, I got a couple of the brownies. And he'd be like, who fuck ate my brownies? I'm like, huh? Nobody. They're perfect. What the fuck? I'm going to have to look for that. That makes me sad and happy all at the same time. In my soul and my genitals. I hate love brain freeze. Same. I kind of feel the same way about it. Like, I feel like I kind of succeeded if I get it, but also, ouch, it never goes away and it's just horrible. And then I'm scared to take any more bites. I'm like, is it going to do it again? (laughs) I want a strawberry Garcia. I know. That's all I can think about. I'm going to have to look for it now. Like, I can't stop thinking of the texture. Because remember, it was like, wasn't it like dark chocolate ice cream with the cherries mixed in? And then there was like chocolate shell chunks in it. Like they had literally like broken up cordial cherry, like the actual like little cordial cherries, the cherries and the chocolate, you know? It was like they broke them up in there, so you'd get, like, a bite of ice cream, but it had the shell chocolate that was kind of crunchy, but would, like, fall apart in your mouth. And then, you, oh, my God. I have to find some Cherry Garcia tonight. I'm sorry if I just caused anyone to touch themselves. <gasps> Why would you do this to me? Oh, my God. They did make the ice cream. I'm going to get fat. Nutty bars? Shut up. <gasps> okay, let me read these ice creams. Are you guys ready for some ice cream porn? So these are the ice creams based on Little Debbie snacks. Oatmeal cream pies. Vanilla cream ice cream with a soft oatmeal cookie pieces and a hint of molasses. Fuck off. I'd eat the shit out of that. Ooh. Cosmic brownies. Brownie batter ice cream filled with mini rainbow chips and brownie pieces. With rainbow chips? It's like they hurt us. That makes me so happy. I'm really hoping so, Eliza. Let's keep going. Um, Zebra cakes. White cake ice cream with yellow cake pieces and a milk chocolate fudge swirl. Oh, my God. They're perfecting ice cream, and it's going to make all of us die. Honey buns. Honey flavored, honey bun flavored ice cream with glazed honey bun pieces. Oh, and a sweet cinnamon squir- swirl. Squirrel? Squirrel? Oh, my God. I'm such a slut for honey. Like, I mean, honey and for cinnamon. Cinnamon is what I was going to say, but also honey. Like, that sounds so good. Honey and cinnamon together is just like, oh, oh, meant to happen. Holy shit, that sounds really good. Um, Strawberry shortcake rolls. White cake ice cream with yellow cake pieces and a tart strawberry swirl. I don't normally like that shit, but the tart strawberry swirl wants me to get down on it. Fuck. Swiss roll. It's just... I really like ice cream. <laughs> Swiss roll. Chocolatey cake ice cream with chocolate cake pieces and a swirl of whooped cream. Whooped. Whipped cream. Whipped. Whooped. Whipped. Now I don't know how to say the word. Uh, that sounds is so, I right? Like, I think my penis is about to take off from body and never come back. It's ejecting body. And then Nutty Bar. This is where I flipped out. Peanut butter ice cream swirled with chocolatey waffle cone pieces and a thick fudge swirl. Get the fuck in my body and I don't even care which hole first. Allow yourself to be penetrated. (laughs) It's still funny. I'm glad. Fuck. I know. I usually get non-dairy because it too, it turns me into just a phlegm monster. I can't breathe. But... I would probably buy one that I want for Zach and be like, a little bite and just suffer the consequences of a bite of it. That's that's what you do when you know it's going to hurt you and make you break out. I wonder what the mead would taste like with the Marion berries and the fireweed honey. Probably fucking good. I feel like mead and Marion berries is kind of a, a match made in heaven because aren't Marion berries, correct me if I'm wrong, Marion berries, they're, they're like a little tart bitter, aren't they? They've got something extra to them that's not just sweet, which I think would be really, really good as a mead. Because mead in general tends to be really sweet. Regardless, I mean, all the meads I've had have been tend to be very sweet, not very dry. And adding a little something like the tart bittery to it might be, I, I'd be down to that. 
I'd be more likely to try that one because that's that would be my thought process. That's what I do too, Kate. I'm glad we're on the same page with that one. Look at this this gift I bought you. I'm going to take a bite of and complain about all night because I'm going to fart until you choke to death on it. Ha. <laughs> or burp yourself, stupid. Whatever your whatever your consequences of dairy are. I love cinnamon. Fireweed is spicy like cinnamon. Oh, dude. I'd get the fuck down on that. Hard. I could use some mead, a whole bunch of it right now. Boo. Why? You know, you can buy mead at like liquor store, like a beer. It's like in beer bottles. It's crazy. I have another sort of ice cream porn sitting in my freezer right now is coffee ice cream. That's only 327 cal calories for the entire pint. Wait, does it taste good? Have you tried it? Because I've had some of those and they taste like the saddest ice cream I've ever had in my life. Is it good? Because that sounds fucking delicious. It's only to for a whole pint? Damn. A raccoon skull? I got Eliza a skull for Christmas. Is that a weird thing? Is that not what people do is buy their loved ones skulls? A halo shit? What? Is that a halo shit? What's a halo shit? Twelve years vegan, and last night I had some chocolate. Wait, there's a lot of vegan chocolate, though, Wolf. Are you actually feeling like like your gut is telling you there was milk in it and you're gonna die, like that kind of chocolate? Did you do it on accident? Take like a Prilosec and some um, tummy tum tum tummy tummy tums. It might help a lot. Boo! Oh, Halo Top. I thought you meant Halo the game. I'm an idiot. Phone tag with insurance companies, mortgage companies, lawyers, boo. Phone tag of any type is not fun. I'm so sorry. Blah, blah, blah. I, you should, I think you should treat, treat yourself to mead and drink it in a fancy cup. There's really awesome one in Portland called Weird. Weird? Is it weird or word? Weird? I think I would always accept a skull. I'm a big fan. Skulls are cool. You would eat her present, and I just imagined you eating a raccoon. Oh, yeah. I mean... I I mean, I know teeth are strong, but getting through bone, man, that's wild. <laughs> I knowingly had milk chocolate. Oh, no. I was high as balls, and my, and my sugars dipped bad and had nothing else to hand. I mean, it's better than dying or passing out, right, Wolf? Like, you did what you had to do. Ooh, I'll give you the link. It's actually um a set by someone named, I believe, Closey is how you pronounce their name, and they're amazing, and you can follow their whole YouTube channel, and they do lots of different sets, and I just really like, they're really chill. Like, there's been, like, rat -a -tat in here. I've heard there's, you know, speckled in. It's, like, nice, chill, just kind of, like, hoppy music. Oh, a freeze bong? Did you order your freeze bong finally? Are you excited? According to the internet, you can get the little Debbie ice cream at Walmart. Good to know. We have, like, we have, like, an organic Walmart near us. It's really weird. It's not, it's Walmart, but the sign is green, and it's, like, organic, I guess. I don't know. I've never been inside. <laughs> they did a collab with Cannibal Corpse. Shut up. And there was blood orange mead. Oh my god, yes. Did you fuck it with a knife though? Uh, I got the Game of Thrones themed whiskeys when they came out. It was technically it was I got two scotches, but I'm a scotch fan. Sue me. Dude, I totally would. I actually like um have a couple friends that live in Portland now. I've thought about going and visiting my parents and then just driving down for a couple days. Absolutely, Wolfie. I mean. We got to share music when we can, right? Spread the happy sounds. It's like a tar Target disguised as Walmart, kind of. I don't think they sell clothes, though. I think it's just food. Because it's real small. I don't know. I just drive past it a lot. It's strange. And by a lot, I mean, you know, once in a while. <laughs> and I see it, and I'm like, that's a weird Walmart. But it's small. And I think it's, it's like a, I can't remember what they call it. They call it something else. It's like Walmart Market, I think. Something like that. I don't know the specifics of it, but it's weird. Which one did you drink, Rod? I can't I can't remember the other house I got. I got um Lannister because it was Logable, and Logable is my favorite, and Lannister was my favorite, so I was like, win win. But the other one I got was McKellen, and I just can't remember what house McKellen was. A 
Small Mart. <laughs> That's a better name than probably what they came up with. Trick's little tootsies were twitching because he was running in his sleep. It was precious. Sold out, shut up, of all mead ever. There's got to be more than one store king here. Come on. Do you have Drizzle? Drizzly or whatever that app is? You can get liquor literally delivered to your door if you have ID. Neighborhood market. Yep, I think that's it, CJ. I think that's literally what it's called. It's very strange. I've never seen one before. That's the only reason why I say it's strange. Never seen one in my life. I think it is mostly groceries. I think they're like, it's like their smaller, like kind of in and out grocery kind of thing. Instead of going into like a super Walmart, walking 10 miles across the store to get to the veggies and then walking 10 miles to the other side to get tissue paper. It's like their small, like almost like a little bit bigger than a Walmart, than a Walgreens is what it looks like from the outside anyways. Oh, the Cannibal Corpse Mead, shut up. It's still on sale, though. They're sold out, but it's still out there. Ooh. The White Walker one, I think, I don't, do you know what whiskey it was, though? Because they were all an actual whiskey brand, just given a house. I don't remember seeing that one. I think I only saw, I, th I know I saw Lannister. I think, I want to say it was like um, the Reek's house, the Squid, uh, the Iron, Iron Isles. I want to say it was theirs. But I've moved so many times since then, I ended up just getting rid of the bottles because I didn't want to carry around the bottles anymore. It sounded crazy. Johnny Walker, was it tasty? There was a Stark bottle. I don't remember what theirs was, though. I don't remember, like, if they had, was it Jane? One of them was Jameson. Someone got Jameson. Like, it was basically all the big whiskeys and a couple good scotches. I just got the two scotches. But it was tasty. Was it good? Good. I got, I got them just because of the bottles, but I like, I like those, too. So it was a win-win. Everyone there is awesome. The owner was Billy Boyd and Dom Monaghan's. Pippin and Mary, shut up. Podcast in the summer. Oh, I love listening to their podcast. <laughs> I listen to it every once in a while and they always make me laugh. They're so smart and they love video games so much. Jameson is good. I've never, I didn't grow up around Jameson. My Nana drank mostly vodka until like I was an adult and then she started putting Jameson shit. So I didn't really grow up around whiskey. It was always vodka or gin. Not fans. I don't get it. You're drinking. It's it's tastes like a pine tree to me. Ooh, a slappy song. I'll play it after this. This playlist is pretty long. I just I like to leave it on because I don't have to think about it. But I got it. Thank you. Devil. I like the Devil Wears Prada. Did you ever listen to um, Bullet for My Valentine back in the day? I went and saw them live twice. That's how much I used to listen to Bullet for My Valentine. I was a big fan. Such a fucking little nerd. Not a fan anymore. I think the lead singer ended up being a crazy person, like always, but I liked them. They did a good show. They actually sang really well live. They were talking about doing a live podcast from a mead hall. Shut up! That would be so sick. That would be fucking sick. I would die. That would be so cool. I really like listening to their podcast. If you guys have never listened to Mary and Pippin's podcast or their actual names, which are Billy Boyd and Don Monaghan, I think I'm saying his name right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's the two people who played Mary and Pippin on Lord of the Rings, in Lord of the Rings, sorry. Um, they are incredibly insightful, very intelligent people, and they play the fuck out of uh, League of Legends. Like, every once in a while, they just go on these crazy tangents about their level in League of Legends. And I love listening to nerds be passionate. Like, it just gets me. Check out their podcast. It's very chill, though. Like, there's no, like, screaming. They don't, like, get too deep into talking weird politics or anything like that. They don't invite question or not questionable, but, like, controversial people on just to get clicks or anything. They talk about real stuff. And they're just, like, their lives and stuff. And they're just kind of adorable. I still see them as hobbits. <laughs> as an orc, it's forever. The Friendship Onion, thank you. The Friendship Onion. I'm going to write it down so I remember to tell people about it. But yes, please listen to The Friendship Onion. I end up following a lot of podcasts and then because they just like pop up and I listen to them in a row like while I'm running or doing shit, I never, I never look at the name of the podcast ever again and then I forget who the fuck it is. I just, I'm like, oh, I listen to this podcast. I've listened to him for 10 years. I think his name's John. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible habit. Thank you. Yeah, they're fun to listen to. I like them. Podcasts are when I'm driving or doing yard work. Me, that's when I'm doing housework. When I'm like housework, when I'm, you know, shampooing the carpets and doing like a deep clean for the day. I blast podcasts on my computer so I can hear it all over the house. Like literally my house is so small. It's pretty easy, honestly. But I can walk from one end of the house and still hear it. And it. I don't know. It's nice. I like listening to them, especially when people like it's two friends like that, like. 
they have so much history and so much to like that they've talked about and to talk about that they can casually talk forever. It never feels awkward. It doesn't feel like an interview because they are always they always have each other's back in the conversation, even if the person they're talking to or interviewing isn't great at conversation. Like not everybody is a fucking conversationalist. No shame at all. So some people feel awkward and stuff, which is totally understandable. They can always carry it forward and they help people feel more comfortable. They're really nice people and I like them. Go find some food fridge. Jesus. It's in your name. Hello. <laughs> Good night, Lizzie. Cheers, my love. Um, oh, I have a I think I have a hit. I have a good night hit for you. Go ninja the fridge. Fucking A, dude. <laughs> Wash your hands and brush your teeth. Be safe. Don't let the strangers cough on your things. I need to burp so bad, but I kind of swallowed it down. Oh, that was terrible. Sorry. My eyes are watering. You ever do that? Go to take a hit and then suddenly you need to burp real bad and you're like, nope, I'm not inhaling that burp. Fuck that. Taco. Did you take your joy today? Never forget to take your joy. Thank and I you. guarantee your day will go as smooth as velvet. Thank you for the biddies, love. Everyone, if you haven't taken your joy today, remember to allow yourself to be penetrated. May a bliss, bliss, blissful penetration be for all of you. My teeth are minty fresh. Excellent. Drink water. I love you. And take your night joy if it's night joy. Sea <gasps> Town got to me first. Got to it before me. Yep. I, I always like <coughs> the meds I take, you can take at night or in the morning. It really depends on like your personal biology and what feels best to you so i take mine in the morning um just because it's when i stream and it's when you guys remind me to take it if i forget like literally i could take mine at nighttime if i wanted to i did when i first started taking the meds and then i started talking about it on stream and we just i moved it because i was like it would be like make more sense you know what i mean <coughs> excuse me oh <gasps> I actually fucking filled my water and left it in the kitchen. Are you kidding me? Dread Pirate, give me one sec. I did. I brought it because Zelda, I think Zelda redeemed Hydrate, or you did earlier, or someone did. And I had like, itty, or it was Uki, maybe. And it was like an itty bitty sipple. And I brought it. It's sitting on my kitchen counter. I'm mad at myself. Ugh! I'm just going to grind up weed first. Hold up. Hold up. Ah! Fud down. <coughs> I shoved all my uh, uki. It was uki. Yep. I filled my water for you, uki. Um, I shoved all my lilac diesel into this because the container it came in was not like a nice airtight porcelain thing. And it's so stacked. <laughs> like putting any more in there, it would be squishing it. So good thing we're doing this. <gasps> I just learned my friend's baby is basically moved to hospice. Oh. <gasps> I don't know what to say. He has ATRT. Oh, and the tumors keep coming back. The doctor said all he can do now is keep him comfortable. There, I mean, Uki, I probably am not the one to, you probably know this. There's nothing you can say. You can be there in whatever capacity you feel they need. Like, that's, that is the most horrible personal journey they're going to be on, like, emotionally and shit. You know what I mean? I can't even, I don't think anyone can put themselves in that place. And I, I don't think any, any words can make that an easier transition other than being like, you know, like, w depending, I don't know them personally, but like, if it was someone I knew, I would think to myself, like, what kind of support is something that makes, that would, that I feel they're, they're comfortable with? Like, do they need physical support? Like, they need to, me to come by the house and clean up the kitchen and make the kids dinner or something because, you know, they can't, it's going to take a load off their back. Something like that. Does that make sense? I don't want to talk in circles, but you know what I mean? Little things like that where it's not like you're not solving anything. You can never tr – death and grieving, I mean, of anything, let alone your own child, for fuck's sake, God. I can't – I honestly, like, it's the most tragic place to be in. Nothing's going to solve it. Nothing's going to make it better. But 
ta- alleviating some of the like that this is just the place I go to when my friends when anyone I love and care about is going through something like this where it's like I sit back is there anything I can do to alleviate the situation absolutely not like there's nothing you can do to alleviate the loss of a child but there are things in their daily life that are not going to be important right now because they're going to be like you know dying inside and it's the worst thing that I can I can fathom experiencing and you know doing some dishes running errands maybe getting them groceries maybe making them a meal like you know how people in movies they're always bringing by casseroles or whatever like that's so corny but sometimes like they're not thinking to cook or eat like do they have kids offering to give the kids a ride to the sports things or something like that like it's not you know what I mean it's not disacknowledging their trauma it's not like you you implying like I'm gonna fix it I'm gonna be the superhero it's just saying like I'm here for you in any capacity whatever the capacity you need is I'm going to suggest some things like these are just the things you suggest and throw out there because sometimes they don't know. Like you don't know what capacity you need help in when you're going through that level of traumatic grieving. You know what I mean? That just doing it. You know what I mean? Mowing the lawn. Just taking something out of their day to day that is. That would go to shit and like it would be in the back of their head like I need to do the dishes. But you all know we've all been in that depressing moment where. The dishes could be three feet high, molding with 10 piles of maggots on them, and there's no way I'm getting out of bed to do the dishes. I imagine if that's, like, just having someone swing by and clean some cups or, you know, sweep the floors or just do the little... That's what I I try to do when someone's going through something like that, because I've learned just going through a lot of it myself that no one can do any... You can't... No one can remove pain like that. Like, grief especially is one of those things that time is the only thing that does anything about it, whether it heals it or just makes you a little bit more numb to it or whatever, time. Another sense, maybe, I mean, if you're comfortable with it, Uki, if you're comfortable with offering childcare, be like, do you want me to come over and play with the kids for a few hours? Not even for them to leave the house, like just so they don't have to pay attention to the kids. Like just that, having a few moments, because I just, I remember my mom, when my dad died, granted I was seven, but it, I remember the ba- watching her, I'm going to cry if I think about it too hard, but watching her balance being strong for my sister and I and trying to show us how it's okay to grieve because she was a single parent now, 100% alone, like no family nearby or anything, was fucking crazy. I remember when my dad passed away, my mom asked my sister and I to go upstairs to our bedrooms and she called the coroners. And of course, we crawled down the stairs and sat on the little landing and like watched through the bars of the stairwell. And the dudes came in, like bagged up my dad. And I remember my mom standing there with her arms crossed. She was like this and shuddering, just like shuddering. But she wouldn't like cry. She was just like doing the crying, like shoulder shuddering. And she kept talking like she kept just repeating herself to the corners like he just went. It was peaceful. He just went. It was about this many minutes ago, like like she was being a respiratory therapist. But that shuddering, it was like watching her body trying to cry, but her brain wouldn't let her. And I've never stopped thinking about that as an adult, like what that what that does psychologically. And sometimes maybe they might need some time to go to another room and just fucking cry. You know what I mean? And with where their kids don't see the ultimate breakdown. The, the loss of control. Sometimes it takes a minute to lose the control. You know what I mean? It takes being alone. And when you have young kids like that, like, you're never alone. That's what I've learned from all my friends with kids. Like, you don't get to be alone. Your kids watch you shit. They watch you put in a tampon. They watch everything. Like, your kids are there. Because otherwise, you're leaving them alone. They might die. Like, reasonable, right? I'd want my kid there, too. But, like, little little things like that, Yeah. I just have a weird view on death and things. My grandma planned her own funeral, so we're just like, yeah, death, okay. That's how I am, too. That's why I feel like people like you and I are are kind of apt for this, for lack of a better word. People that have experienced a lot of death, in their like I have, like you have, a lot of, some people, for some reason, just a lot of our family fucking kicked it early on. And you, we went through courses of just like funeral, death, funeral, death, funeral, death, constantly. And you get not hard to it, but you learn what needs to happen around you when you're grieving. You learn what needs to happen around your parents. If you're one of those people who's very sensitive to that, like when your parents are grieving, 
you learn how to pick up on those signals and how to alleviate a situation while also accepting you're never going to fix it. Like there's no fixing death or, you know, even just the imminent loss of a child is the most I can't even. I can't. I physically can't go there mentally. I don't even know. You know what I mean? Hi, Mayo. How are you, love? It's not something tragic. I think part of it is being Irish American where one day you're dragged along to funerals and open casket wakes. I feel like that's a lot where it came from. My Nana had very much this like, I feel like every single weekend I went to see my Nana throughout my entire life. We either went and saw her on Friday nights, Thursday nights, because we would always go get Chinese food with her and my grandpa. They loved it. And always Thursday or Friday nights. She was always like, oh, yeah, Moose died or someone else died or Uncle Buck died or Vinny died or someone constantly. It's just like an inevitability, I guess. You're just like. It was never we, I've my Nana's death was the most tragic for me personally, like I've been to a million funerals. My my own dads and siblings never broke down that hard. I was like, wow, that's really sad, but I didn't lose control. My Nana's funeral couldn't speak. Just snot and tears. Crazy. The best way it's described to me, grief is like the waves of the ocean. They just come. And as time goes, you can see them coming better and are more prepared to deal with it. I love that. Someone said this the other day in chat. I can't remember who said it, but I I loved it. It was so well put. It was... um, Grief is love with nowhere to go or love that has lost its place. And that we were talking, I think we were talking about Millie because it was like the anniversary of Millie passing. And I was like, damn, that was strong. I like that. But putting those two together, it kind of feels right. It feels like it's the kind of the same message. Like you kind of learn how to take it and you place your love. You realize you have other things to love. You know, like I, whenever I'm sad about Millie, I hug my stupid poodles and I'm like, I love you, even though you fart and shit all the time. (laughs) <clears throat> for fuck's sake my grandma's hobby was to sit in her room at the nursing home read the obits and then spy on the funeral home try to guess whose funeral was happening oh my god that's hilarious my nana did similar similar she definitely read the obits that's fucking great but my nana got to a point she was the last like of all her friends i think there's like one of her generation of friends like the ladies she played cards with and shit i think there's one alive and that's it they're all dead so she got to a point where death just became like she knew she was gonna go <laughs> and was very kind of just uh, casual about it, which was interesting. A lot of women who attend funerals out of boredom. Oh, that's strange. Every every episode of grief is different, totally different. You never know how it will hit you. That is the truest thing. Holy shit. And I don't think that there's an end to the seasons. I think you, or the season, you know, of episodes. I think it just changes. I'm, I'm learning that. Like, as I get older and I metabolize a lot of the death I experienced when I was a kid and didn't quite know how to deal with it, I realized I was hurting as a kid. I just didn't know what to do with those emotions. So I would, they would, you know, I would kind of like when you feel energy and you feel like you're vibrating, you go for a run or you like do some push ups or something. It was similar. It was like I had all that hurt and I didn't know what to do with it. So I would numb it doing drugs or, you know, doing very reckless activities, stupid things like that. Anything that could override whatever else was going on. Uki, you never bring the tone down. Conversations like these are important, and this is why community exists, love. You know what I mean? This is this is why we have, I mean, what what is the point of having friends if they don't let you express all your emotions? Filter friends feel unfun. You know what I mean? Thanks for the advice. I'll just take everything as it comes. And if my friend reaches out, I'll do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's the best you can do, right? It's such a hard place to be in. It's so hard. I don't, it's, yeah. Honestly, the fact that you are aware of the situation and already thinking, like, how can I help them or how can I be them there for them makes you, like, a fucking A-plus friend. Like, not, a... I, oh, my God. I was listening to a podcast the other day. And I can't even remember what the topic was, but I learned that 60% of cancer, of people who are diagnosed with cancer, are left by their husbands within six months of said diagnosis. And yeah, it was very specifically husbands. But like, man, just imagine like all the people in the world who don't have 
a support group, let alone one person in their life who doesn't just say, I fucking love you, but likes them, enjoys their company and reaches out to help them, even though it might inconvenience themselves. Like how many people have someone like that? That's a goddamn treasure. You're a good person. Know what I mean? I understand your struggle. It's the worst. It was weird going to a funeral people, where people knew my grandfather and had good memories of him. I had good memories, but my mom didn't. It's just weird to hear people say these things about them. Oh, yeah. 100% agree with that. I'm kind of for the idea. Then when we remember someone, we recount everything, good or bad. I don't think it's rude to tell the whole truth. 100% no. I want to be... Rem I mean, I glorifying someone after death doesn't do them any favors. I mean, that's how we get history rewritten wrong. Like, might as well talk about the good and the bad. It's all part of who they are, right? It makes the full picture of who they are. Meanwhile, my dad stayed with my mom for all 20 years of cancer diagnosis and treatments. Be better, word. Be better people. Amen to that. I can't even fathom. My family was, like, fighting over who got to take my mom to her breast appointments when she got breast cancer. I cannot fathom that like environment it's just how do you sleep at night <laughs> how does anyone sleep at night when they like could do something like that the bitch boys i don't know man hikaru i have no answer for that i don't understand it but that's a real statistic 60 percent of cancer patients are left by their husband within six months of said diagnosis and that's i don't know why i don't know what that mentality is i'm not trying to attack dudes like that's just crazy I know none of you would do that. There's no fucking way you're hanging out in my community and listening to me if you're that kind of person. You'd be out so fast. Are you kidding? I don't know. I don't. It's just I don't know what happens psychologically. High as fuck snuggled into a pillow. Brittany, that's the way to fucking do it. How's your skin? Are you feeling better about it? Couldn't fathom, fathom leaving the one person you love and not be there. Dude, right? Like, fuck. I don't care if you're married or not. Like, this statistic was very specifically about divorce, like, leaving your, getting divorced within six months. But, like, even just leaving your partner, like, damn. It's one thing if you were already going through a breakup and it just so happens. Like, I'd still say they're friend. Like, for fuck's sake, as long as it wasn't like they were beating the shit out of me and it wasn't some horrible, you know, abuse thing. If it was an amicable breakup, I'd be like, yo, we're probably not going to fuck anymore, but I'm staying here and I'm taking care of you. I would never. I couldn't sleep at night. Like, I could not. It's cra I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's weird. It is fucked up. I think it's fucked up across the board. Your skin is doing better? Good. I think about your skin every day, Brittany. Every day I wash my face, I'm like, I hope Brittany feels better. Because I get it. It sucks. I think it's, like... It's such a fucking attack on her face. I hate it. I have a couple right now, too. They're, like, on my jaw right here. And they hurt. And I hate them. And it just, it's like, I eat healthy, I run, I shower, I wash my face, I buy good skincare. The world isn't fair. Bobalicious word. I mean, treasures, man, treasures. Consider manacles. It's probably along the lines of, this is going to be hard for me. This is going to be a struggle for me, exactly. It's very selfish. It's like, this is going to be a waste of my life. Like, if they're going to die, I might as well get on with myself already. And it's like, ugh, nightmares. I don't know, man. I can't judge. Like, I'm neurodivergent as well. And I assume in order to do something so vile, you must be some sort of neurodivergent. Because I can't, like, something's going on that's different between that person and me. I'm not saying I'm better. I don't know what it is. Like, I'm probably sacrificing years of my youth to take care of someone that was leaving me or whatever. But that I would do that because in my heart, that's the right thing to do. Like, just abandoning any human. Like, the fuck? Who are we? America? Allow yourself to be penetrated. The underskin ones are the worst. Yeah, the, like, boils that never pop. Yeah. I hate them so much. I get them every once in a while, and they're just like, I think it's forever, though. Like, I know people in their 50s and 60s who still get pimples. I think we're just doomed. <laughs> I think if we have pimples, we have pimples, and it's just life. Cheers to that. Not the pimples. The other good stuff, you know.
compassion, right? I feel like I want to have compassion. I don't feel like that's a weakness. Not saying that any of you implied that, but some people would say like, well, compassion is going to make you waste your life. Is that a waste of my life? Spending quality time with someone I love and used to be in love with and who I care about. Like, you, I've never just stopped caring about someone ever. Like, even though I've gone through a breakup, like, it's always been a breakup because we're just not feeling it anymore. But you still care that that human is okay on some level or not. You know what I mean? At least I do. Maybe I'm too much of a sap. Hi, David. How are you, love? I still, like, in my heart, I'm like, I hope they're okay. Just because they weren't right for me doesn't mean they were bad. It's just not right for me. You know what I mean? Anyone heard of the Netflix show coming out this month called Midnight Club? No, what is, what's it about? Is it a show or a movie? Like a series? I don't know. I know. Aren't the beats sick? This is Closey again. Did you know that? If you didn't know, David, I have the link. I'll throw it in chat for those. I, I, am, I never want anyone to think I'm trying to take someone's music like it's mine. This is absolutely someone else mixing music, and they're so incredible, and their name is Closey. Please follow them. I would never break up with you guys. Oh, my God. I've had nightmares, though, where my channel disappears and I don't know what to do. Those are nightmares. Compassion is for everyone unless you're a total shithead. Yeah, it's like compassion unless you prove you don't deserve it. And then, sure, I won't waste my time on you. I'm still at a dopamine. I can't leave my seat. Getting so much work done today. I mean, at least you're getting work done? <laughs> Me Googling what compassion means? Um, I don't know the, like, def like, the fucking Webster's definition of it, but my understanding of compassion is is helping someone without expectation of recourse. And it's not because they're your brother, sister, mother. It's not because of some responsibility. It's just because you can. Because you feel it's the right thing to do and it's kind. Like, that's a compassionate thing to do, I would, right? Should I look up, like, the Websters? Oh, face wash suggestions? I mean, do you have any, like, face issues already? Like, do you have sensitive skin or common breakouts or anything like that? Because, yeah, but different, different strokes for different folks. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's when you're passionate for, like a, a, like, a, like, a really big load. Yeah, something like that. A bit sensitive. Um, do you wear makeup or, like, waterproof makeup or anything like that? Or do you wear sunscreen? It might be my compassion as well. Same, though. It, it gets sticky. It's all over everything, to be honest. Everything in my life is, is a little tainted by my compassions. Brutes. Different loops for different boobs. Word. Like, to each their own. <gasps> is that what you call a bong? Um, yeah, there's many different types of bongs in the world. This is what we would call a beaker bong, because it looks like a beaker. Like a, you know, like a beaker out of a laboratory. As like a little beaker bong. I think it's like, I think it's about a foot. I think it's about 12 inches, maybe 11 inches tall. I don't know. This gives me no reference. It's like 10 or 11. It's like 11 or tw it's about a foot-ish. I don't know. A quart, a third of a meter. <coughs> it's about 12 inches. That's what he said. Ah! Uh Door closes. Ah! Engine starts. Ah! That's my response to the 12-inch cock. Sorry, I had to respond. Theatrically. Makeup and sunscreen. I do use cold cream to remove my makeup or just straight-up water and a makeup eraser. Awesome. Cold cream is actually a really good option. I'm a very big fan of oil cleansers because they don't strip your skin and make your skin all tight and sick. Because, like... I talked about this a couple days ago, Uki. Tell me if I'm repeating myself. But basically, like, the more oil you strip from your skin, the more you have to replace pretty quickly. Otherwise, your body overproduces sebum. And sebum is, is pimple bacteria food. It's pimple bacteria buffet. So if you're using a very, very harsh cleanser that leaves your skin, like, really tight, you know, like soap does, some, you know, like a bar of soap, leaves your skin, like, feeling like you had a fucking facelift, your body... Because it doesn't want your skin to rip. That's why we have like lots of collagen and elastin and fat in our cheeks and stuff. So our body, so our face can move and our jaw moves up and down. Your body will, all of your pores will start to just seep sebum really quickly. I'm sure you guys have all experienced this. You take a shower, a couple hours later, look in the mirror. 
and you can see the little grease dots all over your nose or your cheeks, wherever your pores are. You can see them already developing. And you're like, oh, shit, I need a blotting pad. Don't. You got to moisturize before it happens. So, like, what I do is I do a double cleanse at nighttime because I, too, wear, like, I wear, like, waterproof mascara. That's usually it. Sometimes some eyeliner. But anytime you wear I any kind of, um like, sunscreen or makeup that doesn't just come off with water, I highly suggest a double cleanse. And it's not as difficult as it sounds. It's literally with a dry face, squeeze cleanser in your hand, and just start fucking massaging that thick-ass shit into your skin and get it on your on your makeup scrub all your makeup off rinse your face and then a little pea-sized bit of the same cleanser or another one if you like to use different active ingredients in there and two different cleansers you can do that too i use the same cleanser because i'm lazy go over it again because a lot of a lot of cleansers that are breaking down the makeup and stuff the oil-based cleansers they don't get it off your skin they get it off your eyelashes and stuff but a lot of the times the makeup because you're doing this it can get rubbed into other pores that you've just cleaned out and in, it's not coming off all the way. And that's just with one cleanse unless you're using something super hardcore. So like if you use cold cream, using a little bit of cold cream to get your makeup off and shit, rinse it off with warm water and then go in with a cleanser to get the rest of it off. It just makes sure you're, you're not leaving anything behind because makeup and that's just because makeup these days is so hardcore. Makeup and sunscreen, sunscreen like it has a lot of um, mineral stuff in it. I don't know the I don't know like the science of it, but it has a lot of stuff that sticks to the skin and doesn't come off just from the sun doesn't make it go away, you know. And we're always reapplying a sunscreen, so it's layering. The zinc, I think it is, you have to get off with cleanser. So if you're wearing sunscreen, you need to wash your face. In the morning, because I wash my face really well at nighttime and then put on like lotion or whatever, I just rinse my face with water. I don't cleanse in the morning unless for some reason, like you know, if you use like hardcore eyeliner or hardcore mascara, you wash your face at night and the next morning you have like lines under your eyes because it was so hardcore. You had to cry it out overnight. I'm not the only one. I know we've all been there. Then I'll wash my face again with cleanser because then I'm like, damn, that was some fucking some shit. I mean, it's built to fucking last, man. Shit's wild. But that's what I do. Um, The products I use are Drunk Elephant is the one I use to remove my makeup. Like I, I do the double cleanse with that one um it's called god it's like the glyc it's the it's like a white squeezy bottle with a orange cap and i think it's like the glycolic something cleanser it's actually about time for us to take a break if you want to grab it i can go grab it on my break real quick but i i really like um drunk elephant they just have a they tout themselves as clean we all know what the fuck that means it's all bullshit it doesn't mean anything arsenic is clean um, but they do have a lot of organic ingredients, not organic. They have a lot of natural ingredients and they don't tend to add shit that doesn't need to be there. Kiehl's is what I use for all my moisturizers. I love Kiehl's. It's just like, it's been around since I was a kid. I've, I've used it forever and it still works. They're another one where they don't add superfluous ingredients like aromatic oils or mint or shit that's going to make you break out just for smells. You know what I mean? Oh, I love Kiehl's. I fucking love Kiehl's. Oh, yeah. Kiehl's has been around forever. I think it's it was, like, created in London originally, but it's been in the States for ages. My mom used it when I was a kid. I remember her using Kiehl's. I love me some Kiehl's. The Kiehl's, what is it? The huge white pot. It's the Kiehl's, like, ultra face cream with SPF 35. That's what I slather all over my face and neck every single day because it's everything. The magic white pot. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks of it that way. It's the magic white pot. It's everything. And it has never made me break out. It doesn't pill with any other brand. Like pilling, you know, when you put on two different skin products and it starts like rubber cement rolling up on your skin and you're like, what the fuck? It has never done that. I don't know what it is, man. They're just basic and nice. Oh, and change your pillowcases. Yes. That's a huge, like if you're ever looking for, if you, Uki, for real, like I change my pillowcases at least once a week. I wash the fuck out of my pillowcases on the sanitary cycle on the wash machine because at nighttime we like sweat and then anything that was left in our pores sweats out into the pillowcases and all the oils from your hair are getting into your pillowcase and you're just like all up in that pillowcase all night long. Yeah. So if any of you have like acne on one side of your face and you can't figure out why, is it the side of your face you sleep on? When's the last time you change your sheets? been there done that wash your face before bed brush your teeth before bed wash your hands before bed and fucking change your pillowcases once a week 
It also deters bed bugs because bed bugs feed off dead skin buildup in your mattress. You're welcome. <laughs> flip your. I flip my pillow every night, no matter what. You got to get to the cool side, Eliza. You know that. It's always the side down, by the way, if you're wondering. And drinking water, obviously. Hydrated skin is always going to look better than not than dehydrated skin. <clears throat> always. You got to have the cool side of the pillow. Always. And it's always down. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Can you imagine, Robo? You know, I've tried pillows. I bought pillows before that they're like, they stay cool no matter what. And they're warm in the winter. No, they're not. It's just a fucking pillow. Bullshit. There's still a cold side and it's down. I use the Olay Beauty Fluid for lotion. My grandma used it. My mom used it. Hell yeah. That's, I use the shit for my mom, for, that my mom uses for her skin and my aunts because it doesn't break them out. And they all look relatively fucking good for their age. Uh, you know, plastic surgery aside. Robo, seriously, like, can we start a Kickstarter for that? Because I'm into it. Can it just always be cold? Who wants a hot pillow? Like, unless it's behind my neck and I'm on the couch watching a movie, I don't want to sleep on a hot pillow. No, I just want it cold all the time. Just like levels of cold. <laughs> Stays cool in the summer. Laughs in Living Furnace. Exactly. Laughs in Colorado. <laughs> I love my current pillow, too. It's super comfortable, but no matter what, I always I just get hot. I turn into a sun at nighttime for some reason, and I radiate heat. <laughs> I'm a monster at night. I don't know why. I'm broken. What did you say to Booby? He's going off right now. Booby, what did you say to him? I haven't done anything, but I'm about to take a break. I'm kidding. Is it time? Oh, uh, it might be time for Baby Shark. Baby Shark. Baby Shark. I have a neighbor who is also neuro neurodivergent and lives with her mother, but he's like in his 50s and violent. And likes to scream racist slurs in the street. And I, yep, just not excusing any of that. So what I do is I stand on the other side of my fence because I'm across the street. And I, I play Baby Shark out of my phone as loud as possible. It will literally shut down any party or any screaming crazy person in the road. Spiffy, thank you for the resub. Hold on, I got to read this. I have news. I'm now in a polycule. I'm in a relationship with my best friend. We've known each other and have been friends for six years. I want you to know how much of an impact you've had on my life. Oh. <gasps> But I don't know what a polycule is. You've helped me to become the man that I am. That she loves. Stop. Don't make me cry. You're so absolutely amazing, loving, caring, supportive, and just want the best for people. I do. I don't know if you know you have the effect you have on our lives. We wouldn't be the class holes. I don't know. Thank you. That was really nice. That was Ezekiel. <laughs> Thank you. That was dumb kind of you. She's poly and is in a relationship with a couple. Oh, and that's a polycule. I've never, you taught me a new term. I've never heard polycule before. Seriously. That's really cool. I, I love learning about the different thruple duple quadruple nipples in the world you know what i mean i love learning about it it's so much fun sexuality is so fucking it's like the tree of life but like more broad with the roots it's so fucking cool these days you taught me something new thank you and thank you for the wonderful compliment it's amazing she's a big reason i'm also comfortable with my mm. are you still talking about me that's not with it we need to take a break <laughs> I thought you was talking about your wife, you trickster. You're right. Anna is amazing. She's a big reason I'm also comfortable with being myself. I've learned I'm queer, demi-pansexual, because Anna's so fucking cool. I agree. <laughs> I just had to fix it for my own brain. It's fine. I have a really hard time taking compliments, but thank you very much for your kind words. I'm just going to cry and scream into the nether. Man, Katie sucks. I mean, I love her. <laughs> it's 
Same though. Polycule, it sounds like a Pokemon. It sounds like a math equation. Polycule. Like a anagram. I don't know. Polycule. It sounds like something in math. But I, poly, I mean, it, it does have the Latin roots for stuff. Okay, so polycule, all the people linked through their relationship, usually romantic and or sexual, to one or more members of a polyamorous group. That's really cool. I mean, it's like, you're just like a cool, like, uh, she's your connection. Yeah, I like that. I love that term. That's kind of, it's kind of like romantic in like a Shakespearean way. I kind of like it a lot. All right, for real, we need to take a break because otherwise ads are going to run and I hate that shit. We, we're like 30 minutes past the point of no return. So quick break, stand up. Piss your pants, wash your hands, piss mittens always, pee after sex and self-loving, get vaxxed if you can. I'll be back in a few. Bill's over here sucking my inner elbow. Look at those teeth. Look at those pretty teeth. That's my girl. How? <laughs> just mom, stop. Stop. You're such a sweet girl. You'd let me do anything. I just don't like torturing you that long. She's too sweet. She'd let me do anything to her, but it feels mean. <laughs> <laughs> she has a rubber nose and it's my favorite all right break time i'll be right back sorry i had to play with my dog for <sighs> but i got it because i love you and i like talking about skincare it's you on my shirt but it's for everybody everybody should care about their skin for real um i just grabbed the cleansers out of the bathroom so i could show you isn't theirs the shit i've been using theirs since i was in high school and i still swear by this shit you don't have to use a toner i don't think they're like the end all be all of skincare but if you're someone like me where you feel like the moment you get out of the shower your skin starts getting tight because you just like you're still drying your body off you know you don't have you haven't thought to put lotion on your face yet i literally before i even start drying my body off i splash this shit all over my face and it's like a pre-moisturizer that just keeps your face kind of ready for moisturizer and not, it doesn't start it just getting all tight and dry immediately. Like, I live in the desert, you know. You know, Uki. It's fucking dry. So this shit, I also use a, a serum, I guess you would call it, or a, an essence, which I guess is just a mildly thicker toner. <clears throat> Only when my face is super fucking dry. Like, like in the wintertime, when it's dry as fuck and there's no moisture in the air and I really, really need it. I do toner first, and then I splash some of this shit on. It's, it's expensive. This is like a $60 bottle, but it literally lasts for years and years. I've been using the same bottle for quite some time. And you never put it in contact with your skin. You just, like, pour a little bit. It literally is like magic potion. But it's... Can you see? I don't know if it picks up on camera. It's just, like, mildly more syrupy. And, like, you can kind of feel there's, like, some emollients in it. You know what I mean? That are kind of have that silky feeling. Yeah, it helps you use way less lotion. Have you ever, like gone to put lotion on your body and you feel like you put a huge clump on your leg and it's just gone you can't even make it to the other side of your calf this kind of like keeps your skin ready to absorb that lotion and take it on as opposed to just sitting on top of your skin which isn't a bad thing there are lotions that literally are built to create what's called a water barrier like sit on top of your skin and hold in your own moisture again if you live in a really dry windy climate that's a good idea to have those um but they're not necessary but yeah i start with those two Th those are just after I wash my face. But these are the cleansers I was talking about. That shit feels so good. I just put it all over my hands and it feels nice. It doesn't have a scent, by the way. I don't use shit with added scent. Everything has a mild scent because it is a thing. Everything smells. Like, no matter what. But I don't use anything with added scents in it. Because I just don't want to risk my skin breaking out. Like, that's the worst. I hate it so much. It annoys the fuck out of me. But uh, this is the one I do double cleanse with. Hopefully it's so fucking bleached out and white because of the light. Put a little shadow on it, maybe. It's called the the best number nine jelly cleanser. Cantaloupe glycerin. I don't fucking know what that means, but this is the one, the Drunk Elephant one. And everything I've had by Drunk Elephant's been pretty dope. I like I like their stuff. It can be a little expensive, but it does last forever. I'm I'm into. I don't want to buy a product all the time that's cheap. I'd rather buy a product where you're using a lot less product and you're not buying it often. I don't like to shop and I hate spending money. And this is, I mean, this is over. I think I've had this for almost a year. I've had this for a while. It, you just use so little and it works. It's very like dense. It's clear, but it's like a gel almost. It's like a gel cleanser. It is. It's a, it's a glycerin cleanser, but it's really good for taking off waterproof makeup. But the trick is, and I know it's super counterintuitive, but you scrub it on your face without wetting your face first. 
I know. I don't think it's it, it might not work for you. It, it might be super uncomfortable and you might hate it. But I swear it really helps with getting the makeup off your face if you don't splash your face with water first. Yep, it's this. It's similar. I do it with cold cream, too. If I'm wearing like like if I wear more than mascara, I do cold cream. But if it's just mascara, I just do this shit because it melts it off pretty easy. But anything more than that, yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm big ponds. I still use fucking ponds cold cream, just like my Nana, the original. And then I have a cleanser in the shower that I use because, like, after you wash your hair and put all that conditioner in your hair and all the whatever you're putting in your hair, it can get on your face and your skin, and it's not meant for your skin. Like a lot of that is oils and shit and essential oils that don't necessarily harm your scalp at all. They're just meant to go on the ends of your hair, like conditioner. But it can get on your face. So the last thing I do in the shower, no matter what, is I wash my face with this. It's just like a really light nothing cleanser, but it just gets that shit off my skin. So I don't have, you know, conditioner or shampoo or any other leftover whatever on my face that's going to make me break out. Um, it's the it's by Youth to the People, I think is the brand. It's the Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. Goddamn, the names are just so excessive these days. It's just a very, it's nothing. Clean. It's like a mild, like, I didn't wear any makeup today. I'm just getting sweat and grime off like that kind of a cleanser it looks like that it's almost it's disgusting it's so sticky because it was in the shower it's disgusting <laughs> but um yeah those are the ones i use and they're all for sensitive skin i have never considered myself a person with sensitive skin however since using sensitive skin products i know i don't i i have so much less problems with my skin i think they're just a better option for everybody because the only difference between like products for sensitive skin and products that aren't marketed for sensitive skin is the ones that aren't marketed for sensitive skin have additives like essential oils which make them smell pretty but essential oils are one of the things that can irritate skin not all the time but sometimes and that's hard to rule out when all your products have an essential oil in them you're like what the fuck is doing it you know i had my, all my brothers had horrible back knee one of my brothers had horrible cystic acne. Joshua had horrible cystic acne. She had to deal with, like, all my siblings have had different acne of some types. So I just have a lot of sympathy. It sucks. Like, we all just want to look in the mirror in the morning and feel okay. Like, that's all we want is to look in the mirror and not have a painful oozing sore. You know what I mean? Um, but I brought out one more product. This is kind of a lug. This is, no, it's definitely luxury. Luxury price, pro price point kind of product. But if you're, any th if you're around my age, you probably grew up with the St. Ives peach scrub. And sometimes you just feel like your face is a little bumpy and you're like, God damn it. I know that peach scrub's terrible for me, but I really want it. Do you ever feel that? Okay. So if you ever want to try up something new, have you tried Tatcha? Tatcha product, products? If you like luxury, you probably have tried some Tatcha. Tatcha. Okay. So this is, so for me, when I say luxury, usually what I mean is the price point you're paying for a brand. I have a hard time. Like, I don't want to say Tatcha is luxury because you're pay I think you're paying for quality. Shit is fucking dank. I'm obsessed with it. It's everything I've tried by them has been, like, so soothing and healing to my skin. I'm just like, what the fuck? This is, this is how you, it's like matcha, but it's Tatcha. Sorry, my light bleaches it out. Tatcha, T-A-T-C-H-A. Um, and I have like their moisturizer and stuff. Everything of theirs is like $60 minimum. That's why I'm like, it's luxury pricing. Everything is dumb expensive. However, it does last a super stupid long time because they actually like, you know, when you buy some products and like you buy this and you're like, oh my God, look at all this product I'm getting. But really it's like to there. Have you ever bought those? You start scooping into it and you're like, oh my God, what the fuck? And it's just like a tank on the bottom of nothing. It's just packaging shit. These are... Everything Tatcha is filled to the fucking brim with product, which is dope, and it lasts forever. But this is one of my favorite things I, I picked up on a whim because I was having one of those days where my skin just felt rough, like bumpy, and I felt like I had peeling skin like from old pimples from a period or something like that for dry skin. I don't know. I just felt, you know, I put on some lotion. And I was like, why does my face not feel smooth? This shit is like the most mild exfoliating cleanser I've ever found. It's not a cleanser to get anything off of your skin. It's something you do after you cleanse to get, to break up like blackheads and you know, that deep, deep hard oil. Cause it is a physical exfoliant to a point. It's made of fermented. I think it's fermented black rice. Like the, I think it's called emperor rice or something like that. It's called the foaming enzyme powder. And it's so weird, but I swear to fuck, I I'm in love with it. I can't stop. But I've never had to buy it again. This is the same one I've had for almost over a year, I think, too. Like, I bought a bunch of skincare last summer, and I still have it. Because they're huge. Like, look, I'm, 
I don't have tiny hands. Like, that's a lot. And you don't use very much. I'll read the back to you. Um, it's the foaming enzyme powder, exfoliating Japanese rice bran. Pour rice bran. That's it. Sorry. Um, it's exfoliating Japanese rice bran. Pour into palms. Mix with water to create a foam. Massage onto the wet face for 15 seconds and avoid eyes. Let me show you how it comes out, though. It's like. It's literally like a gritty, like powder. Can you see that? It's kind of like I'm trying to think. It, it's almost like the. Have you ever played like um. Active yeast. It looks like active yeast, but light green. You know what I mean? And if you ver like just wet your hands, but then sprinkle this all over your hands, get it on both sides and don't make a foam first and just use it on your skin really lightly. It turns into a foam on your skin. But those first few seconds, it's a really finely, finely milled exfoliant that's not enough to break skin open. So it won't pop pimples. You know what I mean? Which is something we don't want to do. Like you don't want to be ripping open lesions in your face if you don't have to. Um, the whole point of why everyone tells us not to pick our face. So it's not hardcore enough to do that. And it slowly just turns into a foam and disappears. And then you just wash it off. But I really like it just makes my skin feel really smooth. But not like I'm literally shaving a layer of flesh off. You know what I mean? Which sometimes with the peach I've scrubbed, like if my skin was really breaking out and I was just like desperate and I was scrubbing it, in, it literally felt like I was like ripping my face off sometimes. I would try, try to get a sample or a smaller version of it to try it out. They have a couple different ones. This is the deep. So I think this one has the most grittiness to it of all of them because that's literally what I was going for. I wasn't looking for a foaming cleanser. I was looking for the actual exfoliating one. And I think I read the reviews or whatever, and this is the one. So this is the deep one. Big fan, man. I don't know how, I mean, the smaller one, um, Uki says 22 bucks. If you got 22 bucks and you feel like your skin just feels like, you know, when, you just feel like you got dead skin and little bumps. I don't know. I feel like that sometimes. Like I've just got, it's like scars or something, a scar tissue buildup or whatever. My skin just doesn't feel like it has an even feel to it. Tatcha. Yeah. Like matcha, but tatcha. Yep. T-A-T-C-H-A. -T -A. Huge fan. And they have a really good moisturizer. I don't think I have any more of it. I think I used it up or it's in my bathroom. But it's in a purple pot that looks just like this. It kind of looks like a purple apple. And it's one of the like thickest most luxurious facial moisturizers I've ever personally used in my life that did not make me feel greasy or leave a sheen it leaves you matte I don't fucking get it I think it's it's not the dewy skin moisturizer it's the purple one I think the green one's the dewy skin moisturizer I can't remember what it's called but it's it's like it almost is so thick it's like heavy like you get a finger of it out and you're like damn like I could fucking like whip it across the room but it only takes so little and it just like is it's like the kind of lotion you would use to slug for the night. You know what I mean? If you've never heard of slugging, it's basically when your skin is so fucking dry, you've gone to the end. Like you probably work outdoors. You work in like construction or something like that. And your skin is exposed to the elements all day and you cannot fight it anymore. What you do is at nighttime, wash the shit out of your face, get all your makeup off, whatever you need to do. And then you literally take like Aquaphor or something like the Tatcha moisturizer that's just like an asininely thick thick, buttery, fucking creamy lotion. And you put it on your face to the point where it's almost like you visible. Like you're not leaving like a layer of white on your face, but you know what I mean? Like you're basically smear a layer evenly across your neck and face and leave it. You don't rub it in. You just leave it all over everything and lay on your back on your pillow and you just let it's it's moisturizing and it's working its actives and doing whatever it needs to do. But it's also trapping in all your natural moisture in your face that's getting sucked out by cold air, dry air, wind whatever your air conditioner your heater everything everything sucks moisture out of there it's pretty crazy but uh yeah that shit is just like but it's expensive i hate i i feel bad sometimes suggesting uh products like that because they real that like tatcha does work but it's pricey it is expensive like it's just it's like investment skincare <laughs> like shit lasts for a long time and it's really good quality and you're not gonna have to buy any so like for instance I'm trying to think, like, these guys, these Thayer's toners, how many do you go through, like, a year, you think, Uki? I go through, like, one every couple of months. Constant. Because it's thin. It's, like, a thin, watery, you know, like, very thin toner. Yeah, probably, like, three or four a year. I would say about the same. But, like, this bitch I've had for over a year, and it's almost still a third full. And that's the serum. So just, like, I think the density difference, you know what I mean? You're using so much less. 
And because I use this and because I use this, I use even less of my lotion. So then that lasts forever. And as long as you're keeping it sanitary and using it with clean hands and shit. What up, Sales? How are you, lover? I was just sharing skincare with friends. How are you doing? How's your flop? How's life? It's true. And then, like, what I, what I consider, like, luxury luxury is when it's not. Like, if you're buying... I can't even think of any. What's what's like a clothing brand that decided like Kim skincare, Kim Kim skin, whatever the fuck that is. That's luxury. It's expensive for what purpose? I haven't seen one good review of that fucking skincare. I feel a little bad for her, not really, but a little bit. But that's ridiculous. I mean, I think it's on par with Tatcha, but it's just crap. Dead? Oh shit. I've been working things since 6 a.m. It's 10 p.m. Oh, honey, you deserve a glass of wine and a sleep time. A glass of wine and a, and a snuggly blanket. <laughs> Maybe some My Neighbor Totoro. <sighs> There's someone brand that's over $100 but doesn't work. Oh, oh, my God. Are you talking about La Mer? Are you talking about La Mer? I've seen, like, two YouTubers talk about how they love La Mer. But I was talking about it the other day, Uki. La Mer's the one, if you guys remember in chat... You get a, a pot of lotion that's not, it's like this big for $260. Oh, look, it's Kiehl's. <laughs> that's a gel moisturizer. If you're feeling oily, it's the shit. I'm not exaggerating. You can look it up. La Mer. $260 for that. Oh, look, mine has the price. This was $18. Which is still kind of pricey for the size, to be honest. But it's travel size. I got it for the airport. Um, <laughs> 200 and what and that's across that's everything everything that and it's just there are only there's only like so fancy you can get with skin ingredients and then you're getting superfluous like you're adding like diamond dust or pearl dust and claiming magic things what the fuck no zach doesn't do shit to his face he's just a man with perfect skin and i hate him he gets a pimple like once every six months and bitches about it and that's it nope I mean, he washes his face in the morning and brushes his teeth and shit, but he doesn't use, like, cleanser or anything. Nope, he's like a splash. Brush his hair, brush his beard. Get good to go. Yeah, he's an ass. <laughs> First thing that comes up on Google for La Mer is a $2,545 lotion. What? Good. C-Town, you should take care of your feet. Dude, I soak my feet sometimes. Sometimes what I'll do is uh, I'll fill up my bathtub, like, a little bit. And sit on the edge and I'll soak my feet, but I'll shave my legs at the same time. Think about multitasking. I know you probably don't shave your legs, but like that's what I'll do because I get bored. But put a bunch of Epsom salts in there or whatever. And then I'll put up my iPad, put a movie on. And I'll just like take a ridiculously long time shaving my legs while I soak my feet. Because it feel, like after a long walk, when you beat the fuck out of your feet, it really feels nice on the muscles and tendons. 16.5 ounces. What in the sin? Why? Am I not rich enough to load the website? <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. That needs to be filled with 100% THC and dinner or show. Cunt, I've said the exact same thing. I was like, I can get 500 milligrams of THC lotion for 60 bucks. Like, there's no fucking way you can get better than that. Like, what have you done? Me, yep, their miracle broth. That's their, I'm not even kidding you guys. This brand, La Mer, they, that's their like, their selling point is all their, all their lotions and whatever contain the miracle broth, which is what they call their like 52 spices and whatever's <laughs> oils and spices, whatever the fuck KFC calls it. That's what they call it. It's wild. I just wanted to show you one of them because I'm not, it's, it sounds like you're exact. I'm exaggerating. I'm not. They are that expensive. It's stupid. Uh, creme de la mer. Okay, click it. Yeah, mine. I had to go to the fucking homepage too and like click through it. The website. I'm not rich enough for this. They have Walmart brand chicken broth, <laughs> dude. I'm saying, Sea Town skincare is ridiculous. Oh my fuck! Wait, how many ounces was that little blue thing? So this is about one fluid ounce. It's 0.9 fluid ounces. And this was $18. For two ounces of the creme de la mer, whatever the fuck this fucking cake frosting is, I'm not shitting you. It's $380. I way under hit it. I thought it was $260. they are just like, like 
look at the look look at all the proof. Like how do she doesn't use this shit? Models can't afford this. Three hundred and eighty dollars per two ounces. What even? One ounce? Okay, so it's literally ten times the price as the Keels. And Keels, by the way, is has been around since 1851 and is like from London where they care what's in things. <laughs> I hate to say that, but for real, like you can hate on the UK all you want. Please don't. I have friends there. But for real, the UK actually has stipulations as to what ingredients you can put in skincare. Whereas in the US, we're like, did it kill bunnies? Okay, keep it. It's kind of insane. I have to alter the music because it's like kind of a little like. It's fine. It's almost over. Change, you stupid bitch. Thank you. <gasps> Sierska, thank you so much for summoning the class, keeping the class alive, and giving it an anus swings. How are you, love? Good afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, UK, you can't test on animals. And in the UK, like, they actually, like, there are certain items that are very, very prevalent in the US that you can't even sell in the UK because the, the ingredients are so dangerous. So I trust things coming from them more than the US. It's not the best place in the world. I use a lot of Korean skincare too, but for real. <laughs> like, you, the US don't give a fuck. Have you gotten in trouble for that ingredient? Throw it in. <gasps> yes, let's smoke some pot about it. How was your shower? I actually have a whole bowl packed. It's perfect. Dude, my weed has turned my water brown. That is disgusting. It's yellow in real life. It doesn't look that bad. IRL, actually, it really doesn't look that bad, IRL. It honestly looks like a way overhydrated pee. <laughs> Tea tree salts? Ooh, yeah, I, I do it simple, too. I do, I usually get, like, um, I don't know the brand, but it's, like, just the bag of Epsom salt, and it usually says, like, coconut oil and epsom salt or lavender or whatever it's just like it literally looks i think it's like medical grade or whatever i don't fucking know but it's nice it just it softens up your skin and your toenails so you don't get ingrown toenails easier the salt is really good at like killing funguses killing foot funguses and stuff like that so if you have if you think you have foot funguses doing a nice foot soak in a highly saline solution can be helpful it's not the be all end all but it can be helpful Skin, how expensive is it, Uki? Just comparably. I don't know the exact prices, but it's wild. Cheers, Viata. That's a lot in one day. Is it midterms? Jesus Christ. Can't be midterms already. That's too much. My brain would have melted. Oh, alchemy. Um, bless your heart. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> Please follow my friend Alchemy. She's doing great. <laughs> Alk just said, I, okay, I said I didn't feel good, so Colin went and got me a banana split, and I just, Blue on it to to cool it down. Did it work? <laughs> You're so pretty. <laughs> <coughs> That's beautiful. Oh, it's almost midterms. These were obnoxiously. That is asininely. Like that's too much, man. Ugh. It's like your professors got together and they were like, how can we make life suck? That's midterms were always bad for me. I mean, just finals and midterms, like having to contain that much information. Like sometimes I would literally binge studying the night before a certain test because I had so many tests the day before. Like even if I tried studying for all of them, I wouldn't have retained anything for the one I wasn't taking yet because I was in such like drive mode. Ice cream to fire had to blow it. OK, I have to tell you, I had a moment like that last night. Not not. You know, yeah. So we went to the, uh, after, after the RP last night, we went to the thrift store for our, like, Alice in Wonderland escape room thing we're doing to try to put together some outfits. And we were there for, like, an hour. It wasn't too long. But, like, I was just walking around with my backpack, you know, picking clothes, whatever. 
and I had my phone in my backpack. And when we got in the car, I was like, oh shit, where? Like, I kind of had a moment of like, where is my phone? I haven't seen it in a while. Oh, it's in my backpack. Cool. I pull it out and I opened it and almost said out loud, I didn't say it out loud, but I almost said out loud, I should text the kids. We're on our way. And then I realized the kids are dogs and I should not do this because Zach will never let me live it down ever again. So. I've told all of you instead. Sometimes brains, brains are why. <laughs> right? <laughs> brains are why. Why are air? Oh, so now we can't let you live it down. Well, I mean, you guys arguably would be less mean. It's fine. Wait, the light bulb in the office light is dying, so it was like a rave in here? Oh, bless. Now I'm sitting in the dark because it was driving me insane. We used to do that at the hospital all the time. I'd sit in the dark before I dealt with, like, a flickering fluorescent light. Fuck that. No! I love you too, Rod. Thank you. Thank you for still being my friend. <laughs> that would imply the dogs have a phone. Do they, do they have a phone, Katie? No. That would be nonsense. <laughs> Allow yourself to be penetrated. <laughs> Imagine. What would they say? <laughs> mom, 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 be the most boring text message ever. <laughs> My dogs need no other way to communicate with me. They're very verbal. They're on the point of being huskies. We're fine. They talk all the time. They talk plenty for me. It doesn't make sense, but it's plenty. <laughs> Welcome back, Schmiff. How are you? Text from a dog? Wait, real ones? Mom, mama, mommy, mother, mommy, mom, 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 what? I love you. Fifteen minutes later, mom, 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 that'd be it. Allow yourself to be penetrated. Be a blissful penetrating. Did Katie just turn into Crazy Frog? Maybe. Don't judge me. Text from dog is a real thing. I bought you a little hat. To eat? To wear. It's adorable. To eat? To wear. To eat? To wear. To eat? To wear. To wear? Yes. In my mouth. Yeah. No, that's too real. All dogs go to heaven. You seem confident. When I put my front paws together, I fall on my face. What does that mean? It means it's anatomically impossible for a dog to pray. And that means? It means we don't have to keep calling God to tell him we're good boys because he already knows. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I will be looking at that. Dude, I can't believe it's... Is that Tumblr? Tumblr still lives? I thought they got shut down because they had like chimos and shit on there or some weirdness. <laughs> Look what I... Oh my God, Anna Geek. Tell me you watched Mad TV, please. Tell me you... you please. Look what I can do. Please, please. Stuart's my hero. Oh yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Stuart is everything. <laughs> Stuart, what does mother say? I don't want to say. Stuart, I don't want to say. Stuart, what does mother say? I don't even remember what mother says anymore. I don't want to say. <laughs> if you didn't watch Mad TV with Stuart, you really missed out on things. Gizmo only says ball life. Oh, my God. I mean, what else matters? I had Stewie repeatedly says mom for my mother's ringtone. Oh, fuck. That's too real. They got rid of all the, like, what can, what is, what is Tumblr consider porn now? Like, basically, like, any erotic story or anything? Because that's where all the good shit was. So if a, dog, a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's mouth and a dog licks its own ass, then a dog's ass cleaner than a human mouth. Dog's mouths aren't cleaner than human mouths, but I wish that was true. They do have a bacteria na native in their saliva that 
kills harmful bacteria, but they still have shit mouths. Don't let your dogs lick your eyes. You can get pink eye. I wouldn't. I was woken up this morning to the sloppy sucking sounds of Trick cleansing his own phallus. I don't want that tongue near my face. <laughs> And kids in the hall, fuck yeah. Man, I miss that shit. Fudgesicles look like frozen poop is what she said. Wait, I love fudgesicles. I feel heartbroken. Everything. If someone posts like nude art, it's actual art with boobs. Oh, so basically it's Twitch now. Male nipples okay? There's a video that got released somewhere on Twitter. I only saw it once of a couple doing Stuart and his mother for Halloween. Oh, I wonder if I can get Zeke to be Stuart for Halloween. I'm writing this down. Hold on. Oh my God. Do you think he'd do it? Because that'd be hilarious makeup. That pale face with like the rosy cheeks. You remember how Stuart like had the childlike? <laughs> Stuart and mother. I just need a wig and glasses. And to get that Midwestern accent down. I'm not too good at that. That's the only place I haven't lived. Oh, you betcha. I ain't got it. I'd have to listen to some of it. I'm writing it down. Hold on. That's too good. God, that's too good. Go to res like that. Shut up. Would anyone get it, though? Probably not. They'd be like, why is that old lady here? Because I'd have, like, my nipple pants. You know how she had, like, the elastic jeans, but they came up to here? You have to do the whole thing. Like, I'd really have to make myself highly unattractive. It'd be great. I wrote down Stuart and Mother. Thank you. That's a fantastic idea. I don't know if you... Yeah, I'm so glad our conversation went here. That's a good idea. If guys could do that, they would never leave the house and the human race would die out. Do you think so? Or do you think we'd hunt you down and use you for semen? I've got a pretty good sniffer. That's true. It is Halloween. I mean, it doesn't... Well, I mean, it doesn't really hit unless we can do the act. That's, the, that's what I mean. Like, Stuart and his mother, it doesn't really hit unless we can do the act, and it doesn't really work at a concert where there's, like, loud music and people screaming. Like, wh when? It's got to be more of a visually get it on the first visual costume for something like that. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, on stream, we can literally, he can say, look what I can do. And I can go, now, Stuart. You know what I mean? You got, it, like, hits with the act. Whereas some couple, like, we could be, like, Beetlejuice and, and Winona Ryder or whatever in the red wedding dress hits on contact like people see it and you don't have to do anything for people to know who you are you know what i mean lydia thank you yeah my brain just tooted went the other way instead of lydia went winona um but you know what i mean like there's some outfits that hit when you see them you don't need explanation but if you have to explain an outfit and you're in like a club or a concert or a loud venue where that's not going to happen it kind of you just it's like an inside joke that you have to annoyingly tell everyone you run into just to be valid <laughs> do you get it do you get it? Oh, you can't hear us? Do you get it? You know what I mean? Like, it's just not, no one wants to do that. No one wants to hear you. It's like having to explain the joke. Or starting a joke with, this one's funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sean, thank you for subbing to the class, keeping the class alive, and giving it any swings for 76 fucking months. That's a long goddamn time. Cheers to that. Khaki shorts and a diaper. And wasn't, didn't he have like suspenders and really tall socks? I feel like he does, but he takes his pants off all the time. So my brain's mixed. Oh my God. Ninja Turtles in April. But like Zeke would have to be April, right? Like, duh. Yep. And the blue flannel. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Obviously, thank you. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure before I was writing it down because, like, I'm not a ginger. So, pff, obviously, that's not happening. Zach usually lets me do, like, last year, what did he let me do? He let me do, like, four, three or four SFX makeup things on him. So, it's good to come up with a couple good ideas. So I have them in the, in the ranks. That'll be a good one. Reminds me of that Key and Peele sketch where one is trying to tell a joke and the other keeps laughing. Yeah. I love Key and Peele. I watch them to go to sleep a lot. 
not because they're boring they're just comforting i've seen key and peele so many like i've seen their show skits over and over and over they just make me laugh but they kind of it's kind of like watching um schitt's creek helps me go to sleep and it's i love that show i've just seen it so many times it's like comforting so if you know zach's playing a game that makes him scream and be violently angry i can put on the show and blare him out and fall asleep and i don't like stay awake for it for some stupid out. reason i'm gay Spiffy, what the fuck? Course, Spiffy tipped five dollars. So to continue, Katie, without you and your support and acceptance of past wrongs that I've communicated here, I really wouldn't be where I am as a person. You have helped me to forgive myself for past abuse. I swear I'm not trying to break you. I don't wanna. <gasps> Happy 420 and cheers to you, Spiffy. You're. I'm glow. I'm literally overwhelmed with joy that your life is at a place where you're happy. I just have such a hard time taking compliments. Thank you so much. Seriously. I feel like I don't do much, but I'm glad we're friends. Happy 420. Chills. Sam and Geek, but I feel like I'm sad. Like, it doesn't underwrite my sadness or anything, but I feel like I'd be more sad if they both didn't still do stuff, but they're both still so active. Like, they're both acting and directing, and st I see them in things, and I see them on TV and stuff all the time, and that gives me a lot of happiness. Because <coughs> even if they don't want to do stuff together anymore, at least I get to see their content. Because, like, um, what was the first one? Get Out? Is get out the first horror flick. Yeah, Peel's, Peel's the one doing the horrors. That movie was fucking incredible. And all of them he's made so far have been phenomenal. Like, for real. And Key has been acting, and he's fucking stupid funny. He was in Parks and Rec. He plays, like... He plays Donna's like sub boyfriend or husband, fiance. It's fucking miraculous. They're great. So they're, it's nice to know that they can still make content separately, but I think they're still friends and they're still like, you know, it was just, it's, it's kind of like Frem said, it ended when it had, it should have, it was good time. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a really big hit. What the fuck is this sales? My noodles just got scared. The existence of the meatball sub implies that there also exists a meatball dom. <laughs> so apt to the conversation, though. <laughs> but where's the grinder on this scale? <laughs> Fuck off. That hurts me on the inside. That's beautiful. Oh, Peel did. Is it on? Can we watch it? Is it like somewhere on YouTube? People can watch it. I think, I think he's done four. They all have like one word names that I just don't remember. I know Get Out and then there's like. I don't remember. I think he's done four. Wait, Dread Pirate. Yeah, like, what happened here? What, what happened there? Why is it so, like, dark and, and gappy? There's no gappiness there. Uh, is this what happens when your balls get split? I don't wanna. I don't wanna say. <laughs> I just made a commitment to myself recently to make sure that people know how important and amazing they are. Good. I think we should normalize that. I think that's why people like a lot of a lot of people are very similar to me. I was gonna say people like me. There are a lot of people who identified with not being able to accept compliments and kindness or shaking it off. 
I 100% agree. I wish if we normalized just being overtly positive and not waiting for something stupid awesome to happen to compliment a friend or just like say, hey, your hair looks dope today or you look cool today. And it doesn't have to be sexual. It's just like being honest and trying to build someone up. Like I know that a compliment can change my day. A stranger stopping and being like, your shoes are dank. Those are sick. Or being like, I get compliments on my tiny backpack all the time. Like it makes my day. It's cool. I don't do it because I'm looking for compliments, but little things like that can really change a person's day. And I think normalizing it would be awesome. Sorry, I'll finish the message, but I agree hard. I know that you aren't good with praise. Fuck! I should finish the message before I speak. <laughs> uh, just know that you're one of the most amazing... Oh, no. I can't read that out loud. <sighs> Amazingly beautiful, loving, caring, special people in the world. That was physically very difficult to say. You're welcome. <laughs> I won't go further because I get you and don't want to break the stream. Just know that without you, this world would never be the same. Allow yourself to be penetrated. Thank you. Look at this cute meatball. <laughs> I'm doing great. I just had to blow my nose. It's fine. You're a nice person. Thank you. <laughs> One of the meatballs, the top one's the bottom. Oh, shit. I just thought those were some ass cheeks that got ripped in half. I don't know, man. <gasps> Cheers, Viata. Hold on. I'm blowing my, I am blowing my nose. Someone made me get y'all in your nasty honesty. Get out of here. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. I'm so terrible at taking compliments. I hope it doesn't come off as insincere. But thank you very much. I do take it, and I'm probably going to tell Zach about it after stream and then cry for two hours about it. Thank you. You make a difference in the world by saying selfless things like that. Just so you know. I agree. Frem. Hundred, hardcore. And it's such a... I don't even know what to do if I was a dude. Like, if I was out, like, presenting male, I have no idea how I would approach it. Because exactly what Frem said was, there's a lot that I say in favor of men, but the immediate assumption that men are being sexually aggressive really stops a lot of normal caring men from saying anything nice. Hundred percent. That's why I try to, like... A lot of people just throughout my streaming career have said things like, Katie, I don't want to come off creepy, but your shirt looks nice today. And I'm like, that doesn't come off creepy to me at all. But I also don't want to be super insensitive if that did make someone uncomfortable, because that might. But to me, that's just, thank you. Like, there's a way to compliment and not be like, your nipples look great in that shirt. You know what I mean? There's ways to say things, but I get it. Like, it's a tight, it's a tight rope, right? I get it, and I sympathize hard. It's hard. I love you, Spish. Spiff. Spish? Spish? My mouth stuck. I love you, and I appreciate you. You guys are dope. I'm not going to cry. You're going to cry. Hi, Phil Wynn. How are you, love? Uh. Okay, I opened sales link. Hold up. So my grandmother just told me a joke. Sick. Why do women wear panties with flowers on them? I don't know, because flowers are pretty cool. In loving memory of all the faces that were buried there. I was like, oh my god, grandma, no. Grandma, yes. Wait, I got it. If you're more like me and all you do is wear black panties because black silk looks better than everything, you wear black in mourning of all the faces buried there. Boom. I switched it around for those of us who don't have floral panties. Hey-oh! You're welcome. 
your nipples look amazing in that shirt. Imagine. I mean, I'm saying, like, there are ways. There's not a lot I say in favor of men. Most of what I said is about the shittiness of men is super true. But there are not a lot of men with good intentions who get caught in the crossfire. I agree. I agree. And it makes, I think it kind of, like, accentuates the problem because then, like, if someone who is genuinely just trying to be nice and say a compliment, not not trying to be creepy or whatever you define as creepy or whatever, and they get, it gets assumed that way and they get attacked verbally or whatever, then they're never going to do it again. So it creates a culture of, like, we can't be nice to each other for fear someone might be doing it the wrong way or someone taking it the wrong way however you want to put that you know what i mean <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> my grandma was very lewd oh yes your grandfather was a stallion yeah she used to say things like that a lot mm -hmm. she was she was lewd like she didn't have graphic stories about my grandfather or anything like that but like i remember one time millie was like eating cookie crumbs from between her legs my nana was like sitting on a recliner with her legs out and she had just had a bunch of cookies and there were cookie crumbs everywhere and millie my pug was like hoovering up cookie crumbs and i was sitting on the couch uh like one little one little end table away from my nana and we were both looking at the tv and it was some game show was on and she just turns to me cold stare and goes millie likes my pussy Just that kind of shit would happen when no one else was home. No one believes me these things happen because I would just go and hang out with my Nana. She was fucking hilarious. I'd make her dinner once a week and go chill. And she, like, I can't remember the other one. She said cunt to me one time, and I'm trying to think of why. God, I don't remember what it was. She just, every once in a while, just, and these were in her old, like, her late 80s when she was pretty much just in a recliner all the time, chilling, watching TV, and enjoying her late years. And, man, the shit that would slide out of her mouth sometimes, you'd just be like, oh, no one's going to believe me you said that one. So that's just, you're, we're, we're going to die with that together, aren't we, Nana? Sick. Sales, what the fuck? <gasps> Sombrero. More Brero. All Brero, bitch. Dude, I'm going to use that. That looks like a penis. I'm going to use that from now on. We're going all Brero, motherfucker. Humor keeps them young. Yes. Honestly, like, humor is what led me to understand how clever and smart my Nana was. She was a smart bitch. She read constantly. She watched all sorts of news from all sorts of sources until her late years. She got a little crazy for Fox, but I blame that on the dementia. <laughs> Keep grandma away from the peanut butter with the dog around. Nah, she wasn't a huge peanut butter fan, believe it or not. Men are also not socialized to be nurturing or even how to touch in a non-sexual way outside of very specific, often violent circumstances. Toxic masculinity is a bitch. 100%. And even just up until recently, I mean, at what, what year do you think? Or when did we finally say it's, it's pretty much universally, we're all going to agree, it's not okay to use gay as a negative? Because my entire childhood, up until much of college, like middle of college, Everything in the world, if you were feminine, if any guy was, showed an emotion, wore a color that wasn't masculine, blah, 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 it was gay. Everything. It was constant. So it was like, I mean, it was like a negative in all fucking ways. We didn't even know what the fuck we were saying, but I'm sure that crushed a lot of human beings. Just that verbiage being used as a negative, it's just horrible. But I think a lot of that, like, it was like, how come I can't just be sensitive? Why do people have to come at me? And being gay, like, you, if you weren't gay, like, it was such a big insult. You didn't want to be called gay, God forbid. Now we're like, fucking fuck it. I take it in the butt. Suck my dick. Whatever. You're just jealous I get some. I don't know. Our ch children seem a lot more open to not, to, to not hating just right away these days. But maybe I'm just more open to it. What the fuck? One for Rod. Oh. I don't want to see Rod's wires ever. If that's anything, holy shit. <laughs> when people try to hug me, my skin crawls a bit. Really? Like in a bad way? I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of females, Myron. I feel that hard. I have, a, I have an inherent distrust of women that I've gone to lots of therapy to try to get over. Because it. I've basically like had maybe five friends that are of the female variety in my life, like close, tight friends from work or whatever. 
I have inherent distrust issues and fear and like I kind of have chauvinistic in instincts towards women like I don't trust witches <laughs> but that's I I've had to like step back and be like that's just the ones you were raised by that's not every human in the world you can't generalize personal experience although that's I mean that's what instinct is there for is to protect you learn one thing keep keep responding to that one thing the same way regardless of who's doing it and you survive whatever but I'm not running from a Tyrannosaurus Rex anymore like I don't need to treat every woman like they're a distrustful piece of shit and thankfully due to lots of hours of therapy and reading different books I have managed to have a lot more female relationships in my life that I'm close with which is dope and I don't think they're like wanting something or using me or so on and so forth which was always before like what do you want because I was kind of taught, like, you're only, you're only as valuable as you are useful. But if you're useless, you're left alone, bitch. I was bullied by a lot of girls growing up, so I'm working really hard to get over that. I feel that. Girls are mean. I had some of the most horrible things I've ever heard come out of a human mouth said to me by toddlers when I was a child. Not toddlers, but, you know, like seven, eight-year-olds. Yeah. But you know what? You know what, Phil, when what uh, you've probably heard this, too, or read it somewhere if you're going through the same shit. But a big part for me in just with just bullying in general was that when I was a kid, there was no way I would have been able to pick up on this. But as an adult reflecting on it, like, you know, children aren't mean. Babies aren't mean. It's taught and or learned behavior. So if a kid is a bully to everyone at school, they've learned it somewhere and it's probably their parents. And that's really fucking sad. So instead of like holding these horrible grudges against kids that gave me terrible nicknames and bullied me as a kid and made my life hell, I have a lot of pity instead, which is a move in the right direction. It's like towards me forgiving them, forgiving me hangups about my own body that I did to myself. Like they're just repeating probably what their parents said to them. Or what their parents said to each other. Like it's always something happening in the home. It's a learned behavior. And that's helped a lot of my personal healing. Knowing that there's not malicious children. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of a lot of my life. I've, I've never wanted kids. But I used to say I fucking hate kids. I used to say that all the time. I hate kids. Get them away from me. Babies crying were just like, like needles in my ears. Like stop. And it took one child psychology class in college. Not even the whole class. Like a couple weeks of it. And I remember I came home from class. I like walked home from class, called my mom. And I was like, mom, I don't hate babies. I hate parents. What? Wild. And my mom was like, mm-hmm. So you're going to give me grandkids? And I was like, absolutely not. Because then I'd be a parent. Fuck, I got enough self-loathing going on in this box, bitch. Allow yourself to be penetrated. Sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a huge realization, though. And ever since then, like, I love kids. I actually really identify with children. Like, they have a curious, weird, creative, dumb ADHD brain naturally as kids. It doesn't mean they're ADHD. But I, ident I can feed. I can, like, I can tune into that. I love kids. I don't want any, but I love them. It's parents that turn kids into monsters. <laughs> Women in my family are vicious. They're gossip queens obsessed with outward appearance. They all compete with each other. I feel like we're related. <laughs> we have to be. And pit their kids against each other and say things like, oh, my daughter's doing theater. Well, my, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just a bragging. You're just a bragging point. You ever feel like that? You ever feel like you're actually on a list? Like, instead of having a bunch of pictures in your mom's, like, wallet that flips out, it's like, this kid went to this college and has this degree and this degree. This kid went to this college and this. I wonder sometimes. I don't know. It's interesting. <gasps> Take your, yes. Did you take your joy today? Good advice, motherfucker. Never forget to take your joy, and I guarantee your day will go as smooth as velvet. But yeah, I totally feel that, Uki. Like, that's my family, my mom's side at least, is a lot of women, and they all had kids, and they would, like, they would never pit the kids against each other. We were all kind of spread out, so it wasn't, we weren't close enough in age to really give a fuck. But they would, it's the, you know, well, this is what so-and-so did, and this is where so-and-so went to school, and this is what blah, 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 blah. So how's, how's your son doing? Like that condescending, like, I'm here to assist because mine are perfect kind of shit. I hate it. It's gross and it's shallow, but I mean, I remember it very clearly. And it's just like, it's weird because like, those are your relatives. 
And those, at least for me, those were like my mom's sisters and shit. It was always bizarre to me because I was like, why, why are you so mean to them? Why are you all on the same team? Like my sister, Sarah and I, I don't think a thing could break Sarah and I up for the life of us. Like we are bonded in soul and mind and body in every way. But something happened where my mom and her sisters never bonded ever. They just kind of stayed. They hate each other and they always have. It's so weird. Oh, boo. Glad you, why is it failing? I thought T-Mobile had pretty good fucking service. Boo. Wait, why do cows wear bells? Because their horns don't work. Sir, whose tail is you digging in with that? How dare you? That was fantastic. I'm taking that. Can we generalize that people think that thinking they're perfect parents are usually fuck? I've never met a parent that thinks they're perfect, to be honest. Where are they? Who, where have you found these people? Brittany, was it in the hospital? <laughs> I've never met one. Honestly, like all my friend, like Scott, for instance, did you watch the hot, the hot sauce challenge we did for charity where my ulcer freaked out and I like cried on the side of the camera for like three hours? Like Scott was saying, like his biggest insecurity, the thing he's most afraid of is not being a good dad. And he is like one of, he is like dad of the century. Like, he is so into his kids, and he so loves his children, and he nurtures passions that they choose and they're really into, and, like, they garden together and all this shit, and, like, Brie is a fucking star-ass mom, badass bitch, shaves her head for charity. What a fucking example for your children. Like, holy shit. Their mother is G.I. Jane. I can't even with it. It's just so badass. Like, they're such cool parents, and they're so in tune to their kids and stuff, but they're the ones where you hear the, they're terrified. They're like, I think I'm too, I'm too much or I'm not enough or I'm not, you know, doing enough things at home with them or I'm like never there or I'm too much there. Like, but I see their kids and I see them. I watch it. Like there's their kids are such, you would never guess how old their kids are. They are so much higher functioning. Like they are so much more, you know, maturity is not intelligence, but they talk like they're reading books I read. You know what I mean? But they're like, we, you'd never guess. They're so, they're so hyper intelligent. And it's just because he nurtures them reading. Like, they have a reading hour before they go to bed every night. They don't have to, but they lay in bed and be calm, and they can read if they want, but they both love reading because they've always done it. And it's not that reading's the be-all, end-all, but it's given them these minds that are just extraordinary to explore. <laughs> if you like talking to a kid that will literally, like, it's like their brain explodes into imagination cloud. It's so much fun. Luker, what up, love? How are you? At my grandma's funeral, my aunt came up to my mom and said, I'm sorry for the loss of your mother-in-law. What? But oh my God, did you hear about the O'Connell wedding? I don't remember. So I love that. I, I think we're still related. At my grandma's funeral, I'm pretty sure it was right afterwards as we were leaving the church. Because of course my Nana wanted, you know, the whole Catholic shambangle. At the church I was baptized at, which was super weird to go back into. But anyways, uh, when we were leaving, I think one of my aunts, I know which aunt, one of my aunts did do this. I can't remember if it was the day of or the day after, but they went up to my mom and said, where's my money? Like, we hadn't cremated Nana, I don't think, yet. It was wild. What is it? You're Irish, aren't you? Is it the Irish? Is this why people say we're the worst of the whites? What's happening? <gasps> Kelty, no, but I, I, rec I saw it and I made a mental note. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I need to stretch today. I've been actually quite stiff. I've stretched a couple times just on my own. Maybe it's that. I don't know. I've heard multiple times, like multiple people be like, oh, tell me you're not Irish. That's the worst of the whites. And I'm like, I want to argue that, but is it real? <laughs> I think we might be. I'm trying not to be. I'm acknowledging and trying not to be. Not using it as an excuse to be a dick, but you know what I mean. Oh, it feels so good. Thank you, seriously. I did, I saw it, but I was like in the middle of saying something I didn't want to forget. And I was like, oh, you want to stretch, Katie? You want to fucking do that? Just tell him to calm down and realize no matter what kind of parent, you will screw up your kids somehow. Oh, they're well aware. Did you know that Scott, that's what Scott went together, went to school, went together. Scott went to college. He has a bachelor's in education. He went to school to be a teacher. Like he went to school to be a teacher so he could be the best dad he could possibly be. He'll tell you that. It's wild. It's not much of an improvement, to be honest. They're pretty short and snubby. But this helps. What I learned from my uh, 
from my massage therapist was the reason my shoulders caused me so many issues is I live my life forward. So I'm like always gaming or keyboard and mouse or cooking on a counter, but everything is this, this shoulder motion, the Dutch rudder motion basically. And in order to help alleviate all these fucking tight muscles in my neck and stuff, which are amazing since I started getting massage is I have to stretch them the opposite direction. So like pinning them behind my back and laying on them and just like stretching them back or doing this one and holding my hands on my seat. It hurts. Like that's how fucking tight my arms have gotten. It's, I just don't I have bird arms. I run. I don't fucking use them. <laughs> I am a walking T-Rex. Big mouth, fat ass, tiny little arms. <laughs> I actually saw a really funny gif, not a gif, it was like a meme the other day, and it was one T-Rex fucking another T-Rex from, like, doggy style, and the T-Rex that was getting pounded was like, grab my hair, and the one on top was like, I'm trying, with its little arms, like, you know what I'm saying? It was funny. I had a giggle. I had, I identify with the tiny arms. Scott uses experience to babysit Zeke, so I guess it works out well. I mean, they do have really intense talks sometimes. It's very, it's very possible. They, they like, they go out to lunch and have like man days where they like talk and shit. It's cool. I'm glad they do that, honestly. I've, I can't remember the last dude I dated who had like a man friend he was close with and actually did things with Solo. It's kind of weird. Hi, Berserker. How are you, love? I need a massage and a cruise and COVID to be done. Same. Big hard same. Big hard same. Zach and I were looking at leaving and going somewhere for Christmas. Like just a week around Christmas. Going somewhere warm. Does it look like I need your Trek suit? I think not. But I appreciate the offer. I love Maui. If I could get Zach to go, I totally would. He doesn't like hot weather. He thinks Hawaii's hot for some reason. I'm like, it never goes above like 75 in the winter. Shut up. It's great. It's like 75 every fucking day, all day. It's kind of mind numbing, to be honest, but it's great. But he thinks it's hot. Drop that. I'd love, I've been to Maui before. I fucking love, I would, I want to die there. There are Baltimore. They're so peace. It's just peaceful. I love the peacefulness. I've never been to the big islands, though, like the city islands, so not a big fan. Lived in cities. I'm good. (laughs) And yet, see, I'm saying, I've never been to the Bahamas before. I've never been to the Bahamas, like Jamaica, any of those southern islands. I've been to Hawaii twice. I think Hawaii is the only like island I've been to, like tropical island. I've been to Mexico, but I went to Puerto Vallarta and Nueva Vallarta, which is just part of the shoe. I don't think I've been to another island. <laughs> Long Island, maybe. But that's about it. Anything above 70 makes me cranky. As long as there's a breeze, I'm okay. Stagnant anything is terrible weather. I don't want stagnant nothing. Is the Bahamas, I've never, I've never been there. Is it like, isn't it pretty far away? Like the plane flight alone, I feel like would be kind of astronomical. I was thinking more Florida, to be honest. It's a nice beach. I don't hate it. I know everybody makes jokes, but I've been to Florida many times for vacation. It can't be that bad if I can take it. I've been to Rhode Island. Rhode Island's beautiful. Not stayed, but it's gorgeous. I was raised in Maui for 14 years. It's the most temperate state. Is it really? I didn't know that. I had no idea, to be honest. I just always went to Maui because that was, it was a, a friend of mine had a timeshare. So the two times I got to go, we went for like two weeks or something like that, like 12 days. But it was because they just couldn't go that year. So we bought their timeshare from them for the year, which I was totally fine with. So we got to stay in i think it's kihei like the little local part not lahaina we were in kihei like in a little condo that someone just rents out once in a while it was really nice though because you could go grocery shopping at costco get everything you need and then go home and not have to worry about it and it was just so quiet and fucking beautiful fuck it was so quiet (laughs) 
a lot of the Hawaiian natives have been on social media asking people not to visit Hawaii. Hey, I get that. Like, we, um, like, white people fucking straight up, I don't even know if it's called stealing. Like, we definitely stole them. It's worse than stealing. We, like, walked up and they were like, hey, we live here. And we were like, sick, we own this. And they were like, no, don't think so. And we were like, think so. Plop. Navy. I don't know. It's pretty fucked up. Like, I'd respect that. There's a lot of other islands I could visit. I don't want to fuck their islands up, but I do love them. They are beautiful. I respect them. Fly to Miami and cruise to Bahamas. You know I've never been to Miami. <clears throat> That's one of the few places in Florida I've just never gone. East Coast beaches are nice. West Coast beaches can be a bit murky. I agree 100%. I concur. Like, West Coast beaches, I feel like, are really cool for, like, the wildlife. Like, looking for little crabs and looking for, like, what are they called? Tide pools? And, like, sea creatures and stuff. East Coast beaches, sand, smooth, like, lay down beaches. What the fuck sails is this? <laughs> I'm in physical pain. If that isn't, like, the epitome of fucking facepalm. <laughs> what up, darling? How are you, love? <laughs> this is painful. I love West Coast beaches, too. I ain't hating. I honestly, I love both. I don't, I would, I would never want to give up one for the other or vice versa. I love the little creatures and the wildlife, but I love, like, uh, Cocoa Beach is so peaceful. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to tell you where that is, what island that is. If it's even on an island, you don't know what the fuck Cocoa Beach is. Don't go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one goes there because it's not like, it's not the, the clubbing beach scene. It doesn't have a shit ton of bars or anything. It's the more quiet side. But if you like more quiet beach where you can lay by yourself and not be nubbed up against someone else, it's quite peaceful on Cocoa Beach. That's probably my favorite. It's just so quiet. But both, I mean, all of Florida is gorgeous. I... I think there are just unfortunately some very unfortunate humans there right now. But Florida's beautiful. I've never had a bad time there. And the food is fucking. Is it? That's probably why it's so quiet. It's so nice. I like the quiet though. When I'm on vacation, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Because my regular life is plenty chaotic. I'm good. I'm real good on the chaos. Like, But honestly, when I went to um, Clearwater, is that what it's called? It didn't feel chaotic at any in any way, shape, or form. It was still it was more busy, more packed. Like there were definitely more people on the beach, but it was still so chill and relaxed and didn't feel rushed at all. People didn't I didn't feel jostled the way you do like on a California beach or something. <gasps> I love you, Uki. Please be good and have a wonderful day. Don't forget to brush your teeth and eat something delicious and take your joy. Be safe, love. <gasps> Kelty, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Anna Geek, you silly shit. I appreciate you. Annie Geek, you know what's up. Consensuality, emotes, and refresh so you don't have to suffer ads. Yeah, I was talking about how I, like, Zach and I were talking about, like, escaping for Christmas. Like, just around Christmas going somewhere. Because we haven't been on a vacation together in, like, two years. Like, a ever, actually, kind of. And um, people were saying, like, Hawaii and shit. And I was like, I was thinking more like Florida. Like, it's a beautiful tropical beach, but you don't have to pr spend the money on the flight to Hawaii. I'm just cheap, and I've had just as good a time chilling on a beach in Florida. People hate on Florida all the time, and I feel like myself and, like, five Floridians are the only people that are like, hey, stop. <laughs> I've always had such a nice time there. People are very kind and nice and normal. I've never run into anyone that's sitting there like, did you like Trump? Like, most people are just like everywhere else. They don't give a fuck about politics, and they're just trying to get on, getting on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never... I think it's unfortunate. Some very unfortunate humans live in Florida right now and they're giving it a really bad name. Same with like Texas. Like, I don't think Texas is a terrible place. I think what's his fuck is a terrible human who's in charge of a lot of things in Texas right now. You know what I mean? Welcome to the castle. He would, what the hell? What in the shit? Thank you so much for gifting five subs in the channel out of fucking nowhere. You kind of gave me a mini heart attack, but I'm into it. It made my heart go. Thank you. Let me welcome the butt wizards. Stop chat. 
<laughs> Waka Chewbacca, Zatsume, Pipkine, Jedekiah, and Shadow Cats. You're all about Wizards of the Highest Order. Refresh the channel, enjoy your emotes, and thank you for being here to accept these wings upon your anus. Fly forth and be consensual because nothing is sexier. And thank you very, very, very much, E. Wood. Again, one of my favorite usernames I've ever seen in my entire life. Not just because I'm an insanely large Fleetwood Mac fan. I do fucking adore Fleetwood Mac beyond reason. That's not the only reason. It's clever as shit. What's a boost train? Wait. The one... Well, I they're like a year or so ago, they came up with some sort of boost thing where people in your channel can pay to put you at the beginning, at the top of the category. I don't encourage it. I think it's kind of... I don't want your money for that. I'd rather we just hang out and have a good time and you buy yourself a cheeseburger than pay to have me at the top of a category. <laughs> That's just me. Like, thank you. A couple people tried it when it first came out. Like, we tried it to see what it was like. And I'm very, very grateful. But it was, it just feels weird. Like, I, I'd rather y'all spend your money on something worthwhile than false whatever. I don't know. Giving Twitch money to put me at the top of a category when they're never going to ever ever categorize streamers by anything but viewer number ever thank you for the hype train what the fuck sally thank you for the biddies i'm missing shit spiffy thank you for the biddies siriska thank you for the biddies my god thank you very much i'm sorry i missed anything i was blabalabbing thank you they brought that back after the porn incident wait brought what back after porn boosting they brought back boosting channels because that chick got nailed on stream. Yes! <gasps> oh my god, did he like it? Dude, there's nothing like dicks after a long night of drinking. We don't have to break Katie. It's okay. Thank you. This music is ominous. I hate this. It's fitting too well. No. Stop. Too much. <laughs> Absolutely not. <clears throat> Thank you, though. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for the biddies. Seriously. You're very, very kind. Far too kind. I appreciate you. Oh, they're using it to boost channels showing porn to get them banned. So we're paying Twitch to ban channels doing something against the rules bannable? Is that what I'm reading? Like, we're paying Twitch to... To enforce the rules? Is that? I just found out the average dream lasts two to three seconds. Bruh, I was going on whole ass missions. Well, now I know why girls call me a dream. That's true, though. They are only a couple seconds. Out of your whole night, your dream that feels like your entire night is only like a second or three. It's like a, it's like a neurological spark through your brain where your brain goes during rapid eye movement, and then it stops and you're done. That's it. And then you just like remember it when you wake up sometimes. Wild. Wild. Glut. Be safe and drive safe. Don't forget to wash your hands. Don't let the strangers get you down. You know. I guess. I don't know. Honestly, like, the only thing that happened when I was boosted was a bunch of people asking, why are you at the top of the category? Like, literally, a bunch of 12Vs were like, why are you at the top of the category when someone below you has 1,200 viewers and they're in a hot tub? And I was like, I don't fucking know. Why are you in my channel wasting your precious hours typing that out? A lot of us make stupid decisions. Get the fuck out. Fetuses. Do I still have that alert on here? I don't remember. No, that's not it. Warning. Crying fetus in chat. Warning. Yeah. That's where that came from. Because I'm not nice back to meanies. <laughs> Reasons. Follow sub and you'll see why. Oh my god. He really enjoyed it. And then I told him about the wage they pay in the health, ins the health insurance and the vacation, the scholarship and the child care assistance and the free unlimited transit car transmit card. Transmit? Transit. Transit card and the most expensive item is still under five dollars. All of a sudden, the burgers got even more tasty. I yeah, I feel that. I feel that. 
I got to play with my food a bunch, though. You can still play with your food. You just have to make sure to put it in your mouth afterwards. So even if you turn it into a big cock and you're like, I don't want to eat cock, you have to eat the cock potatoes. We've gone over this time and time again. You can't lop the head off and just claim it's a tree. Stop making dick potatoes. <laughs> Why is that funny? Do I have a terrible sense of humor? Tell me this made you laugh like a dum dum. <gasps> Did I get an emote? Oh no, I think I collected all the level ones. Damn it, thank you for the hype train guys. I collected all of them. I thought I got a new one again. I was like, fuck yeah. My reaction spiritually. I, this made someone else just choke laugh, right? It's not cool. Thank you, C-Town. <laughs> Even if it was a pity lol, I'm gonna take it. It's, um, for those just listening, it's a, like what looks like a ritualistic circle of really old remote controls. I think it's the dish remotes, if I'm not mistaken. And it says, meanwhile, in a remote part of the desert. Oh, the circle of remotes is in the desert. Eating cock is fine as long as there's consent. Absolutely. And those potatoes are dead, so get down. I want to see you deep throat that shit safely. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Sally. You get the fuck out. You pack up that anus. I didn't get the remote pun right away. Just didn't click. Is it depression? Is it anxiety? Do I have ADHD? Am I just lazy? Am I burned out? What the fuck is wrong with me? That was your punishment. How dare you? God damn it. Glut, do I show him the one you sent me? Wait, no, Glut's gone. Fuck, should I wait for him? He sent me a like a TikTok yesterday that made me so mad. I showed it to Zach, and Zach literally just looked up from it and said, if this wasn't your phone, I would throw it across the yard. It's on this level infuriating. Would you like to see it? It's terrible. It makes me so mad. Like, it, like, I'm, I'm finding it. I'm gonna, just going to do it. I need you to be mad with me. It's just so bad. And, and it's so... Get on your fury pants, motherfuckers. <laughs> Sales is probably going to have a moment to himself about this one. It's seriously... It's just... It's like... I'm not going to say anything. I'll ruin it. Hold on. Hold up. Autoplay is going to make me screech. Don't. 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 Oh, I only had to pause it twice that time to get it to listen to me. Nope, three times. Four times. Are you done? Are you done being a piece of shit? Thank you. Anyways. Are you excited? It's going to make you so mad. <sighs> it's the definition of a long play. I'm going to smoke first. <laughs> Cheers. The toilet seat spaghetti press? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, what? Wait. No, I don't want to know. Wait, no. Nope. Everything hurts inside. Cheers. Allow yourself to be penetrated. He got me, bitch. Uh, lilac diesel. Able to pick myself up a nice quarter of it. <coughs> I'm quite excited. It's just so smooth. <coughs> it's fantastic. Why, yes, everything does hurt inside. <gasps> Same. I feel it spiritually. All right, watch this with me. Welcome to the fury that is being Glut's friend. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's so infuriating. Um, I think volume's okay. I'm going to turn it up a little bit just in case. Let me know if it's super loud. How's that?
I'm so instantaneously angry again at how unready I was the first time I ever saw it. <laughs> you know who really hates it? Zach. So, if you want him to be your best friend, maybe just say, I never made it as a wise man. Or work that into conversation. Because it made him so mad. <laughs> I love it now. But the first time you watch it, I mean, it's such a long play. My brain still thinks Chad Kroger was in a lot of nativity plays. And that it wasn't a joke. Like, the joke is so deep. My brain accepted the first half of the story as fact. Now I can't stop thinking about Chad Kroger. Fuck, or Kroger, whatever the fuck his name is. I don't know. I got this photograph. Yeah, the long con slow burn is the most painful, but the most res respected. Precious little deer back there. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, I, so much respect. I love it. But the first time, I was like, what did I what did I respond? Hold on. Let me see what I responded to Glow with. What did I respond with? How dare you? Three different messages. That was the only thing I responded after he sent that. That was it. Just anger. I mean, it's perfect. I'm not I'm not saying it's not perfect. It's just also I hate it all a lot <laughs> and hate and love it. You don't see it coming and it hurts your sense of pride and everything. I'm stealing that. I'm going to unleash that upon my unsuspecting victims. My friends have no idea what they're in for. Dude, do it. I literally handed it to Zach. And Zach, like, I, I, I just hand my phone to Zach all the time. And I'm like, watch this stupid gif. I need to see your face. Because he never laughs. He doesn't think anything's funny. No comedy is funny ever in the world. Like, ever. He's so fucking particular about comedy. So if, I, if something gives him a laugh, I'm just like, oh, shit. I'm going to go touch myself to that thought for a minute. And this one, like, I could see him getting bored with it. Like, he put my phone up and started listening to the story. And then when it happened, his face just died. Every, all the muscles, like, Botox style, just went down. And he looked up from it and straight up said, if this wasn't your phone, I'd throw it across the fucking yard. <laughs> it's, I felt it. He wants to laugh at it so bad. He's just jealous. The jealousy is so strong. I feel it spiritually in my bones. I know what it is now. Yes. Yes. Yep. I'll give you a link to it right now. Well, can I have a link? Can I get a link to it? Let me see. Sometimes he downloads them and sends them to me. And sometimes it is a link. Nope. I can give you the link. I can give you a link to it this time. Sometimes it's downloaded and I can't, but this one totally isn't. Yes. Give me give me momento. Here we go. Oh. <gasps> fuck. See? Even I fuck up sometimes. My bad. Me. Honey, it's really muggy out today. Wife. If I go outside and all our mugs are on the fl front lawn, I'm leaving you. Me sips coffee from bowl. Hey, I'm streamer my rules. Take it or leave it. Fuck, get the Warning. Crying fetus in chat. Warning. Shut up. I was rushing. Dick n Dickleback? I almost said Dickleback. Holy shit, what's wrong with my brain? That's hilarious. The mug one? Hold on, let me show you the joke. Unless, unless you were would like... Oh, stream. I hate this. I hate when my stream deck doesn't work. It makes me feel stupid and slow. This one. Me. Honey, it's really muggy out today. Wife. If I go outside and all of our mugs are on the front lawn, I'm leaving you. Me. Sips coffee from a bowl. It's fantastic. Please tell me someone does this. Someone does do this to your uh, approachable, forgiving partner, please. I need to see it happen. It's too fucking funny. Tickleback, dickleback, pickleback. Isn't a pickleback like a whiskey shot with pickle juice or something? I think I've had one of those. Oh, absolutely. I mean, same. This is how Continue and I became friends, Rod. I think you know this. Like, we bonded over loving puns and stupid dad jokes. They're not stupid. They're so clever that 
sometimes you don't get them and the people that don't get them are angry about it. So they're like, that's a stupid fucking dad joke. Tell me you don't get it without telling me you don't get it. If you get it, you laugh. They're deeper than deep. Dad jokes go deeper than your fucking semen's epididymis. You know what I'm saying? I had to send that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. By the way, if you can we Rod, will you bang Kinsey or Viata or someone? If you guys don't follow continue at continue here on Twitch, also known as Kinsey, one of the dearest, sweetest, most genuine humans on Twitch. She streams all the time. She plays games and she does just chatting and she does art. She does everything. She's fucking dope ass creature of the night. Thank you. She's so fucking cool. Thank you. That's her link. Please give her a follow. She's incredible. Wondrous. Wondrous. Yes. If you don't feel pain after a dad joke, it wasn't good enough. 100%. Or you didn't get it. Yeah. You have to feel pain like in your jeans. Yes. Oh, I love her so much. That day. Do you remember that day? Were you there when she did that fucking game where you have to, what is the point of the game with the, the brace in your mouth? You have to say something or answer with the thing in your mouth and it's just like drool. <laughs> So much fucking drool. It was incredible. Isn't she amazing? I'm so glad you guys love her. I met her. I met her at, was it TwitchCon? I want to say it was TwitchCon years ago. Way before COVID. But years and years and years ago. I think we just met up randomly like on the show floor. Like we were friends via, we had like hosted each other and we were friends. We had played games together or something here on the Twitchiverse. But IRL, we weren't tight or anything, and we we ran into each other, and she was like, do you like dumplings? And I was like, I've never had dumplings. And she was like, what the fuck? So we all went and got dumplings, and my life was changed. I don't live in L.A., and that's, like, where else the fuck do you get dumplings on the snap of a finger other than L.A., where allegedly everything's better. Um, And we went and got dumplings, and we just talked, and we became life soulmates. They're incredible dump. Well, these were like soup dumplings. Have you ever made those before? I don't know if I'd want to make those right away. I feel like I would either kill myself with E. coli by not cooking everything enough or I'd kill myself by burning my esophagus until it blistered forever. I don't know. It's unlocked, but what does she have to do with it? Oh, she just answers questions. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep. She was on the stripper bus. That's how we originally met each other, but I don't think that's the one where we got, that's not the one where we got dumplings together. We were on the stripper bus together. That was my first TwitchCon ever, actually. I didn't know anybody when I went to that TwitchCon. And then we went on the stripper bus. We met on the stripper bus. And, you know, we're bonded by blood by almost dying. But then we became really good friends when we met up at a different con, which I think was the next, the following year's TwitchCon. But fuck, dude, I don't. How many years ago was that? Seven years ago? I don't want this. What's happening? Dan, uh, Dan would teach me. If I ever make it up back to Seattle for some reason, he will. We always plan it. Like whenever I'm try to go home before there's some new COVID bullshit or someone jerks off on a plane, we're always like, yeah, we're going to hang out. My favorite dad joke is why was the cross-eyed professor's classroom always nosy? Because they couldn't control their pupils. Shut up. That's that's fantastic. Thank you. It hurt it um, physical pain. It's like they say it's got to hurt. <laughs> All those years ago. Well, it feels more recent, which I'm sure is that the feeling you just have forever, Viata? Like it doesn't matter how much time goes by, everything feels like it was like a year ago. Cuz that's kind of how it feels. Like I feel like the older I get, I when someone says 2007, I'm like, yeah, that was like 5 years ago. Or ish, right? Or if someone says they were born in the 70s, I'm like, that was like 30 years ago. I have no concept anymore. But does that stay forever or am I just broken? Oh, <gasps> opposable toes. Thank you very much for nine months of Prime Sub Gaming. I appreciate you. Guys, don't forget to use your Prime Subs. You don't have to use them here. But Bezos makes $8 million a minute. Like, fuck, don't give him that $5. Fucking put it out. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Don't forget to refresh so you don't have to suffer ads and all that bullshit. I do have a giant spider in the background. I, I haven't named it, but it's a decoration. It's like a Halloween decoration that was at the thrift store. So it was like $2. And I was like, bitch, I need this giant opposable spider creature. So I got it. There it is. I didn't know what to do with it, but there he is. 
Yes. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine was like four years ago, and my little sister's still in middle school. A child turning thirty in five days. God, that's got to be fucking surreal. The eighties were only like two hundred years ago. Mm. No, twenty. Okay, 20. I was gonna say to little kids. Yeah, do you remember? Do you remember when that little kid told me? This was when I worked at the hospital. A child patient I had. I told you guys the story on stream. I'm pretty sure you were around Viata. It was pretty. It was a while ago, but not. Not seven or eight years ago. Ah. But the little kid said, it, they were my patient, and they were like, do you know how I know you're old? Your nose rings on the side instead of the middle. And my mom told me that's how you know people are older. So apparently my big fat thighs and my nose ring give me away. I don't know what to do. My nose rings become part of my body. Like, who here has had a nose ring for over 10 years? Like, blowing your nose without it at this point, you feel a little special. You're like, wait, but how? I just don't know how to live without it. What the fuck? Yeah, I thought so. It wasn't, it, that was like one of the, that was like the little community hospital I think I worked at. It was weird. What the fuck? Stop it. Hold on. We're reading this together. Shouldn't necromancers be buff? Why would they be? They do so much deadlifting. I don't know what to do. That's fantastic. What? The f <laughs> That's pretty good, but it hurts. <laughs> had a septum for 18. How long have I had my nose? How old am I? 21 years. Yeah? 21, 30, yeah, I've had it for 21 years. That's pretty wild to think about. But I've taken it out at times of my life when I, like, was going on interviews and wanted to look more professional before I got a job. I take it out and leave it out for, like, six months. It never closed. I know some people's nose rings close super easily. Mine, it just is, like, eternally open for some reason. I don't know. That's when you give him an extra poke. <laughs> yes. Ask a kid to mind holding a phone if they want to, if you want to really feel old, shut up. Ask a kid to mime holding a phone. They don't do this, do they? I can't. I Wait, is it just this? <laughs> Allow yourself to be penetrated. Blissful penetrations to everyone. Spiritually, that hurts me. This is still, I mean, okay, but come on. Come on. I'm saying. We can go back. You and me have the technology. Help me bring children to the future of the past that was the past. <laughs> not a sponsor, not an ad. I had my tongue pierced for 23 years, belly button for 22. Are either of them still open? Because any, like, I had my belly button pierced for quite a while. I took that out and those closed up. My nips closed up real quick. Um, what else do you say? My tongue? Tongue closed up immediately. Like, it was like I'd never had anything done to this day. A little, a little dot, but that's it. It was nothing. So you can still put stuff in them. Do you ever take them out for an extended period of time? Just curious. I'm just curious if they heal up fast on you. Because I feel like some of those piercings healed up. Like, like I have some ear piercings. I have, I don't know what it's called. The hole that's right here. It's like, I can put a ring that goes all the way around my ear. It's, it's in the back of my ear. I don't know what the fuck the piercing's called. But I have that one. And I can leave it out for a year. A year. And I can still put an earring in it. Nothing. Same with my nose. This never, ever closes. I can take it out existentially, and I can always put something back in without pain. Like, it is straight up still open. <gasps> Electric. I like the way you spell your name. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my stream, and thank you for the follow. Why was the rookie police, police officer assigned to hunt the cannibal? The more seasoned officers. <laughs> the more seasoned officers had already been eaten. God damn it. You're not a dad. Get out of here. <laughs> it is. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 
guys, it's one minute till 4.20, and then my time to walk my annoying, my dog who's over here licking my hands. Do you guys want to see, I don't think you've seen Trick today, have you? I wear titanium jewelry and never take it out. That's probably the key. I wear, that's, I mean, I, I don't take mine out anymore because I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. But I wear titanium too. I've always felt like I have way more success with any piercing with titanium. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the titanium that you can get for, you know, kind of alt piercings and stuff, it's like the lightest in weight. Like it's the lightest weight for any piercing metal. And so it doesn't drag down on the piercings or anything, i.e. stretching your ears or whatever. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think I read that somewhere. It's possible to run an old rotary phone into a cell phone. That's incredible. Imagine taking it to the bar and having it ring. People would freak out. What would they even do? You know what's super weird? Oh, my God. What was I watching? <gasps> it was Nurse Jackie. I was watching Nurse Jackie the other night, just, just chilling, painting my nails, watching Nurse Jackie. And the phones, do you remember the ringing of old hospital phones, the bone phones? I don't even know if most hospitals have desk phones anymore, especially since COVID. They started just getting rid of anything communal and everybody just has cell phones on them, usually multiples. But there's a very distinct phone ring of the bone phones, i.e. the phones that looked like they had, they looked like they had a bone stuck to the actual phone part so you could lean it on your shoulder, but you weren't like crooked holding a tiny phone. You, could, you were basically just doing that. You remember those? The bone phone. I don't know what else, what they were officially called, but we always called them the bone phone. Trick, you got a terrible eye booger. There you go. I got it. I got it. Did you just? But he ate it off my finger. I was like, bro. He did not. He looked like he did, though. You looked like you got a snack. That's gross. Good job. Recycling. Does it? Um, titanium has better biocompatibility than most other metals. That would make sense. It's the only one that doesn't make me, like, you know, have like a sore in my ear or whatever. These are all tight. They're just like gold plated titanium. My like stupid little side rings and stuff. The giant headrest phones. Yes, they were like the original ergonomic or whatever. Yep. But it literally looked like a chunk of femur bone or something stuck to a, a phone. And it was the color of bone. So we just called them bone phones. Hold on, my hamburger phone's ringing. I love Juno. I need to watch that recently again. Elliot Page is just fantastic and everything let's be completely fair i was gonna say juno but how can you choose on the shoulder bone attachment that looked like that looked like a shoulder bone i think you're right like the the ball the ball the ball one not the socket there's like ball so the ball yeah it did it totally did no you're totally right my ringtone's an old rotary phone sound effect that's kind of precious i love that does it ever freak people out <laughs> Hang on, I have to answer a call on this giant piece of hive exoskeleton. No shit. They were heavy too. Like they weren't, it wasn't hollow plastic. They were fucking like, you could kill a bitch with one of those if you wanted to. They were wild. Good boy. Lay down. Good job. I know a surgeon who puts organs back in upside down. I told him that's not funny, but he said it was an inside joke. That gives me all the pain in my heart. How dare you? I love it and I hate it. That's the bone. It's called a soft talk. Shut up. Ours were hard plastic. I wonder if they've made them like a nice soft firm foam now. Back like the old, like we still had them in some of the hospitals I worked at and they were hard fucking plastic. And if you didn't have like a nice broad shoulder, it kind of cut in a little bit. Like my little acromion process where, you know how your collarbone like goes to the back and then pokes out like there. That would be on it for me because I don't have. I don't have an enormous shoulder space. They're not narrow, but damn, they hurt. I didn't like those phones at all. You had to have the phone on the wall with the 30-foot cord. Yep, that was in like the effervescent coily ball that you would spend the entire phone call with grandma untangling just to hang it up and let it go at the end of the call because you were so excited to get it the fuck off the phone. You dyed your hair pink on Sunday, lost a bet. Dude, sounds like you won to me. I don't get it. What's the difference between a garbanzo bean and a chickpea? I've never paid to a I've never paid to have a garbanzo bean on my face. Shut the fuck up. Khajiit has skooma wins. Fuck off. Let me read that slower for those kids in the back. What's the difference between a garbanzo bean and a chickpea? I've never paid a garbanzo bean to pee on my face. Or just a garbanzo bean on my face, actually, because pee's in it. 
it's a golden shower joke. So, fuck. Did we miss 420? How did we do this? Fucking Christ. <laughs> it's almost 426. We have a minute. You're fine. Load a bowl. I fucking love puns. I think they're funny. I think sometimes I feel like people that hate puns or like dad jokes, they're the kind of people that are like, if it's not a super long, drawn out, 10 minute riddle that confuses me and both perplexes me and makes me think existentially, it's not worth my time. Bitch, if you can make me laugh in less words than anyone else, you win. Are you kidding me? Don't long winded joke time? Fuck off with that. Absolutely not. No. Because we're stoners? Yes. This is facts. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. I can't. I can't believe you've done this. I say that to myself every time I stub my toe or something. I can't believe you've done this. Catherine, why are you like this? Ooh, what is the difference between a hormone and an enzyme? I've never heard an enzyme. Oh my god. That was a fucking crime. How dare you? I'm in pain. <laughs> Fuck, that's good. The Hellraiser trailer looks, looks incredible. Did y'all see the gif of the little chihuahua dressed up as Pinhead from Hellraiser going around? It's, I saw it on Twitter. I think I retweeted it. It's probably one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my entire life. I died. It's literally like a dude holding his itty bitty teacup chihuahua that's pure white and it has like a bald cap on with little nails sticking out of it and the little chihuahua is like like the derpiest little chihuahua you can imagine but as pinhead it's fucking glorious oh it's so good if i find it i'll retweet it again i'll have to look for it i usually agree but the prawn joke jay tells is amazing and he can make it last forever okay well sales would you agree that some people can pull it off it's, I think it's because Jay is funny in, in the story as well. You know what I mean? It's not like I want to die halfway through the joke. It's like I'm already laughing and I'm wondering which one's the punchline. And when the punchline hits, you literally feel socked in the gut. Those really, really long jokes with, with, that end with there is no punchline, those are perfect. That's the only time that really long time is relevant or the previously stated moment. With Jay, which very rarely can anyone really pull off. Jay's just pretty funny. I once went to the library and asked if they had books on Pavlov's dog and Schrodinger's cat. She said it rang a bell, but she didn't know if they were there or not. If it was there or not. Fuck off. That's clever shit. My buddy fucked my head with the saying from IG. The letter W starts with a D. Oh my god. Biggin, I don't know if you were in chat the other day, but gluttony fucked my head with one similar the other day. You'll love it. Um, the, the phrase, in the phrase Pacific Ocean, all of the C's are pronounced differently. Just let that eat you up while you try to, that's been eating me for weeks. I think it was sales. Sales, did you fuck me up with that one? I bet it was sales. Was it you? <laughs> it still haunts me, but it's similar to that. The letter W starts with a D. Hate it. It's like the most mundane shit that you can't stop thinking about because you've used it a million. Yeah, shut up, sales. It probably most definitely was. I guess. I mean, it's fun. To th I, I think language is interesting, so I don't mind thinking about that stuff. But Pacific Ocean hurts me. Spiritually. Oh my god, it's 328. I missed 426. Why am I like this? <laughs> yes, let us take a break. Stand up, stretch your dicks, pee your pants, wash your hands, do what you need to do. I'll cheers when I get back. We need to take a break. We we're way overdue. I just kept waiting for 420, and then now we're just way overdue. And ads are going to happen, and that'll piss me off. I'll be right back. But I'll post cheers, I promise. Who cares? Stoners. Whatever. Um, stand up, stretch your legs, do what you need to do. Every couple of hours, I suggest you literally stand up and stretch your legs or, you know, just like pick your feet up off the ground and rotate your ankles. If you're at one of those jobs where you get in trouble from moving from your desk or whatever, it's, it's good to get circulation going, especially if we're stationary people. You know what I mean? Stationary, sedentary is the word I was looking for, but my brain went into writing letters, apparently. 
What the fuck? Oh, God damn it. All day, every day! Fuck! I never left. That feels familiar. Um, what's your guys' opinion on the Twitch gambling? I'm genuinely curious. If I was new... If I was new and you told me there's a superhero who's blind and uses echolocation to fight and one who's an adrenaline junkie who flies around using gadgets and then that one is called Batman and one is called Daredevil, I would punch you in the dick when I found out which was which. <laughs> I would punch you in the dick when I found out which was which. Fuck off. That's funny. <laughs> it's hard to explain puns to kleptomaniacs because they always take things literary. literally. God damn it. Uh, you know what I think it is? I was thinking about it, like, what is it about dad jokes and, like, puns and shit that make us laugh and Don't make us feel disgusted? I think out. it's wordplay. I'm gay. Mr. Underscore Spiffy tipped $5. Okay, last one. Because of your constant reminders, I remembered to pee after sex when I started having it again after not for two and a half years. Not UTIs here. Hashtag sex positivity. Hashtag Katie is the best. Fuck yes. P after sex and self-loving. It's important. UTIs are the bitch and nothing. You don't want it. Thank you for the tip and thank you for the tips. Always needed to be repeated because it's amazing how many adults are like, wait, why do I pee after sex again? And I'm like, oh my God. Twitch gambling. So apparently there was a, this is, this is Cliff Notes version. This is like some Twitch news slash tea slash drama, but it's like all public. The streamer went public about it. There was a streamer. I'm not going to name names because I don't remember them specifically and they don't matter. There was a streamer who had a gambling addiction and gambled off, didn't gamble on their stream though, gambled offline, online, off, off stream. But they kind of used their persona, their charisma, their personality, their friendships to milk their friends, community, and otherwise for money to feed said addiction. And... Twitch has been in a gray area about gambling for quite some time, i.e. like loot boxes and what's another example of loot boxes? Stuff like that. I don't know. They're basically all loot boxes, but they come in different words and whatever. It's basically you throw a certain amount of money at a game and they give you questionable content you don't know what you're paying for. It's predictions, stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like there's a huge population of people that are in Twitch that are like, we need to ban all gambling, regardless of what it is, because it's really unhealthy. Like, if we're gonna, if we're gonna allow adult content, we need to set our age restriction to 18. Period. End of story. And we need to allow all ad adult content, or we need to go by the guidelines that are set, which is you can be 13 and watch Twitch if you aren't in a 18 plus stream. You know what I mean? And that means that card packs. Pokemon packs. Yeah, all of that shit. That's all considered a form of gambling. The technically, I'm not here nor there on it. I like playing cards, but I grew up playing cards with no money involved, and I like playing cards either way. I honestly prefer it with no money involved because poor. Um, I've never needed money or chance to be involved in a game to, in to enjoy it. It can be fun, but it's not something necessary for me. And I can see how a young mind can find that very addicting. Kind of like Hearthstone, right? Like Hearthstone card packs. Rod, you'd be the expert on that. It's like you could be getting, you could never get the card you need, but be throwing money at card packs forever. And that's like a form of addiction. It's, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. You're gambling on Fortnite skins, exactly. Or what's the other game that has like gun skins and stuff? Uh, fuck, what is it? They, they got, they, uh, they were really got into big trouble because people were like csgo thank you river it was csgo yeah it was like gun skins people would auction them on on stream or something i didn't completely understand but it was something some crazy but yeah physical cards i'd say allow it but for digital stuff i'd say no would you say allow it with with money involved genshin yeah same apex legends same concept yeah which i'm i mean i feel like i don't have i don't have kids and i'm not around children enough to have an opinion on their susceptibility to the gambling nature of it. But I know a lot of you do have kids, and I'm just curious what your opinion is on it. Like, if your 13-year-old was addicted to watching someone gamble off CSGO skins, would that concern you? That that was, like, a behavior they would carry forward into a dangerous zone? Because addiction is, I mean, it's an addiction. Gambling is absolutely part of the addiction scale. Like, I am, I, no shame on anyone who's ever had gambling addiction, has gambling addiction. That's what I'm not here to do. 
and I won't put up with it in chat, neither with my mods. We don't believe in shaming addiction. Like, it's absolutely a mental addiction. But I don't know if it's... Oh, my dog's being so weird down here. I don't know if it's something that comes from enjoying that content when you're a kid. Because I... Like, again, you can... Thank you for the biddies. God damn it. You can never generalize personal experience ever. Like, that's not fair on anybody. But I grew up watching all my family gamble. I mean, my Nana lived in Vegas. Like, we used to go to Vegas all the time. But my Nana would always... She'd go in with 200 bucks... She was pretty rich. That's a lot of money. I go in with twenty dollars, but she'd go in with two hundred bucks, and once it was gone, it was gone. She would never ever go to a cash machine, ever. And my mom's the same way. And my nana, they used to play ring. What we call wrinkle rummy. I don't know what it would be called. It's basically you play thirteen hands or twelve hands of rummy, and then you add up points, and whoever has the least amount of points at the end wins. It's a very strange way of playing rummy, but it's super fun. But my nana used to have all of her girlfriends over, and they'd like drink their gin and tonics and play wrinkle rummy. But it was like you won 50 cents a hand, you know, a dollar if you won, if you had the most wrinkles. I'll someday I'll explain wrinkle rum to you guys. It's a very strange game. It's not strange. It's rummy. But like with this strange twist on it, my family like invented shit. I don't know what the fuck's up. Like the birthday song and stuff. I don't know where these things come from. I've Googled them. They're not real. I have a manual on rummy. It's not in there. I don't know what where this came from. Like the tulip mania. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was what this dude was gambling on with CSGO, but was he wasn't doing it on stream in front of people, right? He was doing it off stream. He's just admitting to an addiction he had on stream to his crowd. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't follow this person. Like, again, we don't believe in outing names or shaming people. This person was very brave to come forth and admit all of this, to be honest. I mean, it doesn't make what he did right, but fuck, dude. How much did he end up milking his friends for? Like, over $250,000 or something like that, and it's all gone. On gambling... And he, I mean, I think unprovoked, like, admitted to his addiction, admitted to what he did to his, com to what he's done. He admitted all of this to his community and was like, I need to take a break and get better and something like that. I didn't watch, I haven't seen the clip because, again, I don't know the person. I just know the cliff notes of it. But I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard place to be in because I don't know. All of them have. Oh, shit. I don't like gambling being on the platform or in games, for that matter, as in loot boxes. I'm kind of scared to touch the topic, though, since, well, I don't know. There seems a lot of drama. Me, too. That's why I wanted to ask you guys, because you guys are mature adults and there's no drama. <laughs> like, you guys calmly think things through, type them out, and we have good discussions. That's why I like to talk about things here. I don't often pose questions on Twitter or otherwise that are controversial. I did ask about gambling. Which got me a couple mean, <laughs> mean responses, which again, why are you following me? It's so fucking weird. But anyways, I didn't even hate on it. I was just like asking a question, like, what's your opinion? I'm neither here nor there. I'm genuinely curious what people think, because I feel like I have plenty of self-control when it comes to that stuff. But addiction is real and we need to be sensitive to that kind of stuff. It's like, is there something on my nose? No, I felt like there was some like a hair on my nose. Um, <laughs> anyways, it's like watching someone binge drink on stream. Like, it's not hurting your child. They're not binge drinking, but is is idolizing someone who who uh, participates in that behavior regularly something you want for a young developing brain? And I'm not saying kids are stupid. Kids are smarter than us, and they pick up on shit fast. Oh, man. Wrinkle Rummy is super fun. You would probably fucking love it. If I had a deck of cards right here, I'd just show you how to do it. It's super easy. Like, you basically take a piece of paper, write out ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down to kings in a line vertically and then whoever's playing usually three or more people's best two people's kind of hard but three or more people you put their names in a row at the top and that's the order of who's going to deal because the dealer changes every hand and it just goes around and you play like ace the, your first hand aces are wild your second hand twos are wild third hand threes are wild fourth hand you can see where it goes and you leave the jokers in the deck and the jokers are always wild and the point of the game is to get rid of as many cards as possible and to go out, essentially. So after you deal seven cards to every person, you put a pile in the center and you flip one card over. And the person to the left of the dealer gets to go first. They can either take that flipped card or they can draw from the pile, but they must take one or the other. And then say you have like three aces. You have to have three of a kind or three in a row or whatever. It has to be three. They have to be the same suit. But you can put down your three threes, your three kings, and put your two in the pile and you're out. You win. You can go out first hand. If you're lucky, and that's called the wrinkle, which means you get zero points. So usually you get a star on the score sheet, and then everyone gets one turn to go. So all those people after you would still get to go. You know, one, one, they get a chance to try to get rid of some cards or at least get rid of a high card. 
but then they have to sit there and count all their cards up and they have to give the points to the points keeper and every card that's wild that they held in their hand we call it holding is 20 points period end of story so if twos were wild and you got dealt two twos but nothing else that you could put them down with and you had to hold them you couldn't do anything with them that's 40 points for holding two twos and you just go like that and so basically whoever has the most wrinkles by the end of the game gets a dollar and whoever has the least amount of points at the end of the game gets a dollar and you sort of it's it's really fun though if you got like four people to play we played it all the holidays like me my mom my dad and my sister play for money we did too but it was such small money like it was quarters literally quarter games and dollar games it was nothing it was mostly just for pride whatever i personally personally i don't think loot boxes belong in games where you can purchase them with real money unless that's the whole point of the game and they don't try to disguise it as not gambling i kind of agree like i've enjoyed purchasing loot boxes before i.e out of out of like eso and shit like that but every single time i ever bought loot boxes it was because there was one specific amount I wanted and I was gambling on whether or not I would pull it out of a box. And every time I would just say, like, I'd rather pay $70 for this stupid digital horse than $70 on a bunch of crap boxes, loot boxes. Like, just let me buy the cosmetic item. You know, it is kind of a way to just get more money for the, for the item that it's really worth. Yeah, I can see how it can become really, really dangerous and very unhealthy in terms of just like, it's only another $20 and it's so easy to do online. Like when your PayPal gets hooked up to something like that, it's one click. It's just like, it's dumb easy. There's no logging in and out anymore. It's just like automatic. And I can see how that can be really dangerous, but I feel like it's hard to have an opinion on that stuff. I I'm both ways. Cause I do enjoy gambling. I like to go to Vegas once in a while, but should it be entertainment for kids when kids cannot go stay? Like if you went to Vegas and you went to a casino there's walkways throughout the entire casino, but if you step off of that clearly different colored carpet walkway into the slot machines and you don't look like an adult, they will ask you to leave. They'll card you on the spot and say, you can't be in here. You can't stand behind your parents and watch them gamble. You can't stand. You cannot be in the machines if you are under 18, right? Or 21. It's 18. Pretty sure it's 18. My brain too did. But you know what I mean? So why is it okay online? When essentially it's the same thing. I don't know. I wonder. I grew up half my life in Vegas. I don't have a gambling addiction. But again, that doesn't mean it can't happen. You can never generalize personal experience. That's not fair. <gasps> Be safe, Spiffy. Wash your hands and pee after sex. I love you. I think loot boxes and the like are just a money-making scheme. Absolutely, Judy. 100%. While some enjoy the gambling element, I'd prefer to just be able to buy what I want, not hope or have to barter for it. A hundred and thirty billion percent agreed. Seriously, I've dumped. I mean, honestly, people in chat would buy me loot boxes. So I was like, I would equate them and be like, this horse costs two hundred dollars. This digital mount that does nothing. It just looks like a lizard costs two hundred dollars. That's how many like loot boxes it would take me through. And eventually I was like, I don't like this. Like, please don't buy me loot boxes. It makes me feel dirty because it. Like, at the end of the day, you end up with so much shit you don't need. All the loot boxes are, like, tattoos that don't show up on anyone except a white human in the game. I'm not joking. They don't show up on anything else. No other race, species or anything. Or you end up with a million, like, tiny, pointless cosmetic items that do nothing. Or, like, you're going to put a helmet on anyways. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just stuff that's stupid. Like, just offer, hell, offer both. 100% agree. I think they'd eventually get rid of loot boxes because who the fuck would want to buy loot boxes if you could just buy what you needed or buy what you wanted? I don't know. Maybe then you could really gauge, like, is this addiction or not? I don't know. Addiction makes me sad. Like, I don't... I don't want to shame addiction by being like, fuck all of you addicted to gambling. You're not allowed to be here. That's not what I think the message is when it's like, we should ban loot boxes and gambling. It's more like... We don't want to uh, exacerbate the situation. Like binge drinking on stream. That is a behavior that young morphe minds could be like, they didn't die. I can chug a bottle of, you know, Tennessee fucking Jack Daniels and be fine. When no, like most people who do that either vomit immediately or do end up in the ER. It's just you don't see that video or you don't see the end of it or whatever. 
I was just fantasizing about riding a big Suzuki motorcycle or whatever, and the inertia from the acceleration gave me a heart attack. But it, oh my god, it was just my roommate barging in. How, what did that feel like? I lost interest in loot boxes the first time I got them and then found out I had to buy keys to open them. What? Wait, you got loot boxes? Oh, that's dirty. What game was that? Just curious. I don't know what game that, wa- that would be. You have to be 21 in Vegas. That's what I thought. I grew up on a, on a reservation where you only have to be 18. That's why I was like, fuck, I don't remember which one it is in Vegas. I tried with my grandma when I was 20 and they kicked me right out. Oh. <gasps> No shit. Oh my gosh, Jesper. I remember the very first time I ever went with my Nana. I had just turned 21. I think it was like, we were picking her up. She was a snowbird. So we would like, we would help her get down there in the winter and she'd stay the winter time. And then we'd bring her back to Seattle in the summer. And we were down there getting her. So it was like in the Mar- in March sometimes, springish. And we went gambling and my Nana was a goddamn borderline card shark. Like she didn't play for money, but she never lost. Bitch would always walk out with at least a grand. And she never walked in with more than 200 and she never pulled more money out. She just knew blackjack like nobody's business. I, if I didn't know better, I'd think she counted cards. But I'm pretty sure she was just charismatic and bubbly and fucking made everyone at the table feel safe. And she'd just wipe it. She'd wipe the table every time. And one of the last times we got to take her to Vegas and go out actually gambling with her before she was like too, too old to, to walk the casinos, which was super sad. But I get it. Um, she asked me to cash out her her chips for her (laughs) and I was like just had turned 21 and I was so excited to finally like I've been walking through these casinos and 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 like idolizing this atmosphere my life my whole childhood and finally I'm the one who gets to cash out like this bundle of shit and her little ticket from whatever she did and I walked up the counter and I had my wallet and I was so excited and they did not card me didn't make a fucking blink just hand me like I think it was like six sixteen hundred bucks not a ton of money, but a lot of money for especially a 21 year old in college. Holy shit. That was like rent. Um, just handed me 1600 bucks. And she was like, had a good night, did you? And I remember just like my face turned red and I just turned away with the fanned out cash. Like, and my Nana was like, she had one of those walkers that you could like turn around and sit in if you need a break. It had like a seat built in. She was just like plopped in her walker and my mom was standing by her and they were just laughing, shaking their heads. Like, you're six feet. Like, when are you getting carded, honey? Like, like they knew all along. Like, they were like, we've known for the last 84 years you'd never be carded. This was all a mind fuck. I've never been carded at a casino. It's still depressing. I don't look that old. I think it's just tall. They're like, nah, young bitches can't be that tall. They're designed to wipe you, or at least the whales. Yeah. I mean, the house does. I think, I truly think the house always wins. My Nana probably was losing at some point, but my, my, my grandpa used to have a saying about my Nana. He'd say she's luckier than a dog with two dinks or two dicks, which now my stepfather says all the time, luckier than a dog with two dicks. Because for real, I mean, numerous times my Nana would be leaving a casino with her little like receipt with the barcode. You know, they don't, you don't get coins out of slot machines anymore. They literally just print out a little receipt. They play coin sounds, which is hilarious. So you have your little receipt that says how much money you won or lost or whatever. And I think she had like two bucks on it. And on her way out of the casino, she just casually puts it in the, the slot machine closest to the door and hits a random button and lets it go. Like, does the whole, does the max bet on it, wins a truck. This has happened multiple times, though. Like, mul- multiple times she won, like, a Toyota truck, some other truck, something else. It's just, like, why? She, I swear to fuck, she'd say it's because she was Irish, but I am genetically did it on the ancestries maximum irish and not that i've never won a thing in my fucking life (laughs) it's wild she's nuts you get the snap sound in your ear right before you start lucid dreaming i've never lucid dreamt i don't think i don't want to it's still depressing i mean come on i get i get carded if i buy liquor or weed but i mean obviously you're gonna card for weed i think they they have a lot of Lots of things watching you nowadays for weed. My uncle Ned Henderson wins like thousands of dollars yearly. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. Is he winning thousands? Thread. That's where I'd wonder. Like if you're if you're gambling constantly, are you winning thousands? Like how much have you lost? My I have an aunt who's also done that. I think I told you guys this when it happened. It was like five or six years ago. She went on a random road trip down to Portland, Oregon, bought a scratch ticket, won seventy five thousand dollars. Off of like a $5 or no, it was a $20 scratch ticket. It was like one of those uh, Monopoly ones or something. 75 grand. 
off a fucking scratcher. It'd be a hard time to spend $75,000 on scratchers for fun. And it was random. She doesn't do that often. But she's got it too. And I'm like, what? What did I do wrong? What up, Toyota Mike? How are you? I've seen his payout. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying he didn't win big once in a while. And to him, it's probably worth it. To be fair, if you think about it, buying a video game before trying it out is a type of gamble. If I buy a $60 video game and I hate it, I wasted $60 on content that I wasn't 100. I didn't know what was in that content. I saw a couple trailers. I was gambling on whether or not I would enjoy myself playing it. Gambling can extend to a lot of different things if you get too far into it. Really. I'm going to win $2,000 per month for the next 30 years on October 1st. Fingers crossed for you, boo. Get that green. On that note, I need to take my dogs out and walk them. It's about that time that I take off for the evening. But I thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I hope my audio is fixed, but we'll see. I'll listen to the VOD, and if not, I'll delete it. Um, <laughs> That's all I got. I don't know what else to do with that one. Uh, And stream elements. Or stream deck. Why do I keep saying stream elements? It's stream deck. I need to fix my stream deck. I don't know what the fuck happened there. The fact that it worked pre-stream and not when I went live is what's curious. My dad, my TV LEDs died. Dude, our TV died. S brand, less than, like, when did Zach buy it? He bought it at the end of June. So it's, like, le almost over, it's almost a month and a half old. And it literally blew, like, a blue line shot up one side of the screen and it died. And it's a $1,700 TV. <gasps> We've been uh, dealing with the, what is it, the warranty? And they're sending a tech out to either say it's fucked or replace a cord. Who the fuck knows? We'll see. But it's literally like, I think it's like a 50, what is it? 64 inch LG Oli, Oli LED TV. I don't know. It's a fucking nice TV. Uh, Zach bought him for himself as a treat. He deserves it. His TV was old as fuck. But god damn, the blue line. And if you Google LG, LG, LG TV, the first thing that comes up is blue line screen. Apparently it's common. It's crazy. I played for years, Poker Texas Hold'em. I must have lost at least 20,000, holy shit. Over the last 15 years, I finally kicked the habit when my government legalized online gambling and I could ban myself from all gambling sites. Fuck yeah, dude. That's a huge, that's a big move to make. Towards, why do I, oh my god, I hear Zach in the background. Stop. Spoilers. Can you tell who I was going to host? He's playing a really cool game I wanted to watch today, sorry. Computer win poopsies. It just played it automatically. Um... And I could ban myself from all gambling sites. I hated it at first, but after nine months now of not gambling, I noticed I have more money left over at the end of the month, which is, for me at least, extremely weird. Isn't it wonderful? I know people that have done that with, like, quitting smoking and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, quitting smoking cigarettes, they'll put, every time they crave a pack of cigarettes, or every time they would have normally bought one, they'll put the $5 or whatever cigarettes cost in a jar. And then in a year, they can buy a car with it or something. My next TV is going to be the Philips 70-inch Android TV because it comes with the Twitch app. Oh, shit. Is it one of those smart TVs? I think ours is, too. I don't use it a lot because I, like, have my computer. I just usually chill out here until I eat dinner and go to bed. But um, smart TVs are the shit. I think ours is, too. The one that's now broken and we're waiting to get fixed, maybe. The repair guys seem not shocked the LED backlight went out. That's what I think something is with ours. I When we looked it up online, everybody has the same problem, and it's like... It's something you can't break into to fix. It's like internal, internal, something inside, way inside, way inside. <gasps> Hi, Jack. How are you? Yes, Jack, you're very welcome. Yeah, seriously. I mean, I go I'll i Google it right now to prove it. If you go, I went to Google and I did the thing. I Googled it and it like you Google LG TV and it's just blue line. It's a common issue. And I mean, they are being very nice. The warranty people are sending a technician out to either say it's fucked and give us a new TV or to give us a new or to fix it somehow. I don't think there's real TV technicians anymore for flat screens. Let's be completely honest. I'm trying to find what model it is. It is. It's the OLED one. I don't know if there's different models of them. I don't know a lot about TVs. And I feel really bad. 
but I was trying to find the model of it just to tell you. Just, it's not a bad TV, and it's fucking absolutely crystal gorgeous when it works. But literally, we were just watching a show one night, and a blue line shot up one side, literally like a one-inch thick neon blue line, and then the whole TV went black. And now all it does is if you plug it in and try to turn the TV on, the screen like blinks and just turns off. It just goes blink, and that's it. <gasps> I love you, Sales. Thank you for hanging out today and making me giggle. You're the best. Sleep well and brush your teeth. And don't forget to brush your hand or brush your hands. Yeah, brush your hands. That works. Uh, for I've only heard about it happening to LG. Literally, it's only LG. So the LG C1, O O L E D, is the one that does this. And I don't know what the problem is. I have no idea. But if you Google it, it's not normal, and everyone's TV is fried. Like they basically always have to give you a new TV, and it's well known. But it's something in the back. And our TV, I mean, we literally set it up and it's never moved. So it's not like something shook loose in the back. It's not that at all. The thing was in a stationary place where not even dogs can reach anything. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It sounds like, it feels like to me something burnt out or shorted out in the back. Like two wires were too close or melted or something like that. The way it like, you know, goes blink, blink. Yeah, fuck no. Like, there's power going on in it. It's just something wrong with that. I don't know. I don't understand it, but it's sad. It's, it's a lot of money to be told, fuck yourself on. <sighs> it's disgusting. All right. I'm going to host Zeke because he's playing a really cool game that I want to watch. It's fucking hilarious. And the boobs and the butts in it are... That's all I got for you. Take your joy, wash your hands, and be good. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow morning. It's Wednesday. I have nothing. Maybe we'll play a game. What is it? It's almost... What's the date tomorrow? 21st? Maybe we can start horror games early. Why not? Or maybe I'll do a makeup look. Depending on my... Mm, I have some really cool makeup looks planned. I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do a Twitter poll. I don't know. We'll see. Take your fucking joy and be good. I love you. Bye.